Good afternoon, everyone in internet land. Hello, I am hello. Plywood, and here with me is... Pythonicus, hello. The double P's, introducing <laughs> the first ever Metal Gear Relay race ever done in the history of humankind on this <laughs> Twitch channel. October 6, 2019. Team Solid versus Team Liquid. Boosh! There's, that's, that's an explosion sound. Cue the explosions, Roy. Okay, I, I tried. So let's, let's do a rundown of who we got on each team, shall we, Python? How about you introduce Team Solid? All right. So for Team Solid, we've got, so far, starting off strong with Apache on... MGS3 here. Then we've got uh, Tromboncino following up with uh, MGS1. Tyler2022 on MGS2. Sparty for MGS4 and Alien himself for Twin Snakes. And on Team Liquid, we have Raichu for Metal Gear Solid 3. We have me, Plywood, for Metal Gear Solid 1. D Limes 13 for Metal Gear Solid 2, Sergeant Silent for Metal Gear Solid 4, and rounding up the pack, Blue Metal with Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. This is a packed lineup, folks. We tried to make these teams as even as possible. People who are talented and strong in their crafts in each of the games, so we're excited to show a packed race with a lot of potential this is going to be a fun time for us all and uh this is the first one so hopefully everything goes off without too many hitches but we plan on doing these races quarterly not necessarily with this lineup of games but some sort of relay with the community shown off so what do you think python what do you think we're going to have today a good clean fight i think i think we're going to have a fantastic show, first of all. Like you said, these guys are all fantastic speedrunners. They've all been hard at work on each of the games. Uh, MGS3, of course, with the recent resurgence, having having a lot of new new eyes on the game, a lot of new stuff has been found for, uh, for normal, which is the category being run. Uh, Raichu was one of the original uh, routers, as well as Mini Omega King and Chat. But Apache's come in pretty strong of late. He's been setting record times, so that's going to be a fun, a fun uh, spectacle to watch between these two. Not to mention the rest of the lineup we got. MGS1, it's, it's you and Trom, and, you know, we talked you guys up yesterday, but there's not enough of that at all, because you guys, you guys have MGS1. You know it like the back of your hand. And, and then so yet we're still going to be showing some new stuff off. Ooh. Hint, that's, hint. That's exciting. Then, of course, D Limes and Tyler, very, very good at what they do at MGS2. They've been practicing hard on, uh, on a category we haven't actually seen on the channel before. It's going to be the uh, PAL version of Sons of Liberty on the PlayStation 2, so that'll be a fun watch. Two Americans playing the European version. I don't know what that says, but it does say something. Metal <laughs> your speedrunners. <laughs> then the, the 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 dark horse of this entire thing, Metal Gear Solid 4. We haven't really seen too much in the way of MGS4 on this channel. We've had a couple of marathons where it's been in with uh Sparty. Uh however, we have not seen this particular category. We're running New Game Plus Big Boss Hard, which is going to be interesting. Uh Sergeant Silent is a big proponent of the New Game Plus category. So these guys are going to be running, uh, going to be running New Game Plus, but they're going to be doing it without the big boss mask, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong about that. There's been some, some change-ups, I know. And I think Sparty will be doing uh, strategies for Foxhound rank, and Sergeant will be going for any percent. So we're going to be seeing some divergence during that race it's going to be interesting going to be interesting and finally 
rounding up the pack, Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes. And I can't really think of a better game to uh, complete a, a relay race. Very exciting run with two of the most excellent runners in that game, Aerlian and Blue Metal, the classic versus who's going to win. That is just going to have to wait a few hours now, won't it? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be one hell of a showing regardless. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much more we can say except for good luck to each and every one of the runners. Yeah, all I can say is hashtag Team Liquid, hashtag potable water. <laughs> We're in there. Alrighty. Hello, everybody. Are we in there? Alrighty. Good. Good morning. Good. Good Monday morning to everyone that isn't Australian. It's still Sunday, I guess. To... Good afternoon is... to everybody else. Yeah, other people exist. I, I forget. Everyone forgets about Australia. I just forget about the rest of the world. No one streams on Mixer. It's a myth. All right. So, this is Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and it is going to be a new game plus on normal race. And uh, normal is a very interesting difficulty. It's recently picked up a lot in popularity, and it, it shows a really solid mix between, you know, the really tight routing of European extreme and the ability to play a little bit more of a loose cannon uh, with able to get an alert here or there. So uh, in my opinion, this is one of the more entertaining runs for sure. Yeah, so MGS3 Normal actually combines um, a lot of the tight movement lines that you'll see in a very easy run, as well as um, some of the more difficult strategies that you would tend to see in a European Extreme run. So it's got a little bit of both. Alrighty, so both runners seem to be pretty ready. Alright. Uh, right, you were a little, a little slow off the line. So, Metal Gear Solid Three. This game is pretty easy to follow. Uh, most people know we're going to start off in the Virtuous Mission. It's going to be daytime, and we're going to be landing in Soviet Russia. And it's about a four and a half to five minute period of uh, intermittent cutscene. Codex skipping with some pretty tight movement. Yeah, so right when they start, um, they're going to be swapping to the fixed camera angle that is more commonly used uh, by speedrunners, mostly because it provides a um, consistent camera in every single area, meaning you can have consistent visual cues for um, strategies and shots and whatnot. So while there isn't really a speed, like a time save from using it, it's more of a um, quality of life change, basically, is to have this, to have this camera on. 
Yeah, and you'll find a lot of um, runners will utilize the different cameras differently. Uh, not everyone will be permanently using the fixed camera, uh, and very few people permanently use the 3D or snaky the camera as it's sometimes known. Ah, sorry, the subsistence camera as it's sometimes known. But first, we're going to see a pretty, you know... Standard practice and movement in this game, and it is the uh, the roll to go up hills. Going up terrain in this game puts Snake into an annoyingly slow walking animation. Uh, same with the swamp area, going through the mud will make Snake run a lot slower. So to counteract this, uh, we will just roll up. They will roll up hills, and it is the faster way of getting through these areas. Yeah, any incline where Snake starts to walk up slowly, you'll want to roll over. Um, for now, since they don't have um, the cardboard box, you'll be seeing them roll up slopes. Uh, but once they obtain the box, you'll be seeing them use that um, interchangeably with rolls to uh, go faster in certain areas. Yep. So these first two guards are dealt with pretty simply. We'll do it with attack reload. So you'll shoot and quickly equip and unequip the weapon. And that will allow you to... Uh, quickly fire, well, fire faster than the game really wanted you wanted you to with the manual reload. So uh, you'll see that a fair bit in this run. And another piece of tech we'll, you'll see here is the bonk roll or the bump roll, depending on who you ask. Yeah. So if you tr if you shoot an enemy with a tranquilizing dart and then roll into them, um, they will automatically get knocked out. Uh, it actually doesn't matter where you hit them with it, as long as you hit them and roll into them, it will count. And this applies to every single difficulty, except for very easy, because one Trank Shot knocks them out anyway. Yeah, and one roll also knocks them out, so yeah. you kinda never do the... You never yeah, do you them at the need, same time. You don't time. need to shoot it in very easy, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what you just witnessed on Apache's screen, but not Raichu's screen, is a quick headshot where you quickly uh, aim and then tippy toes and you will use the auto aim to aim at their chest, tippy toes will push you to their head and you will instantly knock them out. Uh, Raichu took a different way, a little bit faster and he's actually made up some ground getting into Razvet and finding Sokolov. Yeah, so what Raichu did there is a much harder variation of um, the Razvet on Virtuous Mission. And it actually saves a pretty decent amount of time because you don't need to do the uh, um, instant headshot trick uh, at the start of the area. But what Apache did is, um, if you hold down square to just ready your gun, then hold down L1, R1, and then L2 and R2, Snake will raise up to be at the exact height to hit an enemy in the head. You have to be on the same plane as them, so like same flat level of ground in order for that to work. Um, that's more common in European extreme than it is in um, other difficulties, but I guess he went for it in that situation just to play it a little safer. Alright, so both players have gotten to the end of Virtuous Mission, and they're into the healing segment. Now you'll see that this is a really specific uh, menu pattern that we follow here. So we're gonna do the first three cuts, then press right on the D-pad, do the remaining cut, and then quickly do the two broken bones and... yeah. It's and you can super see fast. that you can see that um, Apache just went through all the cuts, basically went in the in that order. Um, but Raichu did the strat where when you get to the first broken bone, you tap right to go to the last cut, and you can see that he he caught up. He saved exactly a second. So it it is a one second time save um, over just doing it in the order that the game shows you. So you can gain some time from that. And uh, Raichu actually is opting to not do his menu um, for the Patriot at this point. Uh, and that's actually faster because you have to open your menu at the start of um, the Ocelot unit fight anyway. So um, Raichu is just uh, making sure that he does his menu um, right there, rather than having to open it an extra time. Yeah, backpack menus in this game are super important, because you can burn a lot of time by either messing them up or finding inefficient ways to do them. 
So we're going to see an example of a stun grenade here. They are really overpowered in this game. Apache is just going to kill them with the Patriot. It actually does save a little bit of the time he lost to backpack earlier because he doesn't have to first person aim and cook the stun. So it evens out a little bit, but as you can see, Raichu is still... Yeah, a little, little bit of a time save from doing what he did there, but um, ultimately just not going for the menu uh, is putting Raichu ahead. Pausing in this game actually loses a decent amount of time just because it, it takes a little bit, even on PlayStation 3. It takes a while for the pause menu to open up for you to do what you need to do and then get back into the game. Yeah, the pause menu in this, this game has a delay on pretty much every version that I've ever played. Uh, and one other strat you will quickly have seen before they went across the rickety bridge is the cooking the stun grenade, or any grenade for that matter, to silence your footsteps. You can still hear them in the game, but as far as the guards are concerned, you, you're never walked behind them. Yeah, it works with all um, objects that can be thrown, but it only works on very specific surfaces for some reason. It just so happens that all the surfaces where we need it to work, it works, so... So there they grab the box, um, probably the best item in the game, uh, for reasons that we'll get to once they equip it and actually start using it. But we've got uh, the very first boss fight, the Ocelot unit. Here. Yeah, and the Ocelot unit on uh, is different on every difficulty due to the amount of guards you have to take out however uh for normal we're gonna see seven and we're gonna quickly see a couple of things uh, i believe there's a little bit of a i'm not sure if this is a joke here from uh, apache but he's chucking on some camouflage uh the new strat seems to be is you're all out the door uh and you just murder everybody with the patriot you've got unlimited ammo and you can just run around and spray everyone down. Although Apache accidentally blew himself up, so that's not going to help. That is unfortunate. So Apache actually doing his menu um, to equip the box uh, a little bit early. Um, and that's actually uh, kind of a problem, because um, on normal, you pretty much need to put the bug juice on it's not like a 100 percent requirement but um because if you don't put it on then you have to actually remove the leech at some point because i'm like very easy your stamina does drain pretty quickly on normal yeah exactly right and you need stamina for at least the next fight um on new game plus it's not so much a requirement because it is possible to uh, equip the animals camo when you when you do the menu if you want, for as you can see where Apache put on the grenade camo to get himself some unlimited stuns. Uh, Raichu didn't bother with that, and that extra menu has actually put Apache a fair way behind. So you can see that um, Raichu rolled into that codec. Um, that's mostly just because the codec has a line where it's, like, the trigger starts, and you can actually roll past it, and, um, once you gain control, it'll play, so you can actually save a bit of time by just rolling as close to the trigger as you can, and then gaining some extra distance before you gain movement again. Yeah, you'll see that for a, a couple of, of areas, but, uh, there isn't a whole lot of uh, gameplay interrupts in this as Raichu gets stuck on a tree uh, as he goes into Bolashaya past. Um, so this area is pretty simple. There's a couple of fences you got to crawl under, a couple of mines you got to avoid, but however, it's just good tight lines for movement. You'll see Apache just walk straight through the middle here. If you go too far to the left or right, you get blown up by a Claymore, uh, and that costs you like three seconds just on recovery, as well as will net your caution. Yeah. The other thing that you saw um, Raichu do, and I wasn't looking at Apache screen, so I couldn't see if he did that, but um, is he equipped the box and went up that incline. So rolling up slopes is fast, and when you go in a box and walk up a slope, um, Snake actually goes from his like box movement to his normal running movement up slopes. 
Uh, so you actually move pretty fast while doing that. It's yeah, faster sure. to box up like really long slopes, and it's faster to roll up really short ones. Yep, so Raichu is moved ahead. Now he's up to the Ocelot fight. This fight has a really good loop, so we're gonna shoot him in the back, throw a stun grenade, and turn away. Oh, well, gonna... Raichu's just gonna eat the stun and blind us all. Then you're gonna shoot him in the head, throw another stun. He's gonna shoot you, now we're gonna turn away. Oh, he actually rolled, so... I don't know. He got it, so he's gonna knock off the hat, shoot the Markhor. Couple more bullets into Ocelot, but Ocelot's gotten away, so the loop has been lost on Raichu's part, so this is gonna take some recovery. However, if we watch on Apache's screen, he's actually done a flawless loop, and he's now caught right up to Raichu. Yeah, now they are, uh, literally tied, um my screen <laughs> yeah they they are and if you can't see anything don't worry most runners have their tv brightness up slightly so you can see the game intends you to either wait for your eyes to adjust quote unquote in game or you can find a torch uh however it is just kind of a pretty easy to find your way through here once you know what you're doing hold upright there's a little area for you to crawl So, they are literally neck and neck right now. Wow, so Apache is going into, um, yeah, he gained a little bit in there. Uh, he's going, they're going to the pain, and, uh, the pain is... Uh, a very interesting fight. Um, we'll explain it as things happen. Yeah, and uh, this this fight sucks. I don't know a runner who likes this fight. Um, especially having insect phobia. But first, we're going to see Apache start. We're going to aim for the head. Now, we're going to aim for constant headshots. But the headshot on the pain is rather balked, so... Uh, you need to aim more for his chin. We're gonna see a stun grenade thrown, and that's gonna get rid of his shield, and we're gonna see a really good spam from Apache. He needs to finish the first phase. So, um, when you say in first person mode in the second phase, um, the bullet bees that he sends out actually will just straight up not hit you for some reason. They don't do any damage if you stay in first person mode. They just go away. Yeah, it's just, um, it's a symptom of the 16 by 9 change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pain's uh, head hitbox is actually only from his nose to his chin. Um, if you aim any higher than his nose, um, your shots won't land. He just doesn't have a hitbox there. For some reason. So, a lot of people struggle when learning that because they think, I should aim for the forehead because it's the biggest part of his head, but that actually does not count and your bullets will just go right through him. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a fun hitbox to deal with, but you get used to it over time. So now, uh, uh, post pain, we're going to be heading towards the warehouse and eventually the lab. Uh, this is a really inclined area. You'll see both runners keep the box equipped for the majority of this uh, until they get to the cliffs. Uh, so one thing I will explain about the box while we have a bit of downtime is the developers thought it would be really cool. Uh, that they give hitboxes to the actual flaps of the box, and this can get you caught on everything. Yeah, you can uh, get just... caught on, like, all kinds of walls, because not only is the hitbox for, like, on the, the flaps of it, like, adjust depending on how close to the wall you get, it even, like, extends out farther than the box itself, so you, it looks like you're not stuck on anything, but, uh, hey guys. you're stuck on something. Yeah, it's, it's rather annoying, and so a lot of the pathing we'll take is uh, is trying to avoid being too close to walls because it is just a magnet. So we're going to see both runners spam to the end. Um, however, we will see that stamina is becoming rather low for Apache, and it's a bit higher for Raichu here. 
Eventually, you'll see these guys equip the animals camo, I would assume. Uh, and that'll help them when they aim. As Snake gets hungry, his uh, first person aim becomes really like swaying. Uh, and that's annoying. So we're actually going to see Apache just chug a calorie, mate. And uh, Raichu's going to forego that, and he's just going to murder everybody. You're gonna take out two people, and then you're going to spam, blow up the barrel. The barrel is supposed to do pain, uh, damage to the end. However, this is not how it's gone for Apache. So he's going to have a harder time looping Yeah, it looks end. like he made a mistake um, at the beginning of that room. Yeah, so the extra damage that you... Oh, and he also gets knocked over by the shield reinforcements. So, Raichu's going to take that advantage. But yeah, so the end is not our next boss, but the boss after. You can get a little bit of early damage in this route by shooting the barrel next to him. But uh, Apache was a little bit slow, and he missed his first headshot, which uh, gave the end time to get you know pushed back into the warehouse. And uh, Raichu really messing up a roll there, so... He's actually going to lose some time just by bad transitions. So heading into Granny Gorky here, um, one of the major things that separates normal from uh, the majority of European extreme runs at, at up to this point is that they're going to be doing this section without putting on the scientist disguise. Um, and this actually saves a bit amount of time because you have to equip it and then do the stuff and then once you get out, take it off. Um, so that's two extra menus. Plus, you also have, at some point have to equip the cigar gas spray for the end. So um, by doing this without ever uh, equipping the scientist uniform, you actually will save a fair bit of time uh, just from the pauses alone. Yep. So you'll see here Raichu is actually using the 3D camera uh the reason some people will use this is it's easy to judge when to stand up when going through that fence. It is possible to stand up early, and then you'll get electrocuted, and it looks really funny, but it is just a waste of time, and it's super frustrating. Yeah, so, again, so camera usage is a uh, personal preference in certain areas. Yep, so uh, you'll see Roger enter the lab now, and we're going to see him take out this first guard with just... A train shot roll, and there'll be another guard as he goes around the corner. Now, if you get discovered in here at all, it is going to cause you to not be able to progress. So you need to get to the door objective with no more than a caution. And uh, Apache actually decided yeah, to Apache opting the for the scientist uniform. Now, the reason he does this is because later on in the game, and I say much later, you will eventually need to equip this mask. Uh, he's done that now. He'll never, he won't have to do it, uh, when he gets all the way to that part of the game, but he will need to menu anyway to change to the actual officer's outfit. So, it's kind of, um, just a variation of ways of doing things. Yeah, basically just slightly different routing between the two. Alright, so they've paid a visit to Grenin, and now they need to go back to towards the warehouse. So what you would have seen uh, Raichu do a couple of times is what we call a box headshot. And box headshots are an interesting little interaction that when Snake comes out of a box, very similar to the quick headshot, uh, he will be perfectly lined up at head height. So if you quickly come out of a box and shoot, you're guaranteed to yeah. get a guard in the head. And uh, no one opting for the Mini Omega King special. No one going for Vent Clip. Very sad. Trick is too hard. Anyhow, um, so we're gonna get out of here. Uh, and soon we're gonna face our next boss, the Fear. And this boss on any difficulty in the speed run is a pushover on new game plus it's even easier he will be in the area that uh mini explained earlier when it comes to uh the scientist uniform when we leave we're going to try and enter the fight with 
a stun grenade equipped, which you've seen right through quickly menu two now. They're gonna take some damage, but it's not really a problem. So I'll explain this fight uh, in time with Raichu. So he's gonna start the fight and instantly gonna fake death pill. He's gonna wait until the fear comes over to investigate his untimely death. And on normal, we need to wait for him to turn around. Oh no, we don't. He actually goes early. And you throw the stun at the floor, pull out the Patriot, look up, and as he's stunned, you just mow him down with the Patriot. And for whatever reason, the game decides a stunned fear is a non-lethal taking fear. Yeah, if the fear is stunned, um, any lethal damage will count as uh, non-lethal damage against him. Alright, so we've actually seen Apache equip the animals camo now. I think Raichu is still foregone this. Uh, I can't see, he's in a box. But... Yeah, he, he's in the tiger stripe still. Yeah, so he's still in the in the tiger stripe. So this is the warehouse escape. Getting an alert here on this difficulty doesn't really matter. Although Apache is getting stuck on everything. Um, because in the next area there is a cutscene, and cutscene... Uh, load zones clear alerts the highest risk there is you can pretty much get knocked over by the shotgun guard but most of the time it's okay yeah so we're making our way over to the end um at this point uh we need to you we're going to be using the cigar gas spray um along with uh sun grenades and uh a, a handgun of some kind because we are going to be holding up the end. Yeah, the end. You know, if you ever played this game casually, which I'm sure most of you have, is one of the best boss fights in the series. However, like most bosses in speedruns, we're gonna make an absolute mockery of the old guy. So the idea is, uh, like every boss in this game, we're not gonna let him leave. Um. So we're gonna wait till they get there. Raichu's not too far now. He's just one more room. Uh, and Apache's not too far behind. These guys are keeping pretty good pace right now. All right, so Apache uh, is about two seconds behind. Raichu is the first into so Clavian herself. Now this is where this uh, fight with the end officially starts. We're gonna box and run up this way so we don't get shot. Uh, hopefully, uh, if all goes well, the end will shoot the tree in front of you and not hit you. The end fires tranquilizer rounds. The tranquilizer rounds can't kill you, but if your stamina reaches zero, you will get dragged all the way back to the lab. So getting, taking a continue of, I guess, some uh, of some sort here is pretty disastrous yeah those thin trees despite how thin the model looks they're actually like pretty much just one solid object so while they can see through it it is really hard for um enemies and the end to shoot through those trees so while it looked like he got lucky um that's actually just the end hitting a large hitbox on a tree <laughs> Yeah, they can program really large hitboxes for trees, but the pain's head still will bore. Um, so, alright, so we're going to see Raichu here equip the stun grenade to get up behind the end. We're going to get right behind him, we're going to pull out the six spray, we're going to hit him. We're going to hold him up. We're going to hit him with the six spray once he lays down. You have to wait a little bit. Throw the stun grenade, make sure it bounces off his back to hold the loop. Look up. Six spray him again. Stun grenade one more time. And one more six spray. We're double tap it, and that's the end. Raichu smashing that one out. However, Apache has it's got all pear shaped. So the reason why that works um, is for some reason hitting bosses when they're in a down state. Um, only certain bosses that you can actually like CQC interact with, like the end. Well, you can't actually CQC him, but I'm sure you know what I mean. But when you interact with them like that, and they're in a down state. 
hitting having them get hit by a grenade of some kind for some reason will reset their um like basically the amount of times they can take stun damage so it'll take it from let's assume it's at three at this point it'll take it back up to three so like if you did two sig sprays they're at one and then you hit them with the grenade it'll actually bring them back up to three not really sure why that is how it works, but that's why the loop works. You'll see it again um, on the boss, the end of the game. Yeah, it's a, it's a really odd interaction. Um, it's just developer oversight. So Raishu is first to what I'd like to call the one third of the way through the game, big ladder. Um, there's nothing to say here. Everyone knows about this ladder. Like, even people who don't like these games know about this goddamn ladder. So, uh, when we emerge at the top, however, we're gonna be at the mountains, and... So... The, the idea here is, first of all, we can't take an alert. It's really bad to take an alert up here, because the chopper will come and mow you down. And that hurts. You also can't progress. So... You'll see both runners will use the sp uh, six spray. How many units tall is this ladder? There is no loading zone for the ladder. The the loading zone is at a door at top. Yeah, the ladder you just have to climb in and get to the top of the area. Yeah, both runners are going to be, well actually not both runners, just just Raichu is going to be a little bit hungry at the moment. Apache chose to eat the calorie mate earlier, so that's helping him out a little bit. Yeah, so the animal's camo makes it so that um, uh, your hands don't shake when you hold a gun. If you have uh, lower than half uh, stamina, then Snake will start to like kind of wobble a bit when he's aiming, and uh, you'll hear his stomach growl. Um, the animal's camo gets rid of that, so we actually don't need to eat much of anything. Yeah, and um, thankfully this is available in both New Game and New Game Plus. Uh, you just gotta kill Ocelot uh, non-lethally to get it, and it'll spawn next to you in the cavern, so... Eating food is all but trivial, which you know, for its time was a super cool mechanic, but now we just mostly ignore it. So we're gonna see uh, Raichu roll a lot here, and the reason we roll and we don't box all over the joint is because we need to wait for guards to move uh, so we can take a certain path. If you just run, you will get seen by either a guy that's up on the ledge, or you they won't Yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to get seen by the guy with the rocket launcher in the top right on uh, Apache's view. Or you'll get seen by um, one of the guards on the far left, uh, near the end of the area. So, Raichu just showing how the box can get caught on literally everything. He took a... About a half a second time loss just for getting stuck. So one other really neat thing this game does is if you run into a guard with the box equipped, it will automatically unequip your box and which will allow you to do a bump roll. And in this case, we don't need to tranquilize them because the two guards we bump roll are actually just going to fly off the edge of the mountain, which doesn't actually count as a lethal kill uh, because technically Snake didn't directly deal uh, lethal damage. But uh, Apache is taken a little bit different by by shooting some people instead of doing any of the rolls. Yeah, and on Raichu's, you can see just how big the hitbox for the roll is. Um, if the guards notice you in some shape or form, like by your footsteps, and you roll, that will pretty much hit them. <laughs> yeah, it is it's... very large. Uh, we've decided it's something to do with uh, a shockwave coming from Snake's thighs. I believe that's Pythonicus. I think that's his method of thinking. Um, so we are going to see the last room uh, of the mountains, at least on the way up. And Raichu actually took an alert. Now this is really bad because... Actually, it was, it was before the call went out, so he's fine. 
Yeah, he got him for the call. He saved it. But if you take an actual alert here, you won't be able to enter the door he just went in. Uh, and you'll have to either reset the room by a fake death pill, or you'll have to wait it out until you degrade down to a caution. Yeah, so it's really bad to get an alert in this area. So the best thing to do if you get an alert is probably just a fake death pill and try the area again. Alright, so... Raichu's met up with Ava. He knows where he's gonna go now. Gonna pick up some noodles. We'll use those a little later on in the run. Uh, and Raichu is well on his way to the next boss, and arguably one of the most frustrating bosses in the game, being the Fury, because he is not 100% consistent. Uh, there is a loop for him, and both runners, I assume, are going to try and get it, but it's really up to um, the greater good of God to see whether or not he'll actually obey. Yeah, it's up to the Fury if uh, it works or not. He is a very finicky boss. He likes to do what he wants, likes to waste a lot of time by giving you bad patterns. So uh, it'll be interesting to see um, how he goes. Yep. So, uh, Raichu actually uh, rolling down those stair railings is a little bit of a risk because you can get stuck on top of them and just soft lock the game. It's very rare that it happens. In fact, I've only seen it once in the entire time I've speed ran this game. But uh, as you can see, Apache's not having any of that. He's just going to box down. And Raichu seems to have got the loop down by the looks of it. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, got down. the loop. Oh, oh but the, the oh. flame damage messed him up a little bit. That's alright. Oh, oh no. he's actually flown all the way away as well. Oh, and he fell off. Oh no. <laughs> and he takes a death. All right. So this wow. is an interesting strat from Apache. I've never actually seen anybody uh, go for a lethal kill. Uh, this does save a, a menu. You don't have to get the Mosin the gun out of your bag. Um, and he's also got the same loop going. Uh, however, it is just going to take longer. However, it only works for three hits of damage before I, eventually the Fury gets away. But the Fury has behaved really nice and he's just going to fly back and forth. Yeah, and you can see that just how fast uh, the uh, Mosin against strat is, is that uh, Raichu had to redo the fight, um, but doing his strat, but doing the non-lethal strat was still able to beat Apache in that area. Yeah, so even with the death, the Mosin Nagant strat is just uh, a couple of levels better. It just than... does more damage to him than uh, the Patriot does. Yeah, despite the unlimited ammo, the Patriot actually does relatively low amount of damage per round that it fires. So, uh, you'll find that a lot of the boss's iframes in this game aren't timed out as per how much damage you can do before iframes activate, but how many direct hits they can take. So, uh, if you take a hit from the Mosin Nagant compared to a hit from the Patriot, the Mosin Nagant does almost double the damage. Uh, Raichu. Gonna lose a little bit of time there. And the radio call went out as well, so... Uh, the Rykov's room yeah, is... he's going to have to, um, fake death pill in here. He's gonna have to reset the room instantly, because all the guards are gonna be out of whack. And, uh, we need them to be in a very certain area to get Rykov to play ball. So, we're gonna quickly see... Apache do a much slower strat by switching to the scientist uniform here. It works the same way as it does in the lab. You won't get an alert if somebody sees you, providing you don't get caught being a doofus. Uh, and Raichu's made another mistake, and Apache's going to take the lead here, dragging Raikov off to the locker room. Yeah, so what Raichu is doing here is actually um, a bit of a faster variation on the uh, uh, strategy that uh, Apache had done. 
Um, but unfortunately, his mistake at the start uh, is going to pretty much negate the uh, time save from that. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, we need to go visit Sokolov once again. He is really good at getting captured all the time. So we're going to dress up as Rykov, which totally isn't Raiden. There's, there's no joke here. Uh, of course, we still have an arrow sticking out of our knee from much earlier on in the, the run. Uh, so, once we get to this cutscene, we do have an unskippable scene of uh, the torture sequence. If you're squeamish, uh, I advise you, you change off. Also, Raichu doing two separate menus for Rykov uniform and the mask, which is incredibly inefficient. We're gonna lose some time for that. So this is just the torture sequence. Um, on European Extreme, there actually would be something to talk about here. Um, but there isn't here, so... I don't know, enjoy. Yeah, just... I really hope you like reading subtitles. Because that's about all there is to do here. Even in, like, an actual run, aside from European Extreme. But we just kinda... Kinda chill. <laughs> Tell me! Check chat moment. Stop it! Who have you been talking to? He doesn't know what you're talking about. You'd better start talking. Please, stop this! Who is Khrushchev's lapdog? How can you do this to him? I know you gave the data to someone. I never do that. You! Sokolov's apparent death is all retconned later. It's okay. But first, let's take a look at your body, shall we? What a beautiful body you have. Like a newborn baby. <laughs> but not for long. Well then, let's get started. <laughs> What is your target? Is it the Shagohad? All right, so or Sokolov. They're through the annoying, or maybe the legacy. part of the torture. Why they made that unskippable, I'll never know. So Answer we're gonna quickly see who is she, helping. He's gonna call a frequency to open up the door as opposed to here? getting fork. Um, so that door's gonna open now. You're a uh, tough and one. I'll be very surprised Even if Raichu does the same limits. thing. I uh, generally, most people go man. for fork strat to do the heal. So we get the alert in here because um, we need to take a set amount of damage um, on our way to the sorrow, um, because the sorrow fight will end once we die in the fight. So the point, basically, at this right now is just to take as much damage as we can so that we die faster once we get there yeah it's um uh, it's pretty safe to get the alert and uh have a bit of a cigar on the way out of here you know snake's been beaten up and who doesn't like it the game audio is real loud um roy that's on you my man oh uh, so, all right so all right so we're gonna see them both make their escape for the sewers uh not quite sure why Raichu decided rolling up the box was a good idea, but it does get him hit. I guess that stops him from going flying in the wrong direction, because you do want to take one shield bash from those guys. 
to help get that health down a little bit. We're also going to see them take a nosedive uh, off the sewer balcony. Well, uh, Apache's going to get through this this code deck. He's just going to just roll off the edge. Oh, he didn't roll. He's going to just drop off. Yeah, if you roll off, you die. <laughs> yeah, because it makes a huge amount of difference for some reason. Um, so we're going to see uh, a pretty standard route through the sewers here. Just going to roll and crawl through. Apache's going to... We're all a bit too far, but he has, pardon me, he has some, uh, a bit of a lead to, to play with here. Now, one thing I will take note of is neither of these runners decided to remove the tracker. Uh, so once they beat the Sorrow, there is going to be an Ocelot unit in the area after that they will have to negate as well yeah you'll have to avoid them uh this is actually faster than taking it out but um it's also pretty risky because if i remember correctly if you get an alert you can't enter the waterfall area where eva is if i'm not uh, mistaken you can you, you, you can. can okay okay yeah you can enter the waterfall but you do run the risk of getting hit by a shotgun um in right. normal and then getting knocked down and losing some time yeah yeah yeah, and in, in normal, uh, you don't have a lot of health, like, compared to very easy, where, uh, another T where you will just happily take the alert for the Ocelot unit, uh, it doesn't really matter, you lose some time in getting knocked down, but that's kind of just RNG you live with. Uh, in normal, you take a real risk of dying, because you don't have, if I remember correctly, a full health bar after this fight anyway. So we're actually going to see two different strats. Raichu's going to kill himself with grenade. Uh, Apache drowned himself. Yeah, see, you don't have a full health bar. So, uh, you do run the risk of actually dying. Yeah, so blowing yourself up with the grenade um, is actually uh, a second faster than drowning yourself. On both uh, normal and uh, European extreme. So Apache's gonna hug the wall to avoid getting seen by the first guard till as late as possible. He's gonna get stuck, which means he's gonna get caught up too. So this shotgun guy uh, is gonna miss, so he gets away with that one. So you can just enter the waterfall all happy. Raichu is gone for log roll, and that is a stupidly risky strat that no one should really do. Uh, it saves like two seconds. So, yeah, the, the it'll cost you twenty. Saves, yeah, you see, you save three to two seconds from going for it, but if you miss it, um, you land in the water below, and you have to swim back to to land and then go up again, and so you lose about twenty five. Yeah, twenty five thirty seconds if you don't get it. it. Does look cool though. It looks very cool. <laughs> All right, so Apache is through the long black screen. This is the longest load in the game, um, because it skips about four or five segmented cutscenes. Uh, we're going to pick up a new box around here. Uh, we're going to use this box for the rest of the game uh, because we need it to fast travel. So we're going to pick up this box at the end of the hallway. Uh, and we're going to try and climb up this ladder, but Snake will always press up against it before he climbs it because Snake has a morbid fear of ladders that the game just never explained to us earlier. Yeah, that's the uh, only ladder in the game uh, that you have to actually, like, get up against in order to climb it. All the others, you can stand in front of it and press uh, triangle and he'll climb it. But for some reason, that one, I guess maybe because it's a cutscene that you have to do it. I don't know. It's it's just Metal Gear things. I, I get sick of, like, trying to explain those really weird oddities. Alright, so Apache's done his major menu for this area to get all his items back after he lost them when getting captured. We're going to put everything away that we had. Get stuns, uh, C3. Then some people get the Patriot, the Mosin, the Gun, and the Mark 22. We're also going to get the Cardboard Box B. And Apache's just used that to fast travel. And conveniently, that box puts allows us to get right into the Shagahod lair. 
uh, Raichu is going to abuse some AI here, which is really cool. If a guard sees a friendly guard go down, their AI is programmed to help that guy. They really want to help their mate. They will happily ignore a walking cardboard box to go wake up their friends. Yeah, they basically go tunnel vision um, when they need to go help their friend out. And more, actually, rather than tunnel vision, it's more like everything around them except for their the guard they're trying to help doesn't exist. They just need to go right there. So um, they pretty much won't notice anything. You can do a lot of dumb stuff and they still won't see you. Yeah, if you're outside of a box, they will still see you, however, so that's why they'll run past when the box. Apache's going to be planning his third and going up to his last form of C3. Uh, so this is going to take us to the Volgan boss fight. Uh, this, bo this is another really exploitable boss, and Raichu actually just took an alert, so... I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get through this now, because if you get seen planting, uh, you instantly <laughs> he did get, a get He did get seen planting, which is weird. No, no. Uh, if you get seen plant, yeah, if you get seen planted by a guard though, yeah, so he's actually gonna reset the room by shooting the box. Anyway, a boss fight's happening. We're gonna see Apache knock old mate over. Um, he didn't quite get it. You can kill him in yeah, one phase. Yeah, you can phase. one cycle. You can one cycle first phase. But, uh, Apache just uh, with a neat little backup. You just run behind him and the shield doesn't work. Uh, so the second phase, we're gonna just lay down in front of him, wait for the shield to end and just spam. And you can one-cycle this too, which he just did well Well done, Apache. Yeah, the second phase is much easier to one-cycle. Yeah, in the first phase, you need, uh, on normal, you need all of the bullets to hit the head. Uh, Alright, so now we're up to the bike chase. This is the, like, the most boring part of the whole run, but everybody... You're just going to sit on the back of a bike with Eva, and we're going to try and do a little bit of chip damage to the Shagahod before the actual fight. Uh, it doesn't, like, it matters how much you do here, but what you do before the runway doesn't really matter. Like, in this whole first area, you're on a timer. It's not until after the first load zone on the bike that you taking out guards actually speeds things up. We can watch uh, Raichu's Vulcan, which he done slightly different. He doesn't throw him to the floor, and instead he just stands behind him. Uh, that doesn't allow you to one phase on normal. No, actually so, it does. You can one phase by uh, grabbing him and throwing him forward. Well, not if you shoot him in the ass, it doesn't. Well, um, yeah, but... <laughs> uh, it's a much harder to hit him in the head when you push him forward, so that's why most people will opt to throw him to the floor on normal. And Raichu's Volgan is over and has a reasonably good fight. Meanwhile, Apache's going to make us all get motion sickness by spinning around. Yeah, the chip damage that you do here um, in, in this section, it kind of matters. Not a whole lot. Um, it's just like a nice little bonus. Really, when you get to the runway and the Shagahot is chasing you, that's where you need to be spamming your missiles as fast as you can. Yeah, and this is, whilst, like, the idea of spamming your missiles looks easy, it is not that easy to do very fast. Like, it's very tiring on the hands because it requires you to hold, uh, I believe it's L1 or R1, I can't quite remember. You need to hold R1, press square, then double tap R2. So you have to keep, um, R1 held, and you have to be making sure that you're double tapping R2 after every single shot. So it's a very, uh interesting motion to do with your hands and it can get kind of difficult at, part, at times to like hold up and just do really fast but um the amount of damage you can do to the shagohod with this trick with this technique um is actually really really high on lower difficulties you can get the shagohod down to very close to three quarters of his hp gone and the reason we do this is just to speed up the fight against the Shagohod. The health that he has here will carry into the actual boss fight. Raichu showing off with the one rocket uh, sky bridge there. So one thing, like, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, in terms of gameplay-wise, is actually one of the shorter games. So that's why... Uh, 
like if if there wasn't these two on rail areas, this game would be well sub hour. Yeah, it would probably be about like fifty minutes or so. Patchy's just uh shooting the sky. He's had it with the sun today. But uh so yeah, there isn't a whole lot you can do to speed this up. You've just gotta kill uh, enough guards that so that Eva will progress. Even if you don't kill the guards, eventually she will just go upon, like, she'll just get bored of sitting around and go. Uh, but now we're on the runway. So the first half of the runway before we get up to the first load screen is we're mostly just going to be taking out these bike uh, chase. Uh, the, my apologies. It's really early for me. The bike chase, the guys on the bikes chasing us is what I'm trying to say. Um, eventually we'll be able to get some damage on the Shagahod when he catches up a little bit. Uh, also, one thing I will mention, when you're trying to spam at the Shagahod, you also have to not hit the treads. Because if you hit the treads, the Shagahod slows down and you're unable to get reliable damage on him. Uh, and the AoE from the RPG-7 is big enough that, uh, you can accidentally hit them even though it looks like you've missed them by a long, long way. Yeah, also, um, when the Shagohot is farther away, uh, its hitbox, kind of, not really, becomes a bit smaller, but your missiles stay the same size, so the farther it is away, the easier it is to hit the treads. And also, if it's too far away, the actual Shagohot does not have a hitbox, but um, the treads still do. The treads will keep their hitbox for... for Quite a quite a ways away. <laughs> so the the thing is, it's uh, it's a technique for older hardware that they did on the on uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. When something is like ideally out of interaction range, they remove the collision, which saves on uh, hardware requirements. Uh, but as like as many said, doing this really causes issues with trying to hit the Shagahod. So most people are gonna wait till the Shagahod lines up with them here, and they'll start doing their spam. So, uh, Apache hit a tread, so it slowed him down. Uh, we just wait for him to catch up again. And we try and hit the soft part under the f underneath the front of the Shagahod, but Apache's having a lot of bad luck and he keeps hitting the treads. So on lower difficulties, you can see Apache's got a fair amount of damage down to it. Optimally, you can get, like uh, Mini said, down to just about a third uh, of their health remaining. Uh, on, uh, for instance, a very easy, you can get well over half with minimal effort. Eventually the damage does cap out, though. Yeah, and the other interesting thing is the damage cap is actually at the same point on uh, all difficulties. It's just that on higher ones, um, its defense is so high that you'll likely never get to that point. Unless yeah, you like, can, that, like, that would shoot missiles, like, pass. incredibly fast, yeah. All right, so we need to shoot the two three C three charges. Uh, most MGS three runners will do like a swag strat here, which, by the way, requires no skill whatsoever. Um, you just aim at the C three, uh, and you just don't aim down your sight, and you can no scope it. Apache's actually gonna watch. For instance, when I do this, I just use Eva's voice cue to shoot the last C three, but. Apache just actually uses a visual cue by the looks of it. Alright, so the actual Shagohod fight. We need to hit the very back of the Shagohod. Um, and we're going to do this by hitting one of the treads so that it uh, basically will stop spinning around. We're going to try and aim for the same tread every time because if you hit a different tread there's a chance that the Shagohod will um, try and spin the direction you're spinning, making hitting it in the back uh, impossible because it's going yeah. the same way as you. Yeah, it's really annoying. Um, and also, Eva can just really drive slow, or she can just stop like she is now, which isn't so much a problem because the actual Here Come the Missiles phase in normal you'll always see, uh, but... We'll ignore yeah, them. Yeah, you can see, see like it this. Like, right now, I was getting really bad Eva luck. Like, she's just not cooperating. 
Yeah, exactly. So he got lucky. You can hit the back of the Shagahod with the AoE. And here it is. Here's the stupid Shagahod spinning the same way you are. And so hitting him does nothing. Like, there's nothing you can do about this. You can spam and try and get a lucky hitbox hit, but... Oh, it's yeah, happening so, again. Yeah, that will that will generally happen if you hit the same tread um, twice in a row. Uh, but Apache finished with the Shagohad fight, and now he's going into Volgan 2. And uh, Raichu, I guess, is uh, swagging even harder than Apache did by shooting it with a pistol. But that's not important because we're going to be taking out Volgan with the SVD here. Um... By shooting one of the treads to distract him, then equipping the SVD, you can take him out if you get two headshots in two hits. So, very uh, fast kill from Apache over there. Yeah, Apache did a pretty good uh, Shagahod phase two. Uh, uh, whilst uh, Raichu's still on the Shagahod fight and Apache's doing nothing interesting because this is the boring part of the game, uh, you can actually get two shots under the back of the Shagahod per time you stun it. Um, but Raichu is getting really good luck here, uh, with terms of Eva, so he's gonna get a bunch of shots on, but he's also getting bad spin luck, and it's just not fun. Yeah, so the, the idea with the, it is random whether or not the Shagoha tries to spin in the same direction as you, but there, but it's actually more likely to happen if you alternate between which treads you're hitting, Generally, if you hit the same tread to try and stun him, he will just stop moving right away. Um, it doesn't. It's not guaranteed, but it's usually what happens. And that was a pretty decent uh, Shagohod fight from Raichu. Now he's going into Volgan 2, so we're going to see um, how he handles this. So he gets the quick shot off, which is actually more difficult than it looks. And so, you can do it twice by shooting him in the back, and then in the, for the last time you hit him in the head, and that'll end the fight. Yeah, so that was a very fast uh, Volgan 2 from Raichu over there. Yeah. Also, uh, I'll note on this bike part of the bike chase, you can, you can do literally nothing, uh, and you won't make it any slower. Like, you can just walk away, get a drink. On normal, um, there are going to be some moments where you'll have to take out guards just to make sure you don't, like, die. Because you will if you literally don't do anything. But um, for some sections, you can just sit there and not do anything. Like, where Apache's going into right now, you, you have to take out these guards. Otherwise, they will kill you. Well, the point I was making was more we can't speed it up, but... Yeah, we can't really speed. We can't speed this part up, but it is possible to die here. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not a fun death because this particular room drags on for like over a minute. And if you die here, you have to do the whole room again. Yeah, this one's really long. I think I think this is the longest one in the entire bike chase. It, it is, I'm and somehow... So, yeah, it is. But somehow Apache caught fire, and I've never seen anybody catch fire. Also, the guards can just do this, and they can fly right above you. Uh, and you can't, yeah, and like, you can't, you can't them. take them out. <laughs> You can't hit them, but they can hit you! So, oh, uh, this is like a very frustrating area um, for a lot of European Extreme Runners because you really do have to take these guys out and you're ideally on European Extreme, you're doing it non-lethally to keep your Foxhound rank. Whereas these guys are just gonna spam the SVD, Raichu might use the RPG, whatever, it doesn't really matter what you use. You can use stun grenades if you want to be really fancy, but that's, that's, that's hard. Yeah, the, on European Extreme, the whole point of this section is to survive and make sure you don't kill anyone. And that is very difficult. <laughs> Wait, you can shoot the log with the- I didn't know you could shoot the log with the SVD, that's interesting. Yeah, you can take it out with the SVD. Um, so if you don't take it out, aside from Apache dying there, uh, Eva will say you stink, and that's about it. It doesn't yeah, actually that's, that's even cost you time. Yeah. Like, it's just... If, if anything, the only reason died. he had to... Yeah, he would have died if he hadn't taken it out, so he had to. Alright, so... This this section here is the final section of the bike chase that Apache is on. Um, 
he actually does need to be careful because he is relatively low and no one picked up life meds so he hasn't even got a backup strike to heal you can't like there's no rations in this game there's no he's trying to shoot the keraton um there's no way to regen health quickly without life meds and they're few and far between in this game yeah, very uh, little believe, life meds, but uh, like food four. all over the place. Yeah, I um, believe there's four life meds on normal, if I remember correctly, but... That sounds about right. Um... Yeah, food will... Being full stamina will make your health regen fast. Like, you can see Apache's health has actually regened a considerable amount since he entered this room. Um... So now he's probably just gonna just chill. He's gonna no scope some fools and uh, just watch Eva's sick driving. This is uh, what happens when Kojima takes too much inspiration from movies and wants to make 15 minutes of his game a movie. Aside from the already existing cutscene movies. Alright, so the voice line of here comes the jump hold on tight means you're done with the bike chase, you can stop doing anything. You can watch, for some reason those guys have the exact same bike as Eva, they only have one person on them but she can somehow by a miracle jump further because physics doesn't apply to uh, pretty ladies riding motorcycles. Uh, but sadly her extreme driving skill is going to come to an end where she gets impaled on a tree. Ow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a great way to end the bike chase on her behalf, so we have to give her some help. We're gonna fix up her cuts, uh, and we're gonna drag her along with us, and I'm pretty sure, did Apache actually finish that heal? Uh, he yes, does. he did, yeah. You can't, you can't exit if you don't uh, fully heal Eva. Oh, right, I'm used to the noise of the... Uh... The sound of the actual her being healed. All right. So the first part we don't actually need to take Eva with us, but this is the arbitrary uh, escort section. Every Metal Gear Solid game has one to some extent. Uh, even even Metal Gear Solid One, it lasts for two seconds, but you've got one. So we're gonna we're gonna we have to tell Eva that it's okay to come with us. Otherwise, she will just get to a certain point and stand, and she'll crouch and try and you hide. Actually we actually only have to do that once. As long as she doesn't get really close to you, you can only, uh, you only have to press a triangle one time. If she gets, like, super close to you, then she'll actually stop moving, but, um, as you can see with what Apache did, he just called her once, and he's just slowly walking forward, and Eva is following him. So he only has to actually call her one time. Yeah, um... If she gets distracted by anything, so if she gets seen by an enemy, or God forbid she finds a snake, um, she will, like, either try and run and hide, or she yeah, will shoot have, though. She is incredibly again, lethal. Yeah, yeah but if yeah, she, yeah, if she like, will kill guards. yeah, she will absolutely nail guards with that uh, single action army. She's the most useful follower in all of the Metal Gear escorts. Um. But, uh, yeah, we have to take it to the conveniently placed ledge to require two people to get up. Uh, we're gonna feed her here because she gets hungry due to her injuries. Uh, she's greedy, she really likes, uh, ramen. So, we don't really have to interact with any guards in the first area, but here, we're gonna see Apache take out, I believe it's four guards in this area. Five guards. Yeah, you have to might... take out these guards. Yeah. There is a strat that involves a Keratan here, but it looks like uh, Apache's just gonna put yeah, him he's to just sleep. going to take him out. Alright, so there's two piles you can take here to get Eva to her destination. Uh, one is faster. And we're gonna get some Septic because... He, I, there's no real reason to do that. I guess he's just burning time whilst he waits. Yeah, you so, have to wait with Eva anyway, so you can just kind of mess around, as long as you're not walking backwards. Yeah, because if Eva loses sight of you, she will also stop. She doesn't have to have yeah, a direct line of sight. Yeah, so there's a couple of guards here that we're going to take out. 
Um, this is the last area we will require our, uh, uh, our hush puppy, so we can pretty much just shoot as many times as we want, providing we don't run out of suppressor. Now, after Eva jumps down, we do have to call her again. For some reason, she won't progress. Yeah, she's gotten too call. close to you at that point, and then uh, she'll consider herself like, I need to wait for Snake to give me my next, uh, um, my next command. Yep. So an interesting thing you can do here is if you don't go right to this ledge and you call Eva slowly, it, she will path over the hill. She can walk around the tree, which is just like a waste of five seconds because she feels like wasting it. Uh, but we're going to get to the boss. Now, the boss has another loop uh, and it's a really it's a really fun fight to learn. So we're going to counter. We're going to shoot her in the head with the Mosinagant twice. We're going to punch her so she falls over. And we're going to do the same stun grenade trick we did with the end. We're going to throw it, turn around, pull out the Mosinagant, and put one in her head. Or you can put a couple into her body if you really want. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't run out of ammo. Uh, Apache yeah, did Apache, the yeah, yeah, he messed it up. You're supposed to do two shots and then throw another stun grenade. Yeah. Um, but now, so... He, what he should do is you run away from her. So she charges at you like this, and then you just restart the loop again. You counter, you shoot it twice. Oh no, he's messing up the loop. Oh, he messed it up and got thrown down. I mean, he's still a fair way ahead of Raichu, so it's it's a pretty lenient it's a pretty lenient section for him to mess up. But the boss loop is not easy. All right, this is how it's supposed to look. Now he threw the grenade, and. Two shots, it doesn't matter where you hit her. You want to hit her in the head for the most damage. Alright, he actually just got it. Alright, so he did kill it. So the boss is done, uh, and the majority of the gameplay is now over. There is a whole one thing left to do in this game. So at this point, um, she's going to hand uh, Snake a Patriot, and you actually have to, if you don't press square uh, to shoot right when you get it, you actually have to wait, I think it's like 8 or so seconds for Snake to convince himself to finally pull the trigger. So what a lot of runners do at this part is they just mash square. Yeah, it's like, um, they, they did this, I guess, to try and simulate how hard it would be to shoot your mentor. But we're heartless, we just spam square, we want to kill her as quickly as possible. Right, you having an unfortunate uh, mistake at the start and missing the CQC counter. Yeah, and he's also making the mistake of chasing her. Um, most of the time, she can like if she really wants to, she will just run away for ages, like from tree to tree. Uh, if you run away from her, she will. Okay, right, he's doing the fancy loop by throwing the stun up in the air. It does the same thing. He actually missed the second shot with the Mark 20 into there, so that's unfortunate. So throwing the stun grenade in the air is actually um, pretty good because it gets the boss to stand up, meaning you can um, do two shots and then actually slam her again for a little bit extra damage than uh, just countering her again and keeping yeah, her on the ground. Right, you should end this fight with two, with one more shot after this. All right, yeah, so the slam goes. ends it. Uh, so that's a that's a GG pretty much. It's just spamming this revolver on Apache's side, and that is that is the end of gameplay. Uh, I believe we are watching the credits though, if I remember correctly. But uh, Apache took that pretty convincingly. He was behind for the majority, but he you know a cleaner run altogether, slower strats, but better execution. Couple of mistakes on uh, Raichu's end uh, cost him the race, but he was doing pretty well for most of it. Fun fact that uh, actor's name for Eva is not a real person, it is an alias. The actual English voice actor for Eva, nobody knows who it is.
So there were some moments in this race where uh, Apache was doing um, some slightly a lot. He actually did a, f a fair amount of a slightly slower strategies compared to Raichu, but um, the the minor mistakes that both runners made. Uh, Raichu made some more damaging ones than Apache did, which is ultimately what um, cost Raichu the victory here. Both players played pretty well. It's hard to play perfectly the entire time, obviously. But um, ultimately, the mistakes that Apache made uh, were a little bit less damaging than the mistakes that Raichu made. If it was played by David Hayter, great actor, Grange. He is a very good voice actor. Hello, dad boys. G'day, Apache. Well, good run, my friend. Good run. <laughs> there, was some, there was some interesting stuff going on in that run. Like, okay, I, I, okay. Fucked, I fucked the end up. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, that end wasn't pretty. I, I didn't even know what to do. I thought, do I try and fight him? Or I was like, no, no, fuck it. Just re restart. No. No, you never want to fight him. Yeah, no, don't, <laughs> don't fight him. Because uh, once he leaves the second area, if he runs left after he leaves that second area, where he goes is <coughs> completely random. Mate, when I, uh, when, I, when I was like on the bike chase bit and I was watching you do the Shago Hard and you, the Shago Hard was just not cooperating, I was like, uh, I've been there. <laughs> I think everyone who's ever run this game has like felt the wrath uh, of Eva's driving. Yeah. Oh, like, yes. I mean, it wasn't or, even the Shago Hard, it was... It was right, you... I don't know what happened, I think I bumped the Engineer in the fuel tank, at the fuel tank, and just, that was it then. I mean, I I feel like I could have pulled ahead because it was a really fast Fulgan too, and, uh, but it was, like, losing, the, taking a continue there was just like, no, it's done now, really, at that point. Did you, I can't... Did you take an Engineer, uh, yeah, did you take yeah, a I bumped, the, con yeah, I bumped the Engineer, so I just it's, shot it's... the fuel tank. It's like, such a horrific place to take a continue because of how far back in the room you actually start. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, like, like I took a continue to the end, but like I'm right at the fight already. Like take taking a continue there is awful. Like it was one thing to take a continue at Rykov, but to take two because yeah. I wasn't far enough ahead. I really shouldn't have used the strat that I just found out about. <laughs> was it using a technique <laughs> you've technique. only heard about in the middle of that fucking race <laughs> wasn't very the <laughs> But uh, no, no. that was fun. I mean, like, it was really close for pretty much the entire thing. Even at the end, like, you were basically just a room ahead of me. Yeah. Well, we'll put it at the at the end of the Ocelot fight, aside from you messing up the loop, right? You used both went into the caves dead at the same time. Yeah, yeah you, were, you were tied. Like, literally tied when you entered the caves. It was, it was yeah. pretty weird. Did, did you like, do, like, a disguiseless slab and fast exit? Yeah. I did, did like, yeah. I did that bullshit lab with the box headshot, like, <laughs> I got I, it, I, I was I, like, I was actually screaming, like, oh my god, no! <laughs> I think my, have... uh, I think my Ocelot and my Pain were both really, really fast. Like, yeah, well, like, I, yeah I your Ocelot content. was, like, pretty much perfect. That I was the what caught you pain. up to, to Raichu. It's actually really interesting, because, like, both of you guys used a mixture of, like, uh, Apa Raichu used a lot of um, faster strategies, like in comparison to what um, Apache was doing. But a lot of the stuff that Apache did, besides the the boss fights, were a bit more consistent and nailed them first try. And just had, like like I said earlier, Raichu, you both had small mistakes throughout the whole thing. I mean, but um, the small mistakes that Apache made were not as damaging as the ones that Raichu made. Yeah, I mean, S taking such three as continues, rolling off the edge. Four continues. Yeah, a constant, like... a constant back and forth between you guys was very entertaining. Yeah, that was that was dope. I'm looking forward to watching it back and actually listening to the commentary because my girlfriend's been laughing her ass off in the background the whole time. So yeah, it like... must be good. It must have been funny. I think I could have probably I... been okay with those two continues at Raikov, but falling off. At the last minute, at the Fury, it was just like... Yeah, oh, no. that was... Well, the thing is, your Fury... You still beat him out of the Fury because that Patriot <laughs> strat is really slow compared to Mose and the Gun. Like, yeah, it's oh, easier, yeah, oh, but yeah. it's really it's slow. So, it's so slow, but you, you gain about eight or nine seconds for not, like, equipping the Mose and the Gun. And also, um, I just feel I just feel safer with it. Like, like so many times where 
Um, I end up dying to the fury. I just thought, nah, I'd rather just stick with I'd, I'd stick with a Patriot and I know I'm safer. Even if I'm a little bit slower, I know I won't take a continue or anything like that. I just, speaking, no. of, uh, speaking of uh, things, I kind of felt your pain at uh, Warehouse Exterior where you've missed the damage on the end. Oh, I missed it. Oh, no, 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 but I noticed I hadn't taken the fucking leech out and I was like, oh, no. Like, like I was swimming and I was like, why is my stamina so low? What the fuck's going on here? And I hadn't taken the leech out. Oh, oh is, is that why you ate the calorie, man? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I, I, I was like, what is he doing? Like, you're not, you're <laughs> never supposed to eat. Why did he, I didn't even realize you didn't take it off. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'd opened the menu to do it and everything, but I must have just used the knife on it or something and not noticed I hadn't cured it that was oh awful. that is unfortunate it, it was just, it was just, it was just honestly the pair of, those runs were just flub 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 but it it, it, it was dope I, th I think even these like these igts are gonna be n nice for no load trick times like that you know it, it was a good run i think mine's gonna be like a uh a, a one a really low 120 i think mine will be i think it's about a 121 you there's there's no yeah. way it's a 121 there's no way mine's a 121 uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right using, now I'm using splits, so like. Oh, aside from that, I'm using I'm using the stream timer as a thing, and I realized like we sat watching you at the freaking XMB menu for about five minutes. So yeah, but um, <laughs> nah, well, that that was tons of fun. So I ten out of ten would do it again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Don't race. Maybe it's maybe I'll never be an extreme next time. Yeah, like. Honestly, all that happened was when I got to continue at the Fury, I just got really fucking stressed. And you know, you get really stressed and you just you just can't concentrate. Yeah, you know? make some and minor not, mistakes like, and just like uh, get thrown off. Like I don't know what's happening at like Grosley Grad with that guy who's not he like he's not meant to see me, but every single time he sees me and I don't know what I'm doing there. So if anybody can figure that out for me and let me know so that stops uh, happening. The, the guy I just like, went to spec savers. That's I don't know, dude. Like, he shouldn't see you, though. He should completely ignore you. But, like, for some reason, he always catches attention of me in the box. So you have to box headshot. But the box headshot is a fucking backup strat. So it's, like, not very consistent because you're not really meant to go for it. You kind of have to just, on the fly, jump into a box headshot, which is... Oh, my God. It's like the warehouse... Not the warehouse. The lab box headshot. I do that as a rule. That's just the way I do the lab. So I'm more consistent with that. But when it comes to, like, backup headshots, it's like, no... Dude, honestly, I just hate Grozny Grad. And then I think, obviously uh, I wasn't uh, very smart to do a fucking strat that I just heard. <laughs> two days ago. A, a race, a race is a different breed, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a, it's a diff. It's not like when you're like, just playing the game for a PB and stuff. It's, it's yeah, all... yeah, you, yeah, you have to play a lot differently. Yeah, like I went into the race and I said before like days and weeks ago that like i don't care i'm just gonna go balls to the wall with it and that's basically what i did yeah i don't no, respect because you said you, you know i'm gonna do log roll i'm gonna do disguiseless lab I mean, i'm gonna do fast lab exit just, respect like, because uh, apache i did that virtuous bro. mission <laughs> that ride yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 he did the, he yeah. did the let's go. it was really nice yeah, let's he go <laughs> like i don't care i went in i was like i don't even give a fuck dude because i have backups <laughs> if i miss if he happens to not hear me or I roll into him. I don't, I was just like, I'm doing it. It's, and when it worked, I was just like shaking, like, yes, it fucking worked. But hold on, I'm not out of here yet, dude. Hold <laughs> on, I'm only sure. five minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've I, won the race. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, aside, aside from obviously my fuck up, my fuck up at the end, like, I, 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 I've never done that before. I don't know what the fuck happened. I literally just shot him with my, I, I literally like just shot him or something. And I was like, oh, fuck. Um, and obviously leaving the leech in, which was an accident. Like my strategies, they might not be the flashiest, and I might not do like you know all this like what I consider multi-segment stuff that Raichu comes up with. But <laughs> everything I do do, I'm very consistent with. Yeah, I just yeah, I very know. very consistent play um, on the both of you. It's just Raichu goes to the ones that are just a, a little bit harder. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. I just do all the just a little bit harder to get consistent. I mean, I kind of laugh sometimes. I joke with like some of the runners, like Zero and Apache. I'm like, I make all these cool strats, and you guys are all too pussy to use them. But I mean, I, I nobody am. should I use them. They're stupid. <laughs> it's yeah, not got, worth I, doing. Uh, one twenty oh two. A 120.02, which is a good number. Very nice, yeah. Sure. That is that is really nice. Yeah, I mean, 102 like... kills, though. Is this normal MGS2 or something? 
I am a murderer. Like you. I mean, mine's I, not going to look much better, to be honest. I've, I've, I've good, had, good thing we kill kill ourselves with the sorrow, otherwise uh, it'd be uh, quite a, <laughs> yeah. a long walk for Apache. It'd be, it'd be quite a long walk down the, the river of reflection, that's for sure. I mean, honestly, yeah, I, it might be faster just to stand on one of those ghosts and let them kill you than drowning yourself <laughs> with the amount of kills. I am... Um, Thanks, thanks for having me take part and everything. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to drop out for a minute and go. I don't know, lie on the floor and uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not like, question, man. I'm just, I'm like, I'm really happy because I get to go back to UEX. So I don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you there. Like I'm moving on to European Extreme now as well. I want to. I'm. I, I missed UEX. Like I've been saying it like because the last couple of weeks I have diverted all my attention to normal. So I'm just like, oh yeah, go back to UEX, back to the promised land. <laughs> Uh, by the way, everyone, Raichu did say that he's going to demod and stop running MGS if he yeah. loses to me. We ain't, we're not going to hold it. We're not going to hold him to I'm it. Gonna, yeah. I'm sorry, Minnie, you're back to being by yourself. <laughs> yeah, so you're doing all the oh, work. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to. So I'm going to unmod myself, Minnie, but then I'm going to get you to mod me back. All right. So then I've taken okay, okay. my promise. <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right. Let's find out. All right. All right. All right. We're, we're still waiting on. Uh... The yeah, very last few there. seconds of, of Raichu. But uh, next up is Metal Gear Solid 1. And uh, God that's dang. a game. That's that a game a we game. all like. And, uh, Extreme any percent as well. God damn, that's a hard run. Yeah, it is a... It is a brutal run, and it is going to be between, I believe, Trom and Plywood. And I don't know. I didn't check. I'm lazy, but I'm pretty sure it's Trom and Plywood. It is a Trom uh, and Plywood on Emulator. On, on emulator, okay, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, Alright, so, so uh, yeah, it is going to be Metal Gear Solid 1, any percent, on extreme. Uh, it is good run, stick around. Um, if you've never seen an any percent run of Metal Gear Solid 1, <laughs> it's bonkers. It's an experience. Especially with these two guys. Yeah, it, it's bonkers. These two guys are the best at it, so stick around and... Alright. Thanks everyone. Farewell, friends. Thanks to Roy for all his for his cool work. Thanks, Roy. I'm gonna move out of here so you can set up for the next race. See ya. Yep, I'm live. Oh, I'm on mic. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome. So, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm going to be commentating this MGS1 segment of the relay race between Mr. Trompensino, one of the greatest MGS1 speedrunner for this category. And Mr. Plywood, the current world record holder of this category. So, uh, with me here is Mr. Ruckus. Are you here, sir? Can I hear you? Uh, yes, I'm here. How are you doing, good sir? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. This is going to be any percent extreme, and uh, which means they're going to be large skips, uh, unlike... The previous run between Apache Smash and uh, Apache Smash and Raichu. Uh, this, there are going to be a lot of glitches and there are going to be a lot of things that does not make any sense if you are first time you're seeing this type of runs. That's right. So, yes. Uh, so, both of our runners are pretty much ready. Uh, let's just see the countdown. 
We're going to have to wait for them to start. All right. Yep, I can see them clearly. OK. And they're off. And here we Maybe. go. All right, there Maybe. we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. So uh, a little bit of information about this run, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. And we're playing the integral version of the game, which was released uh, after the original games. Uh, this is by far the fastest version to speedrun uh, for various reasons. The most uh, important one is that the ability uh, to skip Kodak uh, sorry, excuse me, liquid talk at the end of the game, which saves right. like two minutes and 30 seconds, which is com really, really huge. You cannot skip any of that uh, cutscene in any of the other versions, with, uh, with the exception of the PC, of course. Uh, so this is why we're playing the integral version of the game. That's right. It's basically free time. That is correct. Other than that, uh, it's pretty much the same as the US version of the game. Uh, the integral version was only released in Japan and all for the PlayStation and for PC as well. But PC is a whole different beast than this uh, version here. Yes. So uh, this is the first area of the game. Uh, right now, they are trying to pretty much manipulate this guard so he does not bother this anymore. Uh, as we're waiting for the elevator to come down and uh, we're doing this small manipulation so he will go away because if you do not do so, by the time the elevator comes in, he's going to spot you as you go into the elevator and you're going to have to do this whole segment all over again. Waiting for the elevator since the start of the game is like about two minutes. So uh, there's no, there's nothing you have to do. Like you do not have to go as fast as possible or do this manipulation as fast as possible because you're on a timer and you're going to have to wait for the elevator to come down. It's probably the most annoying thing about uh, resetting. <laughs> Yeah, that is correct. I mean, uh, waiting for that two minutes after starting the game is also resetting over and over again. It could be a little bit atrocious, actually. Right. So it's one of some of the big differences between the console version and the PC version are that uh, you can skip codec calls uh, completely in the PC version. Funny camera angle from plywood there. Um, you can skip uh, codec calls completely in the PC version, and the inventory is slightly different, which opens up uh, even more bugs and glitches to uh, exploit this uh, run. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, that's the beauty of speedrunning the PC version, but we're not going to talk about this. We're going to focus on this console version here uh, for now. Uh, so first, the first area coming up here uh, is going to be the helipad. We're going to see if each one of them, if any one of them is going to go for the fast helipad, it's kind of risky, actually, on extreme difficulty, because you can only get shot once. If you got shot more than once, twice, you're going to die. And doing the fast helipad will save up to, like, seven seconds, if done correctly. Uh, we're going to about to find out who's going to go and balls out and risk this, uh, do this risky strats, actually. These two are known for uh, taking the ballsy strats in uh, tournament runs and, and races. Yeah, that is correct. That's why they are in top of their game. So That's right. let's see and find out. Tromp and Cino is actually going, uh, sorry, Plywood is going for the fast strats. Yep. So is Trom, yeah. Let's see if he's going to take this line. And he did it correctly. Both Trump runners going for it. And yeah, both of them did it correctly. They are really neck and neck to each other. And uh, yeah, this is one of the most important strats. If you want to speed run this game at a high level, you need to learn how to do fast uh, helipad. You need to get yourself uh, discovered by the searchlight, rush in, pick up the chaff grenade, and then continue forward uh, right. to the air vent without, uh, while avoiding these shots from the soldiers. And it's actually easier said than done. Uh, you need to do a lot of practices in here. Even for me, I mean, sometimes I screw that up and I ended up, oh, okay, game over. Let's start again. Start it's over true. again. It's another two and a half minutes in the uh, dock. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Thankfully, it's like the first five minutes of the run, so it's not of a big deal. Mm -hmm. 
So coming up is the tank hangar and uh, here uh, there's a fast strat. Let's see if anyone of them gonna go for it. It is extremely risky and sometimes random. Uh, let's see if Plywood is going for it. No, he's going. He's taking the safe strats, which is yes. really, really smart because this strats is really shaky. Same thing with Trump and Cino. They both doing the safe strats here, and they're gonna head to the elevator. So, uh, the safe strats you knock into the tank and pretty much produces a noise and interrupt distracting the guard, paying the paying attention of that guard, and he come to you investigate, and then you rush into the uh, elevator. So, uh, here's the first major glitch they're gonna do, something we call out-of-bound air vent glitch. And Plywood did it correctly, same thing with Trump and Sino. Uh, they're gonna navigate out-of-bound of this area, and then they're gonna touch the trigger outside their door number 6, which is take you to the torture room. And just like that, they skip over 30 minutes of the gameplay of this game, and uh, they are now right. captured. So, yeah, normally uh, you're supposed to go in, meet Darba Chief, fight some bosses, Ocelot, Tank, uh, Ninja, Psycho Mantis, Sniper Wolf, but we just throw that all over the window, just kept <laughs> over it, like 30 minutes of the game and head to the uh, torture uh, sequence and uh, now we're inside here and we're gonna wait for even more time. Uh, so this strat is actually one of the <laughs> most amazing strats. I, I believe it was discovered by Magnum666 or Thrill UK, I do not remember. Yeah, yeah, but... Magnum 66 and Slade did a lot of uh, work on making this skip viable, I believe. Yeah, yeah that is correct. I mean, uh, when, when they started the skip, they started more investigation through the through the run itself and the route, and this is like, this is what uh, any percent extreme actually now uh, happen and it's possible to be completed. And uh, a little bit of manipulation here, um, so you can you see both plywood and trump and Cino actually went underneath the bed and they wanted to trick that guard outside which is name his name is johnny and mm -hmm. uh, to to think that he actually they snake actually escaped and uh, when he's, he comes in uh, he's gonna see that snake is nowhere to be found and this is where like plywood trump and Cino is gonna reveal uh, uh himself to to Johnny, and by doing this, uh, this will pretty much skip uh, a pattern where Johnny gonna go to sleep, and that will end up wasting like 40 seconds. So doing this skip is really, really important. Otherwise, you're gonna end up losing 40 seconds by not doing that. So yeah, go underneath the bed, reveal himself, reveal yourself to Johnny that you did not escape, and uh, this will pretty much escape his uh, skip his sleeping cycle. However, if you try to escape, when he comes to investigate that you're not here, you're gonna end up soft locking the game. Uh, that's why uh, you cannot uh, escape just yet. You wanna wait for Arakan to show up so we can get the catch up from him and escape the cell. That's right. If you actually stay under the bed and escape the cell, you kind of soft lock because you don't have the key card to escape the room. <laughs> Yeah, that is correct. A lot of people have been asking me for that. Now you know why. And of course, Rip Merrill. <laughs> you, uh, I mean, it's faster uh, to submit to the torture over like, uh, Had enough. over like resisting so, the torture. Yeah, it saves over that. like five minutes uh, saving Merrill. So yeah. By the way, who's who the hell is Merrill? <laughs> yeah, we it. never meet her in this run yeah. until yeah, she's in here. I'll have my fun with her I kill her. So. I hope you can There's a small technical difficulty here with uh, Trump and Sino's uh, stream, but don't worry, uh, we're gonna keep you up updated. So it seems they're pretty much in sync right now. So yeah, that is correct. Watching plywood stream means you're basically watching both. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're pretty much uh, on sync. Uh, so now they are pretty much fully captured. Uh, we're they're gonna have to wait for Otacon to show up and give them. And they will get the catch-up keycard number six and some rations on the way. Uh, keycard number six will allow you to enter uh, all the doors. That is keycard six and less. Uh, this will uh, this is what makes this run actually possible. Plywood doing the swag strats and getting on top of the bed with the same glitch that he used to get into this room. Yeah, uh, and Johnny is pretty much amazed by that. What the hell are you doing? Apparently, John did not ever sleep to you. A bed as comfy <laughs> as that. Yeah, he only sleeps standing up, clearly. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, uh, 
what else uh, to talk about? So, uh, after uh, escaping the prison, they're gonna head all the way to the tower, which is the first real uh, challenge uh, of the run. And uh, yeah, Johnny having a sm stomach issue right now, uh, so he's gonna leave and Arakan is gonna show up in a little bit. Do you want to talk a little bit about how the Out of Bounds glitch works? So yeah, the Out of Bounds glitch works. Uh, there's a vent close by. Uh, you pretty much uh, go prone and then you enter it uh, from the back way. Uh, so Snake Feet goes inside the air vent itself. And once Snake's Feet actually, like, his kneecaps are actually inside, you go into first person mode by pressing triangle, then press up at the same time. And then immediately let go of triangle and up, and then press X, and you will end up standing up, and by and will end up going out of bound, and you can continue going out of bound. Uh, this is pretty much uh, like this is what we do re uh, most of the time for like getting out of bound. Whenever there's an uh, air vent or anywhere that snake can, anything that can snake can go inside uh, with his uh, kneecap inside, uh, you can pretty much uh, do this glitch. This includes the bed here, the air vents, and yeah, and the crawl rest space in peace, Johnny. The, the crawl space in the cave as well, we'll see coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, that is correct. Also, that can also be done there, so yeah. So both of them are picking up their stuff, and now they're going to head to Basement 2, as they need to pick up uh, the PSG-1, a crucial item to the uh, run. Uh, the PSG-1 will allow us to do another glitch coming up uh, later, and I'm going to explain even more than that, something we call Weapon Glitch, and it allows us to pretty much uh, skip uh, Sniper Wolf to uh, fight with it. So Trompasino is actually... Oh, he got spotted. Mm. That's he, unfortunate. He was just he might... about to say that he was in the lead, but... Yeah, he was on the lead and he got spotted, unfortunately. He's going to have to wait for the caution to go uh, to go away, as he will not be able to use the elevator. Uh, Plywood taking it the safe way, which is... That's correct. And that somehow Trompasino ended up... <laughs> somehow Trompasino wow. ended up being faster, actually, so... Probably that's his idea of doing so. But by getting that alert, he actually lost Big Boss rank. And in any percent extreme, you're always going to go for Big Boss rank because it's actually faster and way more safe. That's right. But this actually makes things a little bit complicated because now he have less health for the, uh, for the tower climb. Mm. And he might end up have to force uh, using a, a ration. Also, by the way, shh. Tank is sleeping. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, by doing the uh, large skip uh, uh, glitch, uh, the tank will not move because the game pretty much flagged the story that you actually beat in the uh, the tank by having keycard number six. So right, once, uh, once you kind of enter a loading area um, for the first time after a boss is supposed to be defeated, it kind of just gives you the health bar increase and the items uh, storage space that you're supposed to have. With the exception of if you start breaking the order like we're about to see, um, you don't quite catch up to where you're supposed to be in the game, which is co what causes the weapon glitch later. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, and we're going to see that health refill again in Psychomantis' room since uh, we have keycard number six. The game will assume that we actually beat Psychomantis'. So... Uh, now they're going to head to basement one. They're going to pick up the Nikita uh, launcher on the way, as we're going to need it later for uh, Ray, uh, Vulcan Raven, a boss fight right. on disc two. Yeah, normally on other difficulties, especially the lower ones, we they would probably skip the Nikita and go for some damage boosting strats. But here on extreme, that's just not possible. Yeah, that is correct. I mean, you die really, really fast on extreme compared to normal or easy difficulty. So... Uh, you want to avoid, like, frontal confrontation against bosses as much as possible and, like, fight them from far away. Correct. Luckily, they're going to be skipping all of Disc 1's bosses, which are the first uh, seven, I believe. Yeah, just like you guys saw, uh, uh, they just morph inside that bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah that was the boss of that uh, area here that bookshelf so here's they're gonna do another uh strats for what i talk about the air vent glitch but they will not go out of bound of it but will this will make this area much much faster Ply was uh, using the scarf so he does not end up getting chomped by the dogs uh Thomas, you know, got a good rng here he did not attack by the right. by the dogs here because these dogs are vicious uh, you can lose a huge amount of time and lose a lot of health if you get hit by any of those two beast dogs. And so Trump this is the area not... where you're supposed to... Sorry. Uh, sorry, it's okay. Uh, this <laughs> is the area where you're going to have to fight Sniper Wolf, but since we have Kika number 6, we're not going to fight her anymore. That's right. Yes, normally uh, normally you this was where uh, the trigger would be with when you're with Meryl, but uh, because we skipped so much... The game just kind of assumes and we're just we're just put somewhere and there's a blood splatter here and we remember something happening but we're not quite sure why it's there yeah that is correct so coming up is the hardest part of the run and uh, it's the tower climb and anything could could happen uh there's a high, high chance that you might get shot here. This is where Trump and Sino might actually have to use a ration here in order to, to survive. Unless he have a strats prepared for that. So both of them are going to cook a grenade here. And they're going to throw it through that door to force an alert. This will skip a cutscene and allow them to give them like uh, a leeway. And uh, keep on moving before these guards behind them uh, catch up to them. So yeah, Trump and Sino is actually having the ration here. He's going to have to use a ration here, unfortunately, uh, which means he he's forced to pick up another ration later if you want to continue through the run. So there's a pattern here on how you climb the the stairs. Uh, you manipulate these guards by touching the wall uh, a little bit and keep on moving so they end up getting missing. And they're going to use stun grenades uh, whenever they reach to certain floors in order to stun some guards like following them. So far, everything seems fine. Yeah. Both are doing, doing great. Quite well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so surprised they are actually so close to each other right now. It's insane how in sync they've been the entire run. Oh, why would the small enemy mistake here? Uh, excuse me, the input mistake. He ended up choking that guard instead of throwing him. Unless that was his plan in the first place, maybe to avoid getting shot because you can usually get shot here uh, it's almost mm -hmm. close to 60% chat that you can get shot and these guards are like super guards which means they will deal like 75% uh, damage to you with this amount of health usually they do 50% but mm -hmm. with super guards they do 75% which means that one shot would take Trom over the edge for the ration yeah whoa that was so close Seems his safe strats uh, worked out for him, and both got through with no damage. Yeah, that was... Oh, Trampasino was almost get shot there, and he still have his ration, which is good. Uh, because this next part, uh, the repel section, uh, the, your health will be refilled. Thankfully, this is one of the uh, parts or areas where the game will pretty much auto-refill your health. The first one is going to be the prison area where you get to get captured this right. is the second one and they're gonna start the uh, repel section and their goal here is you want to do the repel as fast as possible without taking too much damage right this is gonna be the health the amount of health that they have pretty much until uh, the the last boss rush of the game yeah until until Rex mm -hmm. they're gonna keep that health they were gonna keep that health amount until that until they fight Rex. So they need to be careful around that. Dude, so Plywood is going. Plywood is going for the haircut strats here. Uh, it's actually the fastest strats without taking damage. Same thing with Trompancino actually. Yeah, these guys are professionals. They don't care about risky strats. <laughs> Yeah, shoutouts to Plywood for finding the strats. This strat is amazing. I'm, I'm a fan of it. And Trump has seen get some damage for it, and but it's not of a big deal actually. With this amount of health, you can tank like two steam damage, so it's not a problem. So here we go, the walkway, uh, the bridge. Let's see if any of them gonna 
get past through that. This area is so... Okay, they're going for the PSG1 strat, which is actually quite safer, but it's actually really, really slow. Uh, shooting the left guard with a PSG1, killing them, then continue forward, then use a stun grenade to stun the rest. This is the safest you can do. Uh, there's a f even, like, way more... Uh, uh, risky stretch, which allow, which pretty much involves zigzagging through their bullets and using two stun grenades at the same time. Looks like Both Tron was actually going to be. Here. Looks like Tron was actually going to be forced to use that strat if he wanted to save that stun grenade for the uh, blast furnace coming up. Yeah, that is correct. And uh, now they're going to do something we call the weapon glitch. Uh, this is uh, the first instance of doing so. Uh, so, first of all, they're going to throw that grenade, and then they're going to lay prone, and then they're going to mash while taking damage. Let's see if Plywood's going to get it. He's going to equip the Stinger, and he got it. He got the what the weapon glitch. Now he's going to, as you can see, he's moving with the Stinger. Same thing with Trump and Cena. Both got it at the same time. Oh, my goodness. This is really, really, really a close race. Uh, both got this weapon glitch. As you can see, you're not supposed to move in with the, with the Stinger since it's a first-person view uh, weapon. Here, they're going to detonate the chaff grenade that they have, actually. And by doing so, they're going to destroy the Stinger. And uh, this will skip the Otacon cutscene and allow them to pretty much climb up all the way to the top of the tower. As you can see, the boxes are now disappeared thanks to the weapon glitch effect and skipping the Otacon cutscenes because you're supposed to meet Otacon here. And uh, But by doing that weapon glitch and destroying that Stinger, which is the flag for meeting... Uh, Otacon, I guess. Uh, this will uh, this will allow you to skip the cutscene and skip the trigger, and allow you to continue forward. And the boxes will not be there anymore, and climb up all the way to the top of the tower. So yeah, this is one of the this is the weapon glitch strats. I'm gonna and you're gonna see both of them doing the same strats on a little bit against Sniper Wolf too. Yeah, since we don't have enough health and ammo to take on uh, the hind D. We actually would soft lock here if it weren't for the weapon glitch, which meant that it was several months um, after finding the clip into the um, prison area before uh, this became a viable strategy for a speedrun. Yeah, that is correct. You do not want to go and fight the hind D right now. If you open that door and go through it, you're going to soft lock because you're not going to have a way to defeat the hind D. Uh, technically, it's not a soft like You can die and just like exit the area, but yeah. So both are gonna uh, at, uh, descend down all the way to the to the elevator. They're gonna use the grenade to destroy the cameras since they do not have enough do not have enough chaff grenade to disrupt these cameras. So they're gonna use the grenade by quick by cooking it in a timely manner and throw it at this precise timing to destroy these cameras. And then they're gonna do something we call box drop. It's basically the hardest thing in the, in the run. You can lose like a huge amount of time trying to get it up. Let's see if anyone can get it first try here. There's a setup for it, but it is not easy. So let's see. Uh, here is the last camera. Trompasino is going to go for it and... Bywood got it Bywood first, try. first try. Trompasino first try. gets it first try. Oh my Holy. goodness. This is... What a race. What a race. This I'm is... actually ex excited by this. I'm blown away. Yeah, I'm blowing really, really away. So coming up is Sniper Wolf 2. Uh, they're going to do the same thing. The same weapon glitch strats as well as they did before. Uh, they're going to first uh, get themselves hit while they're in prone position. And then they're going to mash as fast as possible while going to first person view. And hopefully they're going to get the weapon glitch uh with the psg1 here because normally there's a barrier in front of them and you cannot you're not allowed to move in unless you have a psg1 plywood is going to go for it he's mashing why would he get it and he got it trump and Cino first try wow oh my goodness what a race <laughs> so yeah by having the psg1 you can move in and pretty much penetrate that barrier and then you end up touching the trigger uh uh which end up the fight uh, against Sniper Wolf too. So now they are basically, they are not going to continue to the next area, the Blast Furnace. They're going to have to go back all the way and pick up 
the stinger again because remember when we did the first weapon glitch we destroyed that stinger the stinger was zero out of zero which means any more usage of it which we weapon glitch it by using a chaff grenade into the stinger this will pretty much effectively destroy the stinger and we do not have it anymore in our possession so we're gonna have to go back all the way and pick it up again uh, or else we will not be able to fight rex at all uh, we're gonna soft clock at rex uh, as we do not have the stinger and uh, the means to defeat him Luckily, because of all the crazy sequence breaking these guys are doing, we don't have to worry about any guards on the elevator. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, technically, you were supposed to fight for the four horsemen here. And uh, thankfully, we just sequence break that. And we're going to continue the, nor the run normally. So now, uh, now that they have the stinger again, now they can continue through the, no the run and head up to disc two. Here they're going to use the chaff grenade uh, as they entering the elevator. Uh, the chaff grenade will detonation time will ba will pause actually uh, until the elevator opens up, and this will pretty much guarantee by the time that you leave the elevator, it will detonate and allow them to move in between the turrets right here as fast as possible without having to wait for the chaff grenade to detonate. Both runners within frames of each other going into disc two. Yeah, it's crazy actually. <laughs> so right now they're heading to disc two, the blast furnace. Uh, there's a there's a strats inside the blast furnace which involve destroying the crane. Uh, it depend it pretty much dependent on what type of RNG you're gonna get. Is it gonna be a close crane or a far crane? Uh, and you need to adjust by doing so. So they are both switching discs right now. Also, bear in mind, they are actually playing an emulator, by the way, so... Uh, playing on PSTV is actually quite fast, as you're going to have fast disk speed, so this is why we're playing in both an emulator. Holy crap, they are so close to each other right now. It's kind of insane. Yeah. So this right here, so with both of them, they're going to throw a chaff grenade, sorry, stun grenade, before they enter that door, and then you're going to snap that guard uh, all the way to the top here, shoot him then they're gonna cook a grenade and by the time they're gonna throw a grenade and destroy the crane and they both successfully do that they both got a uh, close crane and they destroyed the crane this allow you to move in without having to worry about the crane rng or anything they're gonna cook another grenade here and throw it to the other guard close to the door and they yes, both you, normally using a stun grenade uh, would trigger an automatic alert, but by killing the guard that's closest to them, the other guard actually w isn't within, I guess, a loading zone type area that would trigger uh, an automatic alert. And so he goes down, but doesn't get, uh, but it doesn't trigger anything. Yeah, that is correct because uh, the stun grenade is actually outside of the area here. So coming up is the uh, the cargo fight, one of the hardest fights in the game. Uh, let's see if any people's gonna, these two gentlemen gonna be able to successfully do it. They're gonna go for the safe strats here. The idea is that you want to throw them out of the elevator here. Oh, Plywood did the mistake here. He messed up that guard and he have to choke him right now. That put Trump and Cino onto the lead. That's what, that's a really, really huge time loss for Plywood, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, the idea is that you want to throw them from the elevator, from the cargo lift, as fast as possible. And unfortunately, Plywood uh, was unsuccessful with the last guard and ha he had to choke him here. That's right, those guards have uh, have several... Uh, typically, guards only take three or four shots, depending on the difficulty. And those guards will go down and then get back up after four shots. And so it's, it's much, much faster to throw them over the edge or choke them if uh, backup strats are needed. Yeah, that is correct. These are super soldiers, which means uh, they will tank hits. They will die from like three multiple shots at them. Uh, I mean, three falls. Uh, they, when you shoot mm -hmm. them, they fall, then you're going to have to shoot them again. They will die after like three uh, sets of shots at them. Right. So it's faster to throw them out of the cargo lift or choke them uh, if, car of the, if the throwing has not been successful. So they are now on the on their way to fight Vulcan Raven. Uh, they're going to have to use the uh, Nikita launcher that they picked up earlier at uh, 
nuclear building. Uh, they're gonna both uh, do uh, strats, which is pretty much safe. It's not that hard. This fight is not that hard as long as you pretty much time your shots against Raven. Uh, you'll be able to defeat him more easily. He's one of the easiest bosses in this uh, category here. Which is saying something, considering there's about three bosses in this category. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Only three bosses. So Trompancino and Plywood are setting themselves up, and uh, they both got the setup correctly. Now they're going to have to use their Nikita shots at uh, Vulcan Raven. As you can see, Vulcan cannot shoot the the uh, uh, missiles from the Nikita due to how the uh, the iframes of the his shots actually works. It's actually really, really weird. For some reason, his iframes is also extended to his shots, so for some reason he cannot shoot the uh, missiles that's being shot by the Nikita launcher here. This allows us to pretty much loop him over and over again with these uh, Nikita launcher shots. And a perfect fight with Trompancino, and a perfect fight also from Plywood as well. Yeah, it's very strange. It's uh, normally when you would shoot an Nikita around a corner like that, uh, Raven would shoot it almost instantly and it would blow up in your face. But something about the way that they stun lock him just works out perfectly so that you can keep him in that loop the entire fight. Yeah, that that is correct. <laughs> this strat only works on the US and the uh, the US and other version. With the exception of vanilla Japanese version, for some reason, this stress does not work. I makes you wonder if that. it has something to do with the iframes of how they adjusted his iframes for the other versions of the game. So, coming up is the Rex's Lair. Uh, picking up a chef grenade in this area and picking up more Stinger Missile on the way as uh, they're going to need it for the boss fight for Rex and maybe for the rats, the RNG rats here. Right. So let's talk about the rat here. The rat is the biggest RNG in the game itself. Both of these runners need to get a good godly rat spawn, which is close to the drainage ditch. It's quite random because it's actually a frame paced, depends on the frame that you enter the area where the rat is actually in. Uh, so it's pretty much like you have close to 30%, 33% chance of him spawning to the area that you really want him to spawn, which is close to the drainage ditch. It's the fastest and the best area. And uh, this is actually a big like uh, decider to this race. Uh, we will see who's gonna like take the lead, and you're gonna see the amount of difference of both runs that can end up having by a good rat or a bad rat or an average rat. So yeah, far, this... I mean, they are really close to each other. Sorry. You know, it's okay. With this route being shorter than, say, the all bosses route, the, the rat comes into play a lot more when they're at this level of uh, perfection. Um, that RNG can make the difference of up to 30 to 40 seconds or even a minute sometimes if they get really unlucky. And that's just an insane time difference when they're, you know, frames apart apart like this. That is correct. Trump is, you know, going with that risky strats by using, uh, by getting closer and throwing the guard and timing him. And Plywood going for this slightly safe. It's not, it does not lose so much time, but it's actually slightly safer. So here they're going to lose the PAL key card and they're going to have to go in and fetch it. By the way, they did not pick up the, beat up the PAL key card, which makes me wonder, where Snake did that? Did he get it from? <laughs> I've never noticed that. So yeah, you do not have the pal key card, so the game pretty much gives you an end here. Oh, Plywood missed the... the sorry, Trompancino missed throwing that guard. He was so close from getting that shot, but he was really, really lucky. Both of them using some kind of buffer. Oh, is that a buffer? I'm, I, it, I might it looked know about like, that. It looked like Plywood did it intentionally. Yeah, uh... Wow. Some new strats here that I do not know about. Amazing. Which is pretty much a testament to these runners. They both pretty much push themselves, pushing this category even further. So, here we go. Let's see if Trump and Sino is going to get that good godly rat. Alright, fingers crossed for god rats, everybody. 
So, Bless yes, this is the big decider who's going to take the lead here. So, Tom Pensino is going. He's going to check the closest area. Did he get it? He got it! Oh my so, goodness, he did it! So, Tom Pensino got the fast rat here. Let's see if Flywood is going to get the fast rat, godly rat here. Did he get oh. it? He did not! And he did not get the average one. That's unfortunate. So, now he have to gonna check out if it's gonna, gonna be the turret rat or gonna be the other close to the drainage ditch. And just like that, gentlemen, you can see the difference between having a good rat or a bad rat here. Trompancini is going all the way back to the computer room. And Plywood is now gonna have to wait for the rat to show up here next to the turret area. And he's getting a bad luck right now. Wow, what an unfortunate. All of Team Liquid having their hearts broken yeah. right now. And here he is. He's going to have to wait for the... Here's the <laughs> right. He's going to have to wait for it to go away from the air vent. Because if he shot, the rat is going to go inside the vent itself. And then we're going to have to wait for him in other areas. So now he picked up the PAL key card. Now he has to go all the way to the computer room and insert the... The key card and start the quest of using the PL, the PAL key card by using it on those three console computers here. You can see the difference in time between of them right now. That's the difference by having a good rat or a bad rat. Plywood got the bad rat, Trompless even got the good rat. And both of them, they are going to go and start what is the most boring section of the game, which is like. Uh, key card quest that we call the pal key card quest yes this is uh this this quest makes up a good chunk of the run here it's what makes uh it what makes uh twin snakes so quickly is that it uh this is actually skipped but we've currently not found any way to skip this quest because you need to trigger the last key card to move on to the final boss of the game yeah it's like 16 minutes compared to like two minutes and a half on twin snakes as far as I remember. That's right. So, yeah, uh, first they're going to have to use the yellow key card, which is the normal uh, temperature key. And then they're going to have to go all the way back to the warehouse where they fought Vulcan Raven. And they're going to have to wait for 61 seconds for the key card to change to blue. And then um, they're going to have to return all the way back to the computer room, commander room, and pretty much use the freeze, the card, the blue key card then I'm gonna go all the way back to the blast furnace heat the key then come back to the commander room and complete the quest and that takes up to like 16 minutes yeah compared to twin snakes and twin snakes there are like two pipes inside of rex's lair where you can actually shoot these two pipes Pretty much skip the whole process of going all the way back to the warehouse or the blast furnace and you can pretty much done with the whole process of uh, the uh pal key card and twin snake in less than three minutes that's right both runners going to be picking up some ammo and things in raven's lair uh, and then trom uh, using some punch strats to get as close to the loading zone as possible yeah that is correct uh you need to pick up some stinger missiles for rex uh, since you only have like a small amount of uh, Stinger missiles and you're gonna have to wait for the at least for the timer I mean for 60 uh, for the 61 seconds to pass inside the warehouse area and Before he pretty much leave the area, he's gonna check for the key card need to be chained and he got it And he's gonna leave the area now and head to the commander room uh, on uh, world record attempts, we do not check the key card. If it's actually changed, we use uh, the music as an audio cue to determine when to leave the area. That's right. But with Trom holding uh, holding a solid lead here, uh, he doesn't want to risk uh, <laughs> probably having to go all the way back if he gets to the room and realizes that he hasn't changed the key yet. Yeah, that is the worst thing that could possibly happen to you on a run. I mean, it happened to me multiple times. <laughs> me too. The blast Absolutely. furnace. I <laughs> wanted to get like the fastest possible time inside the blast furnace, and then in the end, uh, Naomi will not call you and run. 
uh, where the key card does not change. You know that the key card changed when Naomi calls you when you're on the cargo elevator. And uh, if, this, if she does not call you, that means you screwed up and... Yep, rip run. So I'm taking the safe strat and... Uh... Actually, that is a risky strat. Sorry, I, was about to say, the guard. I had to think about it for a second. I said, wait a second. That's the risky strat. Yeah. Uh, you only have like a small amount of time before that guard can spot you and get an alert. Although it doesn't matter because he's not aiming for big boss rank right now. That's right. You really have to time the... Uh, what he's doing there when he's mashing R1 for the item uh, equip and unequip is that for some reason that uh, changes Snake's animation slightly in such a way that it uh, silences his footsteps. And so he's really got to time it perfectly so that uh, he's got his hands free when he reaches the guard when it's time for the flip. Oh yeah, that is correct. We for completely forgot about that. We were so excited <laughs> about this race of how close it is. So yeah, these floors produces noise and uh, you need to mash R1 constantly to adjust Snake's animation so the guard does not hear your footsteps. It's a, a really, really neat trick that allow you to close in into the guard without him uh, listening to your footsteps. As we just saw there, Plywood went for the punch punch kick, which is a little bit safer because you don't have to time your hands being open for the throw like you do with Tromstrat. Yeah, because uh, you're supposed to press uh, square and throw that guard, but if you mess up your R1 mashing and ended up having a chaff grenade equipped in your hand, you're gonna end up throwing that chaff grenade instead of throwing that guard and uh, yeah, you're gonna bump into him and then an alert will go on. And if he hits you over the head with a rifle, you're gonna lose some major time. Yeah, I'm just wondering if Plywood is actually now in Big Boss rank or not, because... Uh, I know Trump and Cedar is not in Big Boss rank, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know that Plywood has even used a... Well, yeah, he used the ration right after Wolf 2, I think. Um... Yeah, that's... Uh, using a ration there is pretty much uh, the... It's part of the route. Mm -hmm. but the question is, did he use a rash in cargo uh, elevator? I don't think he did. So he probably is still on Big Boss pace compared to Rompancino. So, yeah. Chat's yeah. telling us that uh, they believe Plywood is still on Big Boss rank. Oh, all right. That's cool. So he's looking, he's looking for the moral victory at this point. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, yeah, it's... I mean, getting big boss rank in this game is not that easy, actually. Especially trying to get a big boss rank and a fast time at the same time. It's one of the biggest challenges of speedrunning this game. It's kind of insane. It's uh, even more difficult, I would say, than getting big uh, big boss rank in Metal Gear Solid 4 or Foxhound rank in Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, thankfully, big boss here is not as demanding as MGS4. Uh, big boss uh, emblem. Uh, we did not talk about the requirement. I mean, the requirement here is you oh, need yes. to beat the game in less than three hours with uh, 24 maximum kills and four alerts, uh, one ration use, and zero continues. And uh, thankfully, uh, that alert, uh, you only you get three of three of these alerts are pretty much mandatory and forced, and the, and the fourth one is optional. Uh, you use that fourth one at, to get the fast helipad and save that seven seconds. That's as for like killing enemies, you do not have to worry about that on any percent as by the time you finish the run, you're going to have like killed 17 or 18 maximum compared to all bosses where you're going to have to worry about it a little bit. That's right. Because they skip a huge portion of the game, they don't have to worry about the kills as much. Yeah, that is correct. And uh... something happened. I'm no. Okay. I thought, like, Trump and Cena lost time for some reason, but I was apparently not paying attention. That's okay. So, yeah, the Blast Furnace. We're going to have to wait here for 63 seconds before the key card changes. Uh, we use music as an audio cue to determine when to change. But since this is a race, we're going to have to check for the key card uh, if it changed or not, because you do not want to mess up that uh, timing correctly. Do you know why the... Uh, the blue card only takes 61 seconds and the red card takes 63. Uh, the reason for that because you're actually entering two areas on the blast furnace that actually add up to the time. I see. You see this area with the sea uh, area mm -hmm. where you go in inside uh, that actually like uh, half a second time loss. I see. So that's why it account for 63 seconds 
instead of like 61 seconds. Because when you go in, there's like this fade in, and that's like right. almost like close to 0 0.3 seconds. So, uh, and you're going through these two areas four times, which equals to like 1.8 seconds, as far as my math is correct. Or so, yeah, uh, that's why it's 63 seconds inside of this area. And yeah, uh, Tomasino got the card, and mm -hmm. he's leaving. He's gonna head all the way back to the commander room. I would not wanting to take any damage from the steam. Yeah, he wants to keep that big boss rank <laughs> alive and well. He's got time to spare anyway, since he's waiting on the 63 seconds. Yeah, that is correct. And in the meantime, you pick up these ammo, uh, the singer ammo, for in preparation for Rex's fights. I would specifically waited for the chaff grenade to end before entering the loading zone. Is there a reason for that? I actually have no idea why he waited for that. Hmm. Wonder if it's some kind of lag reduction strat or something. Yeah, it's probably that actually happened because sometimes lag could occur here. Even if you get the timing correct, sometimes you're going to be surprised about that that card did not change by the time you go to the cargo elevator. I mean, it happens to me. Uh, like multiple times and maybe he's actually waiting for the chaff grenade to go away so he can continue and pretty much get as minimum lag as possible so he does not get screwed over by it he did not check the key card actually did he check it i guess he did not check his key card i don't think he did wow he's playing risky actually so i don't know if he's actually left on the correct audio cue or he waited an extra second but we're about to find out if he did not get the card if he did not get the Naomi Kodak call, then he screwed up, and that's actually rip for plywood as he need to go all the way back to the blast furnace and wait an extra 63 seconds for the key card to change. Team Liquid feeling a Monka ass coming on. Yeah. Both runners getting perfect movement in that uh, area with the camera and not getting shot. Yeah, it's actually quite annoying. You can get shot here. Uh, there's a, The line for it is kind of precise. Uh, you normally want to have a good RNG by the camera to be facing the other side of the cargo left. Uh, so you can sneak in underneath it and go to the elevator there. But if you happen to like get in the wrong RNG and the camera is facing left, uh, you're going to have to take that line. And hopefully you're not going to get shot. Uh, thankfully, both runners got it, so... Yeah, we have professionals running around here, guys. That's right. So we're getting at the at the end of the game here. Uh, there are going to be two boss fights coming up back to back to back. Rex uh, and uh, Liquid, then the escape sequence. Uh, Rex should not be a problem. Uh, uh, as long as you pretty much do the uh, straving strats uh, and pretty much time it correctly so you do not end up screwing up your movements here. However, liquid is could be a problem as they're going to have to do something we call the liquid infinite and throw him on top of the uh, Rex here. So let's see if both of these speedrunners could get it. And Plywood got the Kodak call, thankfully, so the run continues. Both runners are going to be under a lot of pressure. There's still a chance that Tromboncino could boink the uh, uh, infinite liquid and have some considerable time loss that would give Plywood a chance. Yeah, uh, getting liquid infinite, the infinite uh, is actually not an easy way, not really easy. And uh, because uh, in order to get the liquid infinite, you want to position liquid in a way so he does not escape your combo by putting his back behind like uh, a corner or so. so you can uh, keep on punching him and uh, reducing his health to zero, and then you pretty much deliver the final blow and throw him on top of Rex. That's right, so, and you gotta keep consistent timing for close to 30 seconds almost, and so it's very, very difficult to keep keep that kind of uh, that rhythm going for that extended period of time. Yeah, it is actually quite hard, especially when you are in a pace, your heart rate is racing, and you pretty much want it to keep 
to be pretty, pretty much consistent with the rhythming of doing the punches. So, Trompancino has completed his pal keycard quest. So, he's calling Otacon so the door can open and then he's going to start his fight against Rex and Liquid soon. Plywood is not that far behind, so... He's really not. He could actually, like, catch up to him and even pass him if... Uh, Trompancino ended up screwing up a little bit. Either against Rex or Liquid. Because you can screw up Rex, actually. Mm hmm Very possible. Pressure's still on. So, let's see Trompancino what kind of strats he's gonna end up doing here. Is he gonna do for the strafing strats, or is he gonna do for the fast movement strats? He's going to go for the string strat. So he's going to position himself uh, in at a precise location. And then he's going to use the stinger. And he's going to start shooting the stinger. And then he's going to strafe, uh, go to first person, strafe to the right as the laser, and strafe to the right as well when Rex is shooting at him. He's going to rinse and repeat, shooting that radom over and over again. By strafing, uh, you're going to shift your hitbox. So you're not going to end up getting uh, hit by either the laser or the shot. And that's a good uh, phase one by Trompancino. Almost perfect, I would say. Yeah. Uh, the second phase is a little bit harder as you need to strafe to both right and left. Right for the laser and left for the uh, bullets. Because if you ended up doing right, you're going to get shot by, get hit by the bullets. But maybe he have he's going to do the other strats where he can end up moving a little bit and... Uh, so he does not end up getting shot, which is a little bit uh, safer, but he's going to end up losing time in the process. So he's going to get a shot, shot here to position himself, then he's going to start shooting uh, the stingers. Yeah, he's doing the strafing strats. Yeah, strafe to the right with the laser, strafe to the left with the bullets. That's how you're going to supposed to do it. And you need to time your shots so you do not end up hitting Liquid during his iframes. I would go into the movement strat. And that's a perfect Rex by Trompancino. Nice. Unbelievable. I would go in for the, mouth, for the movement strats, actually, which is actually could save a, a little bit of time. But, uh, yeah, there could be a little bit of lag uh, that could happen to him. Oh, it took a so, shot, but otherwise did a great uh, phase one. Yeah, both got great phase one. Let's see uh, Plywood with his phase two Rex. So that's the, so in Trump and Sino screen, that's the Kodak, uh, that's the cutscene that I was talking about that you can skip on, on Integral, that you cannot skip on the US version of the game or any other version, the exception of PC. So here's the Liquid Infinite uh, strats that they both had to do. Uh, first of all, they're gonna have to throw Liquid at a precise uh, location and they're gonna start the Infinite. Plywood is doing the uh, the movement strats here. Yeah, strafing the laser, and then pretty much uh, move when the bullets comes in. Then keep on shooting. But you can see uh, this strats produces a lot of lag since they're playing on an emulator. Actually, on a PS TV, you will not have to worry about lag because digital version do not have lag, thankfully. Right. But emulator and PS One and like disc versions does produces lag. So. Uh, moving to Tom Pancino's uh, screen here. Let's see if he's going to do the infinite. So he throw him. He's going to start the infinite. And he got it. He is sliding to the right, which means he can like get this uh, infinite perfectly. So now he's going to start his rhythm and pretty much reduces uh, Liquid's HP bar all the way to zero before he can do the kick and throw him off the top of Rex's head. The rhythm here is key uh, to success here. And he's maintained it. Wow. He got it. Nice. That was a perfect liquid and a perfect Rex. Insanity. Yeah. Perfect liquid. He got 203, which is the best you can get against uh, Liquid Infinite. And I, yeah, that was a perfect liquid, actually. With perfect boss fights and with the perfect rat, I wonder if he's on uh, PB territory. <laughs> you you yeah, it's actually seen. probably that happens. It's not going to be a big boss rank, but he's probably going to get an extreme. Even world record run. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how things are gonna work out. So yeah, uh, he's gonna ride into the jeep and then they're gonna start escape sequence. Let's take a look at Plywood's uh, screen here. Is he gonna get the infinite? Uh, 
Oh, he's going for the no punch wow. strats, uh, which is way more risky. He screwed it up. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, the no punch strats is oh. not an easy strat. He's gonna go he for the backup, and he got the backup. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, he's gonna end up losing uh, seven to eight seconds by doing that, and he got the he got the uh, sliding to the right, which means he's gonna be able to uh, kick a liquid out of uh, Rex's head, and. He got the infinite. Oh no! That's unfortunate. He was slightly out. Oh, but he saved uh, it. He saved it. Uh, yeah, you can see he lost approximately 14 seconds over like uh, Trump and Sino's uh, liquid infinites. And this could pretty much like seal the deal and pretty much like put Trump and Sino at the winner side. For Trump and Sino almost got uh... solid. Almost got trolled there. There is a way to soft lock essentially there. There's a guard that can move behind a pedestal that uh, becomes invincible and won't move. Uh, but it looked like he was able to shoot him out of it. Yeah, that's actually one of the most riskiest thing that could happen. Actually, the most annoying thing that could happen. Uh, how you shoot that guard, you might end up that guard being behind that pedestal and you will not be able to shoot him and then soft lock in the game. Prom says it's so only ever happened to him once, so I'm glad it didn't happen here. Yeah. Me too. It didn't happen to me before, so yeah, I'm actually lucky. I actually so had it happen. I actually had it happen twice in the same run. <laughs> so yeah, so the escape sequence, uh, you want to deal 31 uh, hits to Liquid during uh, on extreme difficulty in order to progress the next sequence. Uh, so yeah, far, with being, uh, sorry, with it being timed, uh, people sometimes think you're just stalling for time here and that it's set, but it's actually more of a boss fight and it's uh, based on the number of times you hit Liquid that the phases change. Yeah, you want to hit Liquid as soon as possible, as soon as his iframe runs out, or else uh, uh, you get your phase change will uh, pretty much delayed, and you pretty much notice that you ended up losing way more time. Yeah, this is technically a boss fight. Uh, it's not an escape sequence, it's a boss fight, actually. That's true. And Trump and Sino is actually on the way to getting a really fast escape sequence here. He's gonna get a seven. Yeah, he's gonna get a seven, and uh, it's probably 703 or 704. Yeah, the final phase, you need to shoot Liquid five times. Yeah, barely a seven, actually. And that's, that's it for Team Solid. So, apply with starting his uh, escape sequence. So he yeah, a little bit, a little Sorry. bit strats here on the tunnel here. You want to shoot, try to shoot uh, Liquid the suit. He bumps into you, as this will pretty much put him closer to you when he comes in closer, and you can shoot him even more. There's a backup strat for that, but that was actually a good tunnel. It's not bad, but not good either. An average good. And yeah, you need to keep on shooting him. Uh, you cannot miss shooting him as well. So. Team Liquid knows that if they come in within a minute at the end of this relay race, that uh, it's going to be all uh, the rat's fault. Yeah, that's it for Trump and Sino here. He made it to the credits. And now, uh, Firewood is on the escape sequence. Perfect setup there. Just a little bit more to do. Seven oh five escape. Yeah, Plywood got a seven oh four, which is four seconds faster than Trauma you know. Uh Yeah, the fastest you need—it's actually quite good. The fastest you want, especially on a world record pace, is something seven oh six or seven oh seven above. Uh, the fastest you can get, and I have never got the fastest, is seven oh seven uh, eleven, and I have never seen anyone done that. But technically, it could happen. So, four minutes pass between Team Liquid and Team Solid. Team Solid is actually on the lead. That was actually quite a close race, but unfortunately, uh, the rat was actually the deciding factor. It's true. Putting Team without, Solid on the lead here, which without is... The, uh, 
without the rat, uh, if they had both gotten god rat, Plywood might have actually pulled that out. And I believe Plywood ended up getting big boss rank in the end. Yeah, that is uh, correct, uh, which is unfortunate, actually. Uh, but that was actually quite an entertaining close race. I mean, holy moly, all, all I can say that. I mean, all the way up to the rat, it was really, really close. It's pretty much a testament to these amazing speedrunners for their skills and talent to be close to each other. But unfortunately, RNG gods were not pleased with Mr. Plywood here and ended up giving him the bad RNG with the rat, losing a huge amount of time in the process. So that was unfortunate, actually. But that was actually quite a good, good race, actually. So, yeah. Uh, let's see so if we can, like... Uh, pulling these two runners in here for um, some interviews during the credits. Is that what we did last time with MGS3? Yeah, let's see if we can pull them up. <laughs> Apparently they are here, but they are muting. <laughs> okay, so... Hello? Hey, Plywood. Hello, Yo. good sir. How are you doing? Great. Congratulations on the run. Thank you. Very, very, very solid play. Or liquid play, as it were. <laughs> yes. It confuses me, too. <laughs> on Team Liquid, but I'm playing Solid Snake. It just makes me confused. I kept on yeah. thinking I was on Team Solid before the race. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Solid Snake. So uh, what emotions right. were you feeling whenever you uh, realized that the rat was going to be what decided this race? I was like, well, <laughs> it was going to be the case anyways, so whatever. I was just like, oh, okay. Th that's just how any percent rolls. I played the only like major mistake my run had before that point was cargo because I was trying out uh, the stun right. strat just to see how it was, and I got kind of threw off by the menus, so... But um, no, that was a really good run. There was only like, it's like my fist fight and cargo. Like those were the two like choke points. Otherwise, it was like I, I really couldn't ask for too much more during a race. So and you're, when and you're you get bad, both. bad rat, it's just like oh. whatever. <laughs> okay, that's and your recovery on both those mistakes was very very solid. You ended up pulling off the uh, combo on Liquid there until uh, he didn't decide to fall off, and then you uh, ended up choking that guard on the cargo elevator as well. Yeah, I, th I totally thought that he was just close enough that he would fall over the edge, because we were moving towards the right, but I was... I, I miscalculated a little bit there. <laughs> so when you went for the fist fight for the zero throws, did you do that to amuse the audience, or what? It's just what I do. <laughs> I mean, you know. I was I like, gotta... you're going risky here. I mean, he's going to, like, mess it up. And unfortunately, you did. It's kind of one of those things that I go for it as long as I feel comfortable about doing it in the moment. So I could have done two throw or one throw, but, you know. Uh, I was already so far behind that just wanted to do something for fun, basically. Understandable. Uh, did you get a big boss rank? Because we saw yes. you playing a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, I believe go, so. Yeah, Tron told me before the race that he would be going for any eagle strats, and I was like, okay, cool. I, I didn't really <laughs> mind. I was still gonna go for... Uh, this is basically like... I did strategies as if I was at GDQ. Aside from like fist fight, I probably wouldn't do zero throw at GDQ, but uh, I went for that style of play. So. Yeah, we saw actually Trump and Sunni doing some risky strats. We're actually debating that he might actually got an UPB on any percent extreme here. I mean, uh, probably for. He had a solid play. Yeah, yeah, for a PS1, 
Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, given how even the race was, according to the chat, up until, like, uh, Cargo or whatever. Did he I also get one frame box climb? Did he get the perfect frame? Yeah, both yeah, of you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys first tried just about every trick in the run and were in sync just about until Cargo Elevator. It was insanity. You were so in sync until the cargo elevator. You have no idea how in how sync you are. We were so excited. Some of the some of the ladder climbing and, and uh, descending animations in the cargo in the comm towers rather were literally within frames of each other. That is uh, a testament to how crazy we both are. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's basically what that is. Uh, yeah, it's always a thrill to race Trom. I have never actually won a race against Trom, but it's always <laughs> like a very exciting thing. And, uh, you know, I knew the race would come down to Rat, and lo and behold, it could have been the other way around, you know? It One of these days. That time when I would get the the ditch Rat, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's going to be one of those runs. Okay. One of these days, Blessed RNG will give you a win over Trom. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get the exact same luck, and then then it will be uh, pure pure skill. Granted, I think even if we had the same rat, you probably would have won with the same conditions since I screwed up Cargo and uh, the fist fight. Even so, that was a fun old race, and I'm hoping you two enjoyed coming for it. It was incredibly enjoyable. It was, it was definitely a... an honor, actually, watching you say, both race and commentate it. I was about to say, it is a huge honor being in the presence of these three. Like, yes. kind of insane. Alright, I'm curious what this was. This is a... It's pretty much my PS1 Emu PB. 106.14. Alright, not bad. Given wow. that I lost, like, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Yeah. Coming in with fewer not humans bad. killed as well. I'm gonna clap for getting big boss, by the way. That's right. Thank yeah. You. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah. Big but watching a big boss run pretty much warms my heart. Pretty insane. Coming in with big boss and, and fewer uh enemies killed. Looks like you came in with the moral victory, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> the moral victory. Yeah. The true winner in all this is, is <laughs> the Alaskan field mice. That's why I'm the Alaskan field mice. Yeah, well, at least you're gonna sleep at sleep. You're gonna well sleep with well at night at least, with having a big boss rank at, at the race. Yeah, <laughs> that was a uh, I would say a very satisfying marathon run, and uh, congratulations to Trom for another well done race. Always exciting, dude. It was absolutely a joy to watch that kind of yeah. skill in sync with each other it was like a beautiful ice dance that I... was a blast <laughs> it's crazy because i felt like i was playing out of my mind for like up until tower b i was like wow this is like going really well so the fact that he was also doing so well is like incredible that's exactly what we want out of these races and trust me to everyone listening if you want to if you want to get to this level you can too you really can maybe okay maybe not to that level of consistency without a lot of experience but you can learn this game on any percent it's not as bad as you think but uh you've been telling yeah. me that for years one of these days i'll man up <laughs> yeah hey man you're you're honored you're an honorary member you've done runs that's right. Once a runner, I always have, runner. Have yep. records on alternate round. <laughs> there you go. Uh, man, All right. it really has been an honor with you three. You three are, are at an insane level. So, so being able to commentate on this run and talk with Jag here, it's seriously been one of the coolest things I've done since I joined this community. I really appreciate it. No problem, on, dude. So, uh, up <laughs> next is going to be MGS2 uh, between Mr. Tyler. 2022 and D Limes, and thanks for watching MGOS1 segment. And I'm gonna sign off and hand it to the other commentators of the one here. So peace out. See you guys. Love you. I am back again. And then there was two. Like a pest.
<laughs> that you just can't get rid of. <clears throat> it's just, just you're just everywhere, dude. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm all over the shop. Welcome to MGS2. Um, Welcome this is the MGS2. second game in the series. If you didn't, if you didn't uh, that up already. Well, actually, it's the fourth. It's the second game in the solid series. <laughs> but yes, that's true. Don't forget so Snake's Revenge, technically. It's everyone's favorite speedrun. Uh, everyone's uh, everyone's favorite abandoned game. Everyone went to MGS3. Yeah, because uh, MGS3 is superior, but that's not your hearing. And we, I mean, we, we also we have two of the like... The two are the best at their craft when it comes to MGS2. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. They're uh, really good at this. And Mr. Tyler. Um, GDQ. GDQ man Tyler. New new to the community kind of limes. He's only been around a year. And he's already uh, destroying our boards. But uh, it's going to be a fun race to watch, I think. Exactly, and uh, you know, you just saw uh, this is essentially uh, the equivalent <laughs> of the plywood chrome race for this game. They're both basically at that level, and uh, being on PS2, uh, there are a few different things to what you might be used to seeing on your standard high definition collection runs, uh, but not too much. Uh, so first, we're at tanker. Uh, we got to sink this boat. Uh, but first, we have to go find the Russian woman with hairy armpits first. <laughs> and it's actually kind of amusing to look that Limes is already ahead, just by a small bit. Um, They're about even. They're about even. Actually, I mean, like, we're talking Limes frames. Is at the... Limes is behind. Also, maybe it's just me, but they're... obviously there's not going to be a whole lot of time loss or time gain in this in these preceding sections. It's all just... Uh, it's yeah, movement, this, is all going... frankly. this is all going through the motion as well. Like... Because um, this, this tanker is so reset heavy, especially when you get to Olga, that you do this opening part up to Olga so frequently yeah. that, like, it's it's nuts. So it's like, speaking, uh, it's like the only way to lose any time in this area, like any considerable amount of time, is just is bad, me. bad movement. You know, yeah, be iridescence. I mean, I do. Uh, Oh well, I used to. I don't really do that much anymore, but like tanker ILs and I mean it would always kind of astound me how I could like get to the bridge and be ahead. Even though it's like how am I how am I Ooh, saving? Both got left anyway. So well, it's this pal, bike so. is is loopable. Oh it's pal, that's right. It's so consistent. They're, they're both gonna get left Olga, but the thing about I Olga on Pal is she's not consistent the loop. It's so actually very hard and, and they both, they both missed it. It's like, she always goes left, which is wonderful, but she might not so, loop on his Tyler. Tyler is actually going to take the continue, uh, and hey, Limes, is gonna, Limes is going to take the fight, and he's got one more headshot to go. And now, if the she about, ball, Yeah, I mean, the yeah. thing about Olga, um, when she goes left like this and she doesn't loop, is the fight is considerably harder. Yeah, because of course she is a one. She will one shot kill you. And well, uh, Tyler Sorry, actually Tyler took the, the death loop. and got the loot. But you know he's gonna come out of this ahead. Yeah, the fight's gone all sorts of pear shaped for. for and the other trouble yeah. that we have to keep in mind with limes and this kind of fight is his ammo count is gonna be pretty low because yeah. our ammo pickups on Euro Extreme Tanker are. Preferably limited to one. So you pick up one at the start of the Olga fight, and you only want to really fire between the four shots. Spawning yeah. in and getting to Olga. You want to fire, like, I think you'll fire six shots altogether. Maybe seven if you go for a distraction shot in the bridge. Not the bridge, the cruise lounge. But uh, Limes is going to be forced into picking up some extra ammo here at the. Uh, yeah, Limes, Limes is exiting Olga with only 16 rounds, whereas you see 22 yeah. on Tyler. So there is there is two packs of ammo before the guard rush that are too far out of the way. Yeah, so chances um, are he'll either go for the one in um, in deck A or he'll pick up the one in deck two behind the pipes. We'll have to yeah, see. Yeah, I, I, mean... I, I, I would honestly pick up <clears throat> both of them just because it's a race and 
Uh, it's better than looking silly. Both of them are going for the airshot strat, and you just run on past. It actually makes that room trivial. So as you saw, Thanks obviously. Camera placement. Yeah, so as you saw, obviously, at the start, they both selected not game over if discovered. So they can do a lot of these, like, warning shot strats. Um, both of them just fire into the into the void, uh, cause that guard to start going on his radio. So when he sees you run past them, he won't uh, he won't try and shoot at you. Um, All right. So there's a big difference here, as you can see. Lime's yeah. up to take the alert, the any percent strat. You get it, your <laughs> alert cleared in the starboard engine room. So uh, it does save him about a second. But you saw how quick Tyler does that headshot. Like that's insane. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that you just like you have to do it quick because you have about half a second to hit him before the guard runs away. Yeah, um, he runs behind the glass and you can't shoot him so through. I think it. Tyler's actually getting the fast engine room and Yeah Lime he did, he not. got it. So, yeah, Lime's, Lime's so the fast engine down. room is hell. <laughs> oh, but actually I I like that from Limes. It's actually not any slower to do it that way. No, that's the um that's the game over at Discovered Strat, where you'll cause a caution to skip the cutscene. Um, and that's fairly limited, I think, to PS2. I don't think it's as... It's possible on HTC, but it's much, much harder. I feel like um, he's quicker on HTC to get down, because... Yeah, obviously, because pal, like, you know, 50 frames per second versus 60. It's also worth noting that, like, these guys are going so bloody fast, it's almost impossible to keep up with what they're doing. <laughs> We're trying to talk about what they're doing, and it's like they're just zooming through. Yeah, I mean, like, this is a PS2 tank, it's about 10 minutes, and... Yeah. Like, He's so there's the ammo seconds. here that Limes can pick up if he wants, um, if you choose to shoot this guard, but... Well, that's USP ammo. Is it? I can't see yeah. it, it's really small. I know. Uh, and there's also behind the, uh... There's the so, USP ammo there. Well, Limes might actually go for lethal. I was gonna say, uh, he might opt for the lethal strat when he's low on ammo. Well, he's low on ammo and he's not at all all caring mm. about- Yeah, he's definitely going lethal. I mean, obviously he's got neither- the USP equipped. Yeah, neither runner has big boss at the moment, so... It's- And Limes did say, you know, if he's gonna be behind, he's just gonna throw caution to the wind and he's- Oh, oh no, he is gonna- Oh, he missed the shot there. So I he's gonna I... go USP. Yeah, I'd say what he's probably gonna do now is when he's he gets... gonna do half and half. Yeah, because you'll get a spawn of USP ammo behind you, but um, it will also spawn M9 ammo. Uh, no, it doesn't. Surely you can get no. If you run out of M9 ammo, you are screwed. <laughs> That's right. the joy of MGS2. Uh, that's one of those annoying things. That's why you have to be so careful with your ammo counts for like big boss. Because if you run out of M9 ammo, well, tough. All right, well, actually, they're neck and neck here. Both are going to take the last three shots. Actually, it's going to be Limes coming out of this faster. Yeah. And that's just Tyler. Tyler. Tyler had bad luck there. Yeah. So I was going to say Tyler. It's not execution that caused him that time loss. It's just a PS2 thing. It's just a Sol thing. It's so. Tyler is definitely sticking with his big boss, uh, his big boss he... guns, even if he's lost it, he doesn't seem to care too much. Yeah. Um, so, it, it may look like Tyler killed the last two guards in those uh, the final three that come out. However, it, the game cuts to the cutscene before they officially hit the floor and flash and despawn. Well, Limes um, didn't go for the ladder glitch either. Yeah, Limes didn't go ladder glitch, so he's actually just lost his lead. So I think um, what happened there was he tried Climbed on the ladder and just said, the hell with it, I'm just going to climb down here. So are they yeah. both going for the risky... No. So Limes is taking this. He has to Limes take this a bit safer because he took no ladder glitch. He yeah, basically all the cycles the were all backwards. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to see uh, this room. We're going to hold up this last guard. Tyler gets it flawlessly. This guard can be finicky. He doesn't like to hold up. You have to take a really weird angle for it. So... so nice, no, Limes got it. It's very interesting to see that, I mean, Limes lost about 11 seconds to not doing ladder glitch, but he's just barely behind, and I mean, really, this is just tanker. It's still anybody's game. I mean, we've had a continue yeah. so far from Tyler, and he's still ahead, you know? So, it's going to be a very interesting race, to say the least. Right. So, you know, we're tasked with taking some photos. We can still take three-spot camera, even on 4x3. 
I, why it works is anybody's guess. Like, it's just, just bad hitboxes. Yeah, just weird hitboxes. That's about all it comes down to. Um, obviously, on any version that can be 16, nine, 16 over 9, we can do 2 spot, which I'm sure everybody, anybody who's familiar with MGS2 runs a scene by now. But, uh, I mean, this is still like. It's been a rocky tanker for both runners, but uh, it's still anybody's game really i mean to see it like i mean on one side you have tyler taking a continue and limes had a really slow old go with no continue then he pulled ahead at guard rush but lost it because of ladder glitch i mean it's it's a very this could be i think this is going to be like trauma and plywood levels to be honest yeah um, except kind of there, this game like it's the only real rng in this game is aims and i don't see aims separating these two no all not that like much. the racket anyhow so so, like, Unless, for some reason, one of them took a continue, which is unlikely, but it could happen. Yeah, and I mean, exactly. we also have the Harrier to deal with as well. Yeah, Harrier is a boss fight, How? Um, but both these guys are absolutely insane at that fight. I can't yeah. see them... I mean, well, the I Harrier... can see them messing it up, but it'd be <clears throat> pretty surprising. Well, the Harrier can do a lot of weird things, um, like dive under the water, for example, because, as we all know, Harrier... Yeah, gets... Are fully capable yeah. of swimming. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's just something that makes no sense. Also, for whatever reason, if you look at the box art for this game on the back, you can see Raiden trying to take the Harry down with an AK. Does it doesn't work? We tried. Um, yeah, I think it does like minor, minor chip damage, but it's not really dealing. It's just so silly. It's but, uh... yeah, it's not an efficient way. So both of these guys are gonna do their their uh, their node inputs. So obviously, uh, at this point, we have a lot of cutscenes and codec calls, um, all mandatory, of course. Yeah, so that's one thing that you'll notice is a big difference in MGS3, is that the game flows a lot better due to being a lot less cutscenes and a lot less game interruptions. MGS2 likes to interrupt you every 35 seconds. Rose is, <laughs> like, the literal overly attached girlfriend who just wants you to tell her it's their anniversary today. and Yeah, just won't let that go. And then she goes off and becomes a psychiatrist. Maybe she understands how much mental pressure she put on Raiden. But uh, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna see two pretty standard uh, docs here. Both gonna go the same way and just wait at the door. So we are playing on PS2, as I mentioned earlier, and there is some PS2 specific strats that I'm sure uh, Raichu will be able to go over a bit more in depth than I. But uh, Obviously, MGS2 is MGS2 is MGS2, but PS2 is weird, um, and I'm not, like, I could list them all off right now, but then we'd have nothing to talk about later on, so I'll just wait until we get closer to these things. There's a lot of weird little things that just, like, little quirks, especially, and some of these are, like, exclusive to the PAL version. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, there's cycles in this game that are much slower on PAL. It's much more forgiving in some areas. So they're um, playing on PAL, Sons of Liberty, on purpose because the US version of Sons of Liberty does not have European Extreme. Um, you know, of course, you can play Substance and have the same sort of experience. But there's also, like, fun little glitches and things that are exclusive specifically to Sons of Liberty, like on PAL. Yeah. Yeah, the, U the US version of Sons of Liberty was the first released version, and it was a beta, let's be honest. Basically. The game was pretty broken. <laughs> um, like, and of course, back back in those days, there was no uh, just popping on the PSN and updating a game. You, oh, exactly. you lived with the broken. Um, however, yeah. in terms of uh, MGS2, it's broken in a good way for the speedrun. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of strange little quality of life changes that they made, like on the heliport, some of the bomb, a bomb comes closer to you, and little weird that's, things like that. That's such a silly sense. change. Uh, and I mean, like, one thing I will, will hmm. mention in this little bit of a lull whilst we get a couple of codex, we're playing on New Game Plus, not New Game Plus Plus, and this changes bomb locations. Um, it's gone over a routing change over the past six months or so. We used to play on New Game Plus Plus. Uh, now some new strats have been found for New Game Plus, and it's turned out to be a tad quicker 
So no, uh, no sunglasses this time around. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, um, another little thing about PS2, all versions of PS2 is the codex. They they load instantly, whereas uh, the HD collection has a, a massive like codex delay. Whatever reason, yeah, just because, just because, uh, big just for lazy point, programming. I it's I think, lazy I think programming. Ha- like I really think what happened there was they tried to increase the resolution of the video or the video codec and it's just like screwed with the ps3 and made the codex loading slower. i mean i hate to break it to you but the codex loading slower on the xbox as well it's a, it's a programming thing yeah it's so, just like so whatever they did they just broke because i mean mgs3 doesn't have it <laughs> it's like, no it's no so... but mgs3 also doesn't render anything in its codex i think that's where the delay yeah. comes in it portraits that's what I mean. It's like when they increase the resolution. Yeah. Animated videos. It's like, uh oh. And also Animated. they, also, uh, they changed the font in the codex, other versions because yeah. why not? Like why they did that, I'll never, never know. All right. So now we're on to the meat of the game, uh, and this is bomb defusal, and we are going to see the two runners going to do the anti, uh, yeah, the counterclockwise defusal route. Uh, this is the bigger change in the rounding. It used to be a clockwise, diffu- clockwise defusal. Uh, they've changed this now. So we're uh, going to well, see the two runners shoot not the... On, not on UEX. You always did it this way. You can do it on, like, backwards, but it's slower, I think. Or much, it's much harder. twenty. It's like 25 seconds slower or something. But um, So the Nothing first bomb is... Harder. Yeah, it's way harder. Uh, the first bomb is behind the door. Uh, surprise, surprise, we defuse it. Yeah, and funnily if enough, you do actually... the... Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, if you do this, the clockwise, there's actually guards in Strut B as well. Uh, if you come yeah. this way, at this point, there is no guards. Oh no, there's guards there, it's just, they have no bearing on us once more. We get yeah, delayed they're downstairs. by reason the bombs, they're down... so it doesn't matter. It's yeah, they're bomb. downstairs. But it's funny to note that, um, D-Lime's actually found a, uh, a way to freeze that bomb with the door closed. The, uh, the only thing about it is that it's, it's literally like pixel perfect, so... <laughs> oh, well that sounds terrible. Alright, so, yeah. so uh, strut A, there is two bombs, one on the roof, one in the actual pump room. The roll through this uh, to defuse the bomb whilst he's knocked down is actually a relatively tight strat in terms of how fast you need to be. Especially if he refuses to hold up, because sometimes they just don't hold up. So, obviously you saw Tyler running with his gun out like that. Um, so that means, like, I think Tyler's probably playing on a DualShock 1, whereas uh, he is. Lines yeah, he playing is. on a DS2 uh, with his pressure sensitivity. Now, the main drawback and benefit to either controller, anyone who's played on a DS2 will tell you that uh, no punches are hard. And you need to use the force of God. It's just as simple as that. <laughs> whereas yeah. a DS1 has no pressure sensitivity. The benefit Tyler with the uh, torture at the end, but uh, I think both of these guys are are well equipped in their matching. But shouldn't cause well, them any trouble. Yeah. So another little uh, neat piece of tech uh, that you would have just seen is the coolant rise. It is literally just an animation cancel. If you equip the coolant as you're standing up, it skips the standing up animation uh, and you instantly rise. It's uh, pretty easy to do. It's 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 free time save. Uh, and Basically. it's convenient because uh, you do need to defuse a lot of bombs. And I mean, it, it, for s- such a small thing, it can save quite a substantial amount. If you yeah. look at it in relevant terms, I mean, Raiden stands up really bloody slow. So you can't yeah, he's a couple real of games bad. Where it's quite useful. So they're both using a chaff here in Strut F. Um, the reason, the main reason for this is one, this is an easier strap. But on PS2, you actually need that caution. Um, now you'll see why shortly when we get into Strut E, and I'll explain it there, I guess. I'm just trying to get ahead of time. But you see Tyler's coming onto the EF book. Now this is one of the big benefits of PAL. Um, the ciphers turn slower on PAL. Yeah, the frame they're rate. so slow. Yeah. So, the AI is linked to the frame rate, and you can just see Tyler cartwheel through here, yeah, whereas on... Just 
US, you would have to go prone and... Yeah, and HDC and everything, you'd have to stop for a second and let that... There's a couple of ways of doing it. There's like a buffer that you can do, or you go prone, which is the more favorable strat. But if Siler comes in here into Shri, um, we'll see now. The reason he needs this caution is because the backup guard is here. On PAL, for whatever reason, when there's guards who have um, their like status reports, if they don't make that report in, say, 30 seconds on HTC, you might get the call like, why are you late with your status report? Like you see now, on on PAL, it's like half as fast or half as slow or whatever. I'm trying to, you get what I'm trying to say, I think. It comes yeah. in way faster. So yeah, it does. If Tyler and D-Lines did not have this continue, this caution, excuse me, there'd be backup guards coming down as they're defusing the bomb. Of course, that's an alert and probably death. Yeah, but, in MGS2 European Extreme, this is punishing. It's three shots is dead. Um, yeah, three shots to death. Three from guards and five from Cyphers because Cyphers do less damage for some reason. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously Tyler's already taken a hit. And I imagine Limes has in Strat F unless he got really lucky. Uh, no, he took it. They both took a hit in Strat F. Yeah, so they have two. Oh, it's left. almost always going to happen. And they'll probably take one now in Strat D as well as part of that strat, so, you know, your health. And I mean, they could even take one right now, um, in Shurdy here, on the way back down, because they both do an incredibly risky Shurdy strat. Um, and that's all part of this new caution strat that they do. Yeah, so that that's one of the few things about MGS2 that is kind of good, is the fact that with the three major releases of the game, excluding PC, because it is just substance, there is different ways to run this game for different systems, oh. like NA Soul. Yeah, so Tyler got through the uh, with the hold up caution, uh, the hold up strat. So he's after uh, taking damage now, so he's gonna have to take Shruti a lot. So yeah, D Limes is gonna take the new route altogether. Yeah, D Limes just takes it safe and doesn't take the shot. Which it's a tad slower, but he's got. You know, he's got that safety net of being able to take two shots. Exactly, I think he's going to make up that time. D, if he goes for the risky uh, bombs, if he is old. Yep. So, um, Strut D. Strut D happens very fast, oh, and it shit. is... Blink and it, you it, miss it, it, Yeah, blink and you miss it. So, one headshot, two headshots. You then go down, and you will run across here. You will shoot that guy a second time, and then you will run across... This guy will eventually fall asleep. You take the third headshot and you drop down over the railing to defuse one of the two bombs. This guy will walk away just as you drop down conveniently, and you will oh, sleep. So what Lime did was um, he Ooh, knocked Lime's him, him in the head. Attract his attention. Um, so Lime's oh Lime's, and he does that as like a safety thing. He'll knock for that guard because I'm sure you saw Tyler. He drops down, causes the alert, and then uses the um. Well, no, that didn't happen to Tyler because he spotted him from up top. But uh, usually, like the fastest way, quote unquote, because it's all relative, is he'll catch you as you're drop catching, but you'll have the iframes from entering the hang animation. You'll climb back up and body that guy, and then uh, yeah. use the. Um, you'll usually take the shot if you've got enough health, but you'll use the coolant to keep him quiet while you freeze the bomb. And then yeah, uh, roll through and run away. Yeah. So it's so, it's a very technical room, very ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, it's really good to watch when executed correctly. But when it when it goes south, it goes south. Uh, so we're gonna shoot this guy, uh, which is all happy days. Now we're gonna pick up sensor B. Now we don't need to use it. Uh, no. We know where all the bombs are, but the game will not let you progress without <laughs> picking up the item. Yeah, the game um, doesn't care. I guess it uses flag or some it, it well yeah matter. it it uses it checks for the item in the inventory when you leave strut b that's what causes so it'll check for all the bombs to be diffused and it'll check for the item and then if it 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 back that you've done all that you'll get this codec call from stillman yeah so um, it doesn't matter that you don't need it but you do so it's an unfortunate little bit it's not a huge time loss at the end of the day three four seconds because you, yeah. you're gonna go past that pantry anyway exactly so, so tyler's just... gonna pick up the bridge chaffs and limes will do the same they have five bullets left well limes has five bullets left in his usp uh he'll be looking to empty them here because we do need an empty usp 
for the next quote unquote uh, boss fight. Not uh -oh. much of a boss, but Tyler takes a death in Strut. Um, B messes up the distraction shot and now the real trouble with taking a continue here is Tyler starting back at Strut the BC connecting bridge. Yes, you do. Okay, so one thing to explain about how this game works, unlike MGS3, which gives you a continue at every room, MGS2 on European Extreme is not as forgiving. It will take you back to the start of the time segment if there's a time segment. Yeah. So you'll notice here, and also after we defuse the bomb and go past Fortune, there's another time segment. If you die exactly. at any time, you go back to the start. Yeah. So the, it, it just checkpoints and kind of unusual. Which is really strange because, well, it kind of makes sense, like, soft lock. I'm guessing that's what it is. If you got to, like, for some reason, if it took you more than 200 seconds to get to Sure Day, um, if you well, soft if you're lock. Playing this game, like, if you're playing this game in an intended way, that is a relatively tight time. Yeah. No, it's not, like, very easy where you get, like, 8 million seconds, but... <laughs> yeah, very easy. You get the equivalent of a... You, you literally get the equivalent of a millennia to get there. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... So pretty much, I I have to assume it's like if you got down to the, you had like ten seconds on the clock. It's it's not going to soft lock you there, so it's going to let you go back. But uh, and it's actually funny to note that Limes has actually made up his room transitions and or whatever seem to be a bit faster than Tyler because he got to the bottom of the docks as Tyler got on the elevator. Uh, if you use the uh, little timer it gives you, so and of course that discounts loads and everything. So it's an amusing stack to look at. But, uh, yep. So, the bomb is not underneath the uh, submarine. For some reason, it's on the wall in a completely I'm, useless on, place. I mean, you're not going to blow up a building by blowing up the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. All, like, you're not going to blow up the building by putting it in the women's bag no. either. But, no, you're not. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but it's there. I guess it's to just throw you off, you know, for people who played like the other difficulties. But like, the worst spawn is on hard, honestly. It's so silly. I, I can't even remember. Isn't it on the right hand side? Don't you have to flip over the railing? Yeah, it's on the submarine, but you have to like flip over and stand on the diving board to get it. It's so stupid. All right. So iframes are a thing, and you can see Lime's abusing, abusing them. them. Uh, so whenever you pop in and out of cover like this, you get iframes, and. Uh, poor old Fortune is standing there going, Why the hell can't I hit this guy? He's just looking like a bit of a dick. Going back and forth, but uh... It's all very all right. strange, but uh... So basically, as you pop out of cover, you get iframes of your as instead, and that's just... It's not only the safest way to do this fight, quote unquote, it's biggest. also the fastest. Because as you get close to Fortune like this, it reduces lag. Just the way the camera works and stuff like that, so... Yeah, on the PS2, lag is super prevalent, and the smoke uh, is a really big thing. And if you're at the back of the room, not only do you have to have all the uh, the room objects on the screen, there's more smoke from the fire, and um, so it can really tank your frame rate. Now, you could do this with USB with bullets. However, you would shoot, and if you take a shot at Fortune, it plays a mini cutscene of the bullets swerving around her. So you missed. Yeah. So we're on a timer here. We're waiting for the elevator to come down. It's as you can see the cutscene playing for Tyler. So the the elevator's on its way. So like the uh, usual, and I think Tyler's kind of done it a bit of an unorthodox way. The uh, standard strat, quote unquote, for this is you'll get in your box, take an L towards the first crate, um, ten shots, roll over the fire, take two, go to where Tyler would be now, and then you'll count ten. You'll get the elevator cutscene, and you'll count like eight more, six more, something like that. Um, yeah, I... Although I think it's a little different on Pal because Ol she does Olga, Olga, Fortune. Olga, she does Olga. Fortune Thanks. fires more shots on Pal to account for frame rate. Um, and Tyler's taken out his cool in here to set up his menus for after the fight. So for whatever is, the way previous works a little bit in this game. Um, because Tyler had his cooling out when the fight ended, it will default back to the non-first person view web, which was the SOCOM. So yeah. he'll just have to click his SOCOM on, he won't have to worry about it. Yeah, and uh, we'll use the SOCOM a little bit uh, throughout this run. It's not, it's like obviously in uh, European Extreme, we never pick up the suppressor, so the SOCOM is like literally only there for warning shots. Pretty much. Uh, we, we kill 
And Fat Man. Well, yeah, we need to knock Fat Man over. Um, Ideally, so... you won't use it on Fat Man on European Extreme, of course. On PAL, excuse me, but... We'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate that strat very soon. Or they will. Yeah. We'll just talk about exactly. it. Exactly. So, <clears> I, uh, when we get up to it, I, I mentioned earlier that the AI is in some unexplainable weird way linked to the frame rate and so the MGS2 the, I suppose <laughs> yeah so the PAL version of MGS2 uh oh Tyler's in trouble um yeah he could oh. be in a little bit of it no, no he, he got lucky fine. the guard fell asleep but uh it's better to be lucky than good well that's actually another little thing about PAL guards fall asleep faster on PAL than they do on they do they do which yep. is hilarious it's like and not just PAL solve really... PAL substance also and i guess that's probably I, another frame rate it's a thing. Fr frame rate thing yeah so this game doesn't run at 60 fps it runs at 50 and uh for those of you who were blessed being in the power region like both me and raichu we had a terrible time with mgs1 but mgs2 was pretty darn good yeah and um, i think they kind of like accelerated certain things to make yeah, they, they sped up animations. Yeah. So that's why you don't feel like you're running as slow right. like you do on MGS1. So but Batman. Batman and PAL and Loop. This only works on uh, 4x3 50 hertz. You can't do this at 16x9. So first of all, we're going to defuse the first bomb and run over to this corner. We're going to shoot him in the foot and then in the head twice. So everything's kind oh, of the I same as you'd see on any other. But. Usually Fat Man would run away after you knock him down here like this, and uh, but if you gain a little bit of distance, he's going to keep trying to, he's basically just going to do this. He's going to yell at you yeah. to get out of his way. Yeah, and he's going to shoot at you. Oh no, you... Limes! He was just a little bit too far back, and yeah. Fat Man got away. So it's a very, it's not super precise, but it's precise enough to matter. It's it's not an easy loop for, like, no. for that. Um, Considering, like, if you think of Olga Loop, which is pretty easy on European Extreme if she goes the right way. Um, and obviously, and... like, Batman is constantly edging towards you because he's been knocked down. He kind of edge inches just a touch forward. And uh, you kind of have to back up just a bit every time. But if you back up too far, Batman's just going to run away. And I will say this, though. Limes did make a fantastic recovery. I was going to say, just because the Limes, he still managed to pull pull it off uh, before Tyler. Now, the, the gap has been closed significantly. Significantly, rather. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty neck so and neck. So this is definitely still anybody's race at this point. Uh, and Ames might actually decide the next change. Yeah, so they've defused the party bomb, uh, as it's called. Uh, <laughs> party bomb. It's the party bomb, right? Um, so now we need to go and uh, pick up a disguise and an AK. It's time uh, to start so the party. Um, so we're gonna get the disguise from this ninja because didn't he die? It's not Grey Fox. It's Promise. didn't it's not Deep Throat. It's not Deep Throat. It's it's look. It's Mr. X. It's obviously. Kojima. It's Kojima. It's clearly just gonna be Kojima. Anyhow, we're gonna go pick up an AK. We're going to get a guard outfit from uh, the ninja, and uh, this also leads up to, in my opinion. The most satisfying menu in all of um, Metal Gear Solid Oh, it's so 2. nice, dude. And that's like, equipping both the box and the guard outfit. At once, like, because you do it in, like, a single roll, and it just feels so good. Yeah, it's While just, riding, it's smooth. Like riding Unless you're on PC and you drop in foot. Again. Lines, Look at that. No. He didn't do it. He didn't get... Oh, no, he did. Or did he, he did, he got it. Yeah, he got the box. Oh, look at Tyler, dude. He got all of it before Raiden's feet even touched the ground. That's hot. Yeah, Tyler's Tyler's been running this Ooh. game for quite a while. And I mean, that could Isn't be... It... I was going to say, that could even be partly down to Tyler using a DS1 as opposed to do a DS2 because he won't have that pressure sensitivity to deal with, which is... Well, pressure sensitivity doesn't apply to the shoulder buttons thing, thankfully, but... Well, it does on a D-pad. Uh... Oh, no! Limes! Oh, Limes. Oh, <laughs> so oh. he got what I like to call the the frame, the frame alert. So, oh, you so technically, they both do this now. yeah, so it's a two punch buffer. You get oh, seen, but the chaff grenade goes off before it can cause the alert. Yes. So I've, 
I made a, a grave error in my uh my memory. Oh, my memory. Rhymes missed the AK though. Well, he, so that's he... gonna cost him a second. No, he he went to pick it up. And but, Tyler um, actually got the, the distraction strat, so that's another second or so clawed back. Yeah, so I mean, like, it's still anybody's race. I mean, nobody... I think the Harrier is probably going to be the big decider here, but, I mean, they could both pull off a perfect Harrier, and, you know, that'll well, shut me In right saying up. that, there is also the thing is, will Tyler bite the bullet and go for Lethal Vamp 2? Because no. uh, if he won't, Limes will. No, oh, Limes and, definitely will. Limes doesn't care at this point. That, that saves like 30 odd seconds to go yeah. for lethal vamp 2. I mean I've been talking to Limes a lot about this race and he said he's in it to win it. Big Boss doesn't care. I mean he's, he lost Big Boss five minutes in the tanker so. Yeah both runners did so. But um the the big thing now is Ames is probably going to be it's going to be interesting and then the Harrier um once we get past both of those it's all fairly standard from there um until we get the vamp and yeah, then again, and it's a even bit more... Vamp is, Vamp is probably the easiest of the Big Shell bosses. Absolutely. And I, I was just about to say, uh, something I completely forgot on that's different from PAL, or PS2 and PC that HTC has, is uh, the grenades work completely differently. So when you throw yeah. a grenade in HTC, it doesn't start cooking until it hits the ground. Whereas PS2 and PC, it starts... The minute you pull the pins, you can blow a grenade up in your hand if you want, but you shouldn't. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not a good idea. Yeah, you only do that in MGS one, but uh... so that's 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 why that little strat on the EF bridge, you'll see that on like PS two and one, but you'll never see that on that. On... All right, hedge your bets. Aims time. The only real part of RNG in this run, aside from boss pattern, is yeah, where aims will spawn. Um. Well, even Olgren's version is consistent, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, they just uh, got rid of the old Olgren, Yeah, so, they both go in at pretty much the same time. Like, this is neck and neck. Uh, Ames can be in one of about 22 positions. Um, we want him, uh, ideally, to be the closest to the door, but... It's literally completely random. So and... No way for us. It's, it's all just frame count, really. It's just a frame thing, and can't help it. Yeah, so oh, aims. That's a good aims for <laughs> limes. <laughs> so limes yeah. got the better of the aims. Aims for oh, that's a default aims. He missed it. He just missed aims. No, he didn't. I thought that was aims. So Tyler's it's hard to see. Little... Yeah, oh, Tyler's doing the distraction here. The... Um, because for some reason, and I don't know why. This is just a <laughs> stealth edge. He could probably tell you. When you punch punch buffer like that and switch to a first person weapon or item in this case, really, such as the D mic, it will always, it will still like, for the guards, they'll see you with an AK in your hand, but they'll be curious as to why you're punching. But if you switch to the D mic without doing that, they're just going to kill it right away. Yeah. And um, Goid or no Goid, if you get spotted in this room, it's game over. And yeah, if you get if you get spotted in this room, it's game over. If you kill a, the guard in this room, it's game over. And if you sleep the guard, you can't actually use the D mic because apparently this one guard snores like a mammoth. Um, I don't know if you, even if you put the guards to sleep at the game, they'll be like, "Why are you late with your status report? Trouble in yeah. hall, one hall, B one hall. Check it immediately." Uh, take some time though. They won't instantly game over if you sleep them. Yeah. It'll it'll just... wait for the status report. So basically, just don't touch the guards. That's, like, if you throw a chaff grenade, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the chaff <laughs> grenade, like the most OP thing in the whole game. Also, shell one core exit. This is a strat that is. It looks really hard, and it's not easy, but it's not too bad as long as you don't get seen by a backup guard because they ignore the chaff, and you will still there's take a full alert. There's a lot of variations to this. Strat. Oh. So what Tyler and Limes chose to do was the easier of the two strats. Now you can whip out your balls, put on your big ball, put on your big boy boots, and just roll into that backup unit guard and hope to get duped. Um. Oh my God, we have a forensic in the chat. Dude. I feel blessed. Um. Speaking but, uh, of blessed, somehow uh, Limes didn't hit the radio. Limes didn't hit the radio and hit him in the head, which is perfectly fine. It's what you want, but. Uh, when the guard lifts his thing up to speak into the radio in front of his face, 
the hitbox can be really balked. Like, you just saw Tyler hit the radio. Um, in his case, it doesn't matter because he runs away. Um, however, hitting him in the head through the radio is a thing that can happen. Yeah. So, like, For ideally you would hit him in the radio because it will give you the infinite caution, like you see Tyler here with. So, Limes may have to wait outside Strut D for a little while to, um... No, he probably won't, because he doesn't care about the alert. If you're on Big Boss, though. Um... Oh god, everybody's here now. Drix is here, too. Goodness. Uh, so, uh, we're on our way to our next boss, which is, which is Harrier. We need to go to the Sediment Pool, which is Strut D. Uh... So the little door you saw on the top floor before, that's where we got ahead. Outside, for some reason, and I... Maybe it's because I'm not a terrorist. I just don't understand these guys' trains of thought. Because uh, yeah, he runs and just opens the door for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that guy to open the door for you. But aside from the door opening, is for whatever reason, they decided to just put a small, like, nation's worth of explosive on this bridge. Yeah. But, was, but they left the control... It, it was a trap for Snake, but it's like, it didn't work on the tanker. I don't know why it was going to work here. Yeah, so Snake. we're going to say two shots. So, so Limes looks like he's going straight for the cyphers. A cypher. Uh, he, get, he gets one cypher, then he cycles and waits till this cypher stops at the top. So, obviously, so, boom. if you happen to miss that cypher, it's a game over. Because yeah, apparently blowing up the cypher means you've blown up. Sure. Yeah, the, it makes no <laughs> sense, right? You can shoot, you can shoot the controller, and you're all good. But if you shoot the cipher with the controller underneath it, and it destroys the controller, uh, you're all okay. you're out of luck. And it looks like Limes oh. missed the. Yeah, he did. He missed the flag, uh, the flag. So I can uh, hear controller, so... holding his breath right now as he tries to get those. Yeah, so Tyler oh, got okay. all of them. So he just saved himself a couple of seconds. So you're but, always yeah, ever. Sorry. Everyone's had to continue to those stupid ciphers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had more than I can even count. I've gotten here on Big Boss and... So let's count. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six. Six? Yes, he got six. Six he plus one. No, you don't do it on this. You can't do six. Just... Yeah, no, unless you have got... turbo. If you got six, the race would be swallow. <laughs> three. Well, he got five, yeah. So Tyler got five as well. Which is so, pretty standard now. The alliance is having the submarine harrier. But oh, yeah. you still managed to get a shot. So you, what you want here is two shots, at least. If you don't get two shots here, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, because then it doesn't go into this uh, what we call the die shot. So uh, we wait yeah. for this cutscene to play yeah. for a little bit, uh, and then for some reason, this never works for me. And also, welcome to frame rate hell. Uh, you can lock on to the harrier in the cutscene, for some reason, and you can get the two shots off. Um, also, this is the one shot where Snake can mostly get in the way. We're lucky Harry is coming from the right side, but if he was coming from the left, it would be awful. So we're gonna get two shots in, we're gonna iframe the missiles, and then get a shot, two shots behind. Oh, he missed the preempt shot, but that's not too bad. You can still recover from this. He should get three shots. This is a very good Harrier so far. The only thing I'll say is, you can, if, even if you got no shots, um, when he's when you get the five shots and he goes like back there, he'll still go into the die shots. But the problem is, uh, he goes into die shots, so you only get two hits plus one. You'll get about let's say five before he starts going into missile phase, and usually you won't get him out. You won't kill him before the missile phase is over. So if you yeah, get those so extra two shots, those two shots can make all. Yeah, so if he go, if he flies away after the missile spam, like, that's reset for most people. Most yeah. people won't stand for that. Because I what mean, he does after that is, like, depends on your mum's grandma's best friend's middle name. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's usually the bloody machine gun phase, and that's just nightmare. But, uh, so we see here, they're actually just, like, codec pages behind each other at this point. Uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're half a second. So let's see, will they do a right you? Are they going to pull a right you? So there's a bit of a meme behind if you roll across this bridge, 
one of these okay. panels on this fence can cease to be solid, and yes. you can just phase through them, and I will forever laugh at Raichu because that's the first person I ever saw it happen to. <laughs> In saying that, I've also it's also happened to me. So it's so annoying. It's less it's less funny when it happens to you. Yeah, it's not funny right. at all when it happens to you. I know all about that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna tap to distract the guard so he looks at the wall instead of looking outside like a normal human being would. <laughs> now we're gonna spam between the pistol and the AK here because they are literally like frame on each other there. Um, yeah, so because it makes you shimmy faster because it cancels your movement animation and it restarts it. Your, your little animation and makes you just you basically just glide. It's kind of hilarious. So they yeah, are. So Lime's Obviously picked up they're... ammo there. Interesting. And uh, yeah. Raichu full uh, goes picking up the AK. You'll see that. Uh, Raichu. Uh, sorry, D Lime's. <laughs> uh, uh, D Lime's picked up the ammo. Tyler didn't bother with it. I was like, did I? <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say you are correct. When I run, I don't pick up that ammo. <laughs> So, I mean, it's actually, it's almost it's free. It's really yeah. free. Like it's a point two of a second. That so up. what you saw there is actually both of these guys have uh, during the cutscenes have turned their directional map based, saving frames, effectively. Um, yeah, it's a frame saver. And it's also very important to point out that they took their BDU off because if you wear the BDU in Shell Two, you get slower loads for cutscenes. Really, really. Really slower loads. It's the uh, difference for like 30 seconds. Just for those Olga cuts. Yeah, so... <laughs> this being... Uh, this is... Soul, and we can clip out of bounds. This is not something you can do on the HTC. Uh, however, the camera is broken, and they've also recently found a way to get through these stairs perfectly without having to fight them. You gotta touch a corner and go prone, and you can get yeah. in perfectly. They're gonna pick up. Henry. They're gonna walk in a certain way to avoid the mine, and they're gonna pick up the uh, Nikita. And so they did. So, a, they did a funny little thing with the D mic where they actually they they D micized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything in for, that forces you in the first person can do a quote unquote coolant rise. Like so the hell it's... with the coolant rise. We're we're doing a D mic rise. So uh, they're at, like they're in, they're scarily close at this point. It's actually. Yeah, like where terrifying. if like if Tyler had gotten a, an instant elevator there, he'd be in front. Well, That's exactly. how close this is. And I, you know, this D Limes, uh, he stood at the farthest end of the elevator to um, because you can't enter the elevator until the door is fully open. So you want to be standing like at that end, so you can just get in and straight onto the computer. So we're gonna see a variation on how these guys handle the either. Limes is gonna stand up on the boxes here to do it. Tyler uses stairs. If you go halfway up the stairs, you're at the right level to nail it into the vent. As well as yeah. that, couple that with the fact that you're now closer to the present. So it can save you two, three seconds. But, yeah, uh, but oh, Tyler had to uh, Tyler had to adjust his aim there, so he lost a bit of time on the uh, so didn't Nikita speed president. up. But then neck and neck, look at this. But the president, the thing is, the president's an idiot, and he'll he'll just run right into your miss. Care. Yeah, he will. He will front flip into it. He will do whatever. He, like he's gonna die with on that missile if if like it's the last thing he does. Yeah, and like, it'll be. I and it'll be crazy. <laughs> which which is funny because literally thirty seconds later he dies anyway. But if you kill him, it's game over. You can't steal his card. And yeah, in fairness, I I should have said, um, Apache did actually come up with that D mic strap that they use at the start there with all the team. Yeah, so Apache saved us about 10 frames. Yeah, I mean... Because that's, that's about how many frames it takes to turn left. And those 10 frames, let me tell you, in this race... Well, right now, that's about what's between them, yeah. isn't it? Um, so, yeah, well, I mean, this is kind of terrifying. How close they yeah. are. Yeah, no, this is... This is... Like, Sorry, Apache, between... I was, I was meant to say that, and I just forgot. It's uh, so literally right now, there is no RNG left in this game. So the only thing separating these two is execution. Yeah. The, like I said, there is the thing that where Tyler won't uh, forego the PSG1T 
Well. And that will cost him time. But at this rate, even Tyler might might go down to that. Well, Tyler's gonna not pick up the body now, so. True. He will even out. True. Now, he might pick it up, but I doubt. Press X to doubt. Yeah, I'm. Where's my controller I... so I can press X? <laughs> oh, I've got I've got a DS4 right here. Ready? Just press X to doubt this. Um, but, there you um, go. I'm mashing X. Um, can't hear it, but I am. What was I gonna say? Forgot. Uh, X to doubt body armor and PSG1T. No, Bam has a touch of orangey. Believe it or not. How far? How long it takes him to jump down? That, that's a little bit random. But let, let's be honest. It's it's, it's negligible irrelevant. right now. Yeah. Like, well, um... Tyler doesn't believe in body armor. Which is funny, he used to pick it up for the longest time, but... So, body armor is mainly just for rays, so we're gonna get a shot in the head, and now, we're gonna fight... I'm not sure why D-Limes did this, because he... This doesn't make Bam come up any fast. No, but it does a tiny bit of damage, tiny bit of stam damage. The thing is, I and, say and, on and you don't need the stingers. It's not worth doing because of the lag. I don't know. I'm nitpicking the drone now, and I mean, like, you know. But I mean, when you have a run this close, like, the things separating them is nitpicks. Yeah, I mean, like, lag. Frame savers. Lag as PS2 is a big thing. So, the Limes is taking a really safe with the here. Yeah, Tyler's. Gonna come out of this ahead, I think. Cycle, eight point cycles, whereas Lime's just gonna take him five punches. But, oh, oh like, my so Tyler, goodness. Tyler, Tyler is ahead. Tyler is ahead by about a frame. fifty frames. <laughs> like, th there's a second in this, if that. Uh, so I don't know a whole lot about the PS2, but teleportation is not a thing here, is it? It's not a thing anymore. So yeah, well that's. Like Python just said here, that's the difference between using six. Like, yeah, six punches is obviously much easier. Eight punches right. saves the frames and so, here we see. So this is this is Tyler's Lime's picking up the body armor. So this is where Tyler is going to pull ahead for this a bit, slow amount then, of time. I'm just probably going to pull. So it's kind of it's going to even out a little bit when we get to the PSG one T, because Lime's will just head straight to the exit, whereas Tyler's going to. Get up into a vent. Have to pick up the PSU and and, ba and dive back down. So yeah, which takes some time. And also, it's just a slower route through the destroyed basement yeah. anyway. So don't don't think don't look too much and say, uh oh, here comes Tyler pulling ten seconds out of his ass. However, it's going to even out short. So yeah, ha oh, well, the only thing is frames out, <laughs> frames there will be there, there will there will be frames in difference, but there's less menuing on the on the part of D limes now for yeah. sniping because he doesn't well, have it, to exactly. equip a secondary. No, he just can stand on the ammo spawn PSG one and just he's done. Yeah, now, and in saying this, some... Tyler could skip the PSG one too. I don't think he will. Again, it's I'll like against it. his being. I will press X to doubt. Can I get some X's in the chat? Well, However, there is one part of this game that separates these two, and it is going to be Raze. Limes is a freak at that boss you, fight. Thank you, Ed. Everyone just type your X to doubt. If you doubt, Tyler's going to skip the PSU on T like I do. Just press X. I'm going to laugh if he looks at the chat and just goes, screw you all, I'm not picking it up. Also, oh, this is the <laughs> so 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 this is a uh, something that happens in uh, MGS two, and it's a big design flaw, and it's the fact that you walk Emma across the room. There's a codec call. You swim her for two seconds. More codec calls. Yeah. This it's is just... something in MGS two that drives me nuts: is the amount of gameplay interruption. <sighs> it's like you couldn't have just had it all at once. It had to be. You had to bring Emma. All right, he's picking it up. He's picking it up. Oh, okay, so here so, we go. So the, uh, so this is where we kind of even out just a little bit. Now swimming in. Um, wait a second. Oh, limes! Actually going for it. I fully expected him to just not. Now he's been saying all along he wouldn't. So maybe we do have a bit of an agreement, Tyler and Limes. Bit of a, a bit of a gentleman's agreement here because uh, it's very rare to see limes not to like actually bother with that item unless he's on a big boss run, which he's not. So. 
Now the other thing I wonder is, is it an Emma two thing because of the frame rate or something? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, this looks really close. I feel like that if they didn't pick up the PSG1T, Emma yeah. would be below the A and she'd be sitting down, so... Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. It, that, I don't know. We'll have to see when I... we get the sniping. This just keeps it interesting. Really I, 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 I will ask this in the credits if they do pick it up for Emma's sake. Also, uh, abuse against women, MGSR says no, but sadly, it's uh, we need to do it. Also, she's going to get her head cut off in the doors too. That's so, just a uh, thing. Some of the people in chat are, are reckoning that Lions might go with the Emma bump. The Emma I bump? Think, I don't think he's Okay, it so Emma bump on PS2 isn't too bad. Um. This saves a second at best, yeah. but at the risk of killing at the risk of killing your run. Yeah, I um, think Lions in a race, he's not going to have a chance. I, but then again, I was adamant Lions, Lions would pick up the PSG one T. So yeah, it's also Lions. He's a no, big. There's, actually, uh, there's a much big... easier bump you can do. Well, easier in so far as one soft lock goes there, that you can skip that little elevator. Hook. Um. If you bump Emma onto the stair, it just kind of bypasses the trigger for that little elevator hook thing. But... Oh, because it only triggers if you're holding Emma's hand. Yeah, because it doesn't, it thinks Emma's all the way back over there. And it's just like, oh, what, what's going on? So. Alright. So on Pal, this guard is slow. You don't have to shoot him. You can walk past him, and it's just safer. You don't even have to walk and shoot him on HDC. You can just walk past him. Yeah, so him. he's oh, going, he's no going way. Well. Oh, He's dear. done the bump. He's okay. There was no sploosh. I am Ooh. listening to Lime's audio. There is no sploosh. Amber is out. So, so he successfully saved a second. Congratulations. Uh, we all owe Apache a quit now. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Our so, production team is also shook. <laughs> our our one-man production team is just... Uh, I am very surprised, to say the least. Yeah, I'm, uh... I'm honestly very surprised at the current, like, how close this is. Like, I knew this race would be I'm close. beyond surprised. But... Um... Well, I, I say I'm surprised, but, like... It's fucking D-Limes and Tyler, like, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're, like, this is their life force. They This is all they do. Absolutely. In their I mean, spare like... time, so... These guys just, they know what they're doing. They, they know their way around an MGS too. Actually, I say that, but Tyler does a lot of things in his spare time. And I mean, it's actually worth noting as well that the, the Emma push has pushed Limes a little bit further. Um, to being ahead here, I mean, now it's back to being literally frames. Uh, there's a bit more than frames. There's about a couple of seconds, unless yeah. a delay has happened on one of my well, streams. It but... It's a lot of frames. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, you could be an hour behind and there's still frames difference, but... But, uh, I think they were, like, about a room behind at one point, and now they're just a little bit closer. And, I mean, sniping is going to be the big thing. If Limes goes with no PSG1T, he could save a lot of time. Um, yeah, I I wonder if, like, I'm, I feel like Emma's... Because, also, the water in, in PS2 makes you lag. So... We have PSG1T for Tyler, which is pretty, you know, unexceptional. Pantasmine spam, thermal goggles, and yeah, he's going straight for the, just the regular PSG1, so it must be compulsory to let Ember breathe. Oh, it has to be then, yeah. It must be just a pal thing, because, like, we both noticed that, like, our health dropped really bloody fast. Well, because I, like, you, you lose frames to the water effect on PS2, it yeah. runs really bad. Plus, you're but already guess, down 10 FPS. Yeah. So I guess the health bar didn't change. Yeah, I guess it's just something they didn't fix. Um, or didn't adjust. So now, Limes can just stand over to the right. Now, we stand to the right for one specific reason, and it's if you aim too close to Emma, she gonna fall over. And yeah. that is, like, what, six or seven seconds it takes for her to get back up and move again, so... So shout out to that guard who just stood there at the corner for about 10 minutes. Yeah. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but you could just see the gun and nobody Yeah, he, he, he always does it. It's just like, it, it spawns there and then there's the time for it to move. Yeah, so... it's about, it's easily 8 seconds. 8, 10 seconds. It's ridiculous. 
Yeah. Um, shout outs to some PC very easy runners telling me that you can't make that ammo will always fall under them wrong. But anyway, um, I uh, I'm uh, pleading the fifth, uh, my fifth amendment right, which I don't have because I'm American, but you know. Red thermals are the best, Joseph. Please. Red thermals are the best. I purposely run this game on low settings on PC, so I, my eyes don't like melt. I personally run on I run VR on low settings, so I can have white guards, because <laughs> the guard models are just white. Yeah, they're just like the MGS1 models. Yeah, it's so stupid. But there's like the little faintest bit of yellow here and there. It's like bumblebees. It's. <laughs> <laughs> we got bumble. It's hilarious, dude. Virtual boy thermals. Yeah, but the thing is, salt thermals don't give you headaches. Yeah, That's the red thermals don't don't make my eyes weep. It's interesting that Limes used all of his pentas at once. Um, oh, because it stacks. And I know, but like, stacks. I think it's still better not to, because you don't really want to use it when you're just shooting at guards, because who cares, honestly. But, uh, I, I mean, all his he thermals? Uh, what? Did he get rid of all his claymores? Yeah, I was yeah, looking at it, it looks like... Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, Lime's claymore. Yeah, so, uh, he, so Lime's is so, so desperate to save any little bit of time he's staring at the sky to reduce the lag. That's a thing. That's a legitimate thing. That's no, not a joke. No. I'm just reading what Plywood said, and it's just like, that's how, that's how close we are. Like, we need to worry about saving frames. Yeah, A bit like, of lag here and there. It's crazy. Yeah, and like due to the render distance in this area, the PS2, like, remember this game was made in, what, 2002 or something, 2001. Also, uh, I never realized that they made a um, an automatic PSG one. Yeah, you, yeah, well, it fires as fast as you press the button, and these two, uh, they're not exactly slow on the old fire rate. Unlike MGS3, that's completely realistic, and you cannot fire. That ridiculous pace, you'll fire them at the pace they're meant to be. <laughs> well, there's a technology increase between those two games. What do you like it or not? Because I've tried spamming the SVD the same way. Nope. No, you can't. You can't do it. I oh, actually God. tried. I, I tried it. it. I tried it on an emulator, and I bound the the square button to my scroll wheel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you you can only fire it as fast as the game wants to let you. Oh, All right, I'm so just, a, just about ahead here because of no menuing. Um, yeah, no, no menuing and a little bit of like lag reduction by looking at the skybox. Oh, don't do that, limes! Don't do the kick in first person mode. It gives me motion. Sickness. Please don't. I, I don't, I don't even do the the, the glitch. Also, that's a thing. Limes and Tengu one skip. That's a thing that don't go together very well. They hate okay, each so other. Maybe Tyler is ahead. Did Limes get the codec from Snake? Uh, oh. So Tyler is a bit oh. ahead still. Hmm. Yeah, so it's about hmm. even. But I mean, also, yeah, shout I mean, out to Snake showing up. At, yeah. Shout out to Snake for showing up. Game. Yeah, when it's completely irrelevant. There's like one cypher left. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here, Raiden. Okay, we're, we're done, Snake. Okay, well, I'm still here. No, he's here just in time to like perv on Emma. He's here to watch her die. <laughs> Fucking sicko, dude. Well, he didn't know she was gonna die. Also, yeah, spoiler knew. alert. Yeah, he didn't Snake is the Patriot. Yeah, the I know, he had a clear shot where he was to just nail him and she just, he just doesn't. <laughs> he just sits there like... He's just but, uh, like, I, I can't do it. So Tyler empties out his um, PSG1T just before the sniper sneak goes ends. So he's gonna do it the minute Vamp 2 starts, he's gonna completely unequip, he's gonna run straight to the ammo spot. So and, this uh, is th this is where uh, Limes is gonna save time, because he doesn't need to pick up ammo. He's just gonna he tap just... and spam. Oh! So Tyler's gonna so have to go. alternate legs every five shots, because Emma's gonna keep moving back and forth, so... So menuing plus just leveling vamp, it saved that bit of time that he needed. Yeah, so... Yeah, like... I said thanks, we can see Limes is ahead. Uh, <laughs> We can see just like you can, bud. Um, we can probably see it just before you can. Um, we can, actually. We can see it a couple of seconds. Because, yeah, we're watching directly from the RTMP server. We might as well right, so... be in their houses, you know. 
That sounded weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, technically we technically we should be in Chooser's house because that's where the server is. But uh, so we have one guard left to deal with in the big shell. It's this fellow. We just that was easy. Bonk him and run by. <laughs> yeah. So your health is an irrelevance at this point because you're gonna get a refill at uh, Arsenal gear. Well, unless you somehow get shot by this cipher. Lime shell which... off again. Limes is just, that's so close. There is something like 0.3 of a second leeway in that. Like, if you're yeah. 0.3 of a second too fast, you're done. You die. Like, the Cypher can basically finish off its well thing. And in, say, that in, saying that, in saying that, in saying that, taking the alert doesn't matter. No guards will come as no. long as the Cypher goes off. So, as long as you don't get shot when you're going across the collapsing bridge, you'll be okay. But, so, Limes has now gone. About four seconds ahead due to not picking up PSG1T. Just uh, not bothering with the PSG1T in general. Oh yeah, he picked it up, but not bothering to go get ammo. Uh, Level and so, Yeah, so now, for the next few minutes, this is raw movement is going to come down in the start of Arsenal gear. You interact with zero guards. Yeah, so it's going to uh, be very spooky for... Um, uh, until about... It's going to be very... Sorry kind of plain and boring until about Tengu 1. And that's where it's really going to matter. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, so Tengu 1 skip Jack is very difficult on European Extreme. Tengu 2 on PS2? <laughs> no, it's uh, pretty pretty straightforward. It's straightforward because it's just uh, do the do the jive, but... So, I mean, we could lose or we could find a lot of time loss or a lot of time gain here. Just... Coming up with Tengu's, with the Rays, and even Solidus. I mean, Solidus can kill your run, you know, if he decides Yeah, oh, he, he a prick. can, and <laughs> whilst, whilst I feel Limes has the advantage in Rays, I feel Tyler has a more solid Solidus. Sorry, that Yeah, I mean, it's not, not even that long ago that. since Lime the Solidus loop, so. And I mean, Tyler's been doing that Solidus loop like it's his Burt right for a long time now. Yeah. So, the one thing you will notice at the start of Tengu is, aside from the fact that Raiden is butt just, naked... I'm sorry, but just just look how close they are. Like, you can just... Oh, it's you it's codec pieces yeah. away. Yeah. Listen, I'll I mean, honestly. Brace yourself. There's literally the dialogue of Olga, they're bound to find you and getting nut-punched. That's the... That's the difference. Threw you in a little while. Alright, so... No, we take the equivalent of one shot's worth of damage from Olga's punch. Um, <clears throat> and it's just, so, if, you want an, if you want a more a rough ex a rough time difference, Tyler and Limes are about 10 seconds in split at this point. Yeah. Um, so, this next area is pretty much a fixed speed because we're relying on guard cycles. And cameras. Um, Never guard cycles, the camera, camera. <laughs> and also we will say this uh, codec timing. There's one codec in this room, which uh, you can lose time on if you don't answer it correctly. You won't lose yeah. much, but you can lose time on it. And I mean, uh, like, they, they yeah, uh, both well, have to hold select as they came into this room to uh, so, manipulate guard cycles. So both of them got it frame perfect, and. Uh, as silly as it sounds, that is what is separating this race right now. And this role, this role, the game will help you get across, but you have to be close. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can lose like a long time to that role if I you mean, mess it up. I just recall uh, when we did the MGS2 tournaments. No, oh, was it a tournament? I think it, no, we never had an MGS2 tournament. But I raced Flywood for some reason. No, we did. We must have done. Yeah, you 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 had a you had a normal tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there was no UEX tournament. That was the thing. But um, I raced plywood, and I actually lost the race because Raiden fell down, and I ended up yeah. getting shot to death and killed. Because without Raiden's sneaking suit, he's like a little kitten, and he'll just get shot to death very, very fast. He's and also, I may I repeat, <laughs> butt naked. Yeah, that's pretty hard. Time for some. Well, actually, it's pretty cold. I'm sure he's. Also, I th this still creeps the crap out of me. Uh. Is that chick in the chair? Like, doesn't need to. Rest. No, it's very, very, very Kojima. It's very Japanese and weird. Pointless. Yeah. Kind of yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's just life, I guess. All right. So oh. Tengu one. This is the boss rush of the game. Well, not the boss rush per se, but this is like 
Move the right a lot of things can go very wrong in the next 15 minutes. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, Lee Lines is What are you state. doing? Yeah, so you gotta be careful, because I was once not paying attention, I was just swinging like a doofus, and I knocked Snake out, and that's how you lose, like, 30 <laughs> seconds. You have to, like, wake him up with the spray. And then when he wakes up, he's mad at you, and he tries to shoot you, so. So Limes have been having a bit of trouble. Um, he's pointing out that the DS1 and the PS2 is trash. And the thing is, you have to swing your sword once. Or you yeah, otherwise it. you sit here forever. Yeah. The game just won't let you leave. It's like, oh, you can't swing a sword. You're dismantled, son. Um, yeah, exactly. So, really, it's just a waiting game. Yeah, it's exactly a minute or something. Right? Something like Somebody. a minute 20 or something of that nature. I can't actually remember. I did time it Some out. Somebody could be bothered timing. I am not that person. Well, I did, but I was so uninterested. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Tengu won. Uh, I'll let Raichu break this down because right, so it is relatively complicated. So Tengu won sucks. Um, what you'll see here is they're gonna throw stun raids because they want to get to the end of the room as fast as possible. Um, and they're gonna use a door glitch. So when you get up against certain doors and Limes throws stun grenades like he's feeding the peasants, um, as opposed to Tyler, he kind of times his stuns a bit differently. Uh, oh, Tala died. died. And that's why Tala you died. pick up. That's why you should pick up body armor. Um, yeah. But when you get to the door and you do a PPK, uh, you like push riding through the loads. Of Whatever. It yeah. Is. So just your door, your, your foot, your foot clips through the door when you do the spin kick, and uh, the loading zone is close enough to the back of that door that your foot collides with it, and the game's like, oh, he progressed, and you will go to the next room. So Tyler's like in a bit of trouble. Oh, he's okay. Now the problem is you can't have too many in your view, because the game will and try and kick them for you. Onto... <laughs> yeah. So Limes is demonstrating the cooking strat, and I'm, I talked while Limes was doing this, because obviously Tyler is about to do it now as well. Um, you try and snake, stand any old place you like, anywhere will do. And group them it's all together. It's just easier in this funnel. And just uh, keep cooling, king them. And the reason it the fight will end here shortly for Lime is because it's, it's an uh... anti soft lock measure. It's it's an anti soft lock measure basically built in that on the small off chance that a guard will get stuck under the level, fail to spawn onto the arena, that the game will just exit the game because there's guards at the very start who are still alive, and it's just like oh. Crap, they're not dead. There's something wrong. Okay, just skip. Yeah. Um, so that there's a variation on HTC and substance because the, the cooling glitch works, GW. it's just not very consistent. Not and also, like, because on uh, HTC, Snake doesn't stay trained for as long, he wakes up no. a lot faster. So they, they, they did try and pass that because obviously, screw S3 using abusing mechanics, but um, yeah, in a single player game. It's a yeah. <laughs> Can't get a competitive advantage. This race is still close. Like, Raze is a, what, a five minute fight on its own, give or take. And, uh, like, Tyler is, like, running, like, full risk strats. He has no body armor. He's gonna take two hits to die. Yeah. Uh, a water cutter will kill him. I mean, uh, well, a water stomp will kill you regardless. Yeah, water cutter will kill you. Uh, two shots from uh, machine guns will kill him. Missiles will kill him. Uh, well, one Whereas... shot from the machine gun, he's dead. There you go. So no so... Body armor. With no body armor, you cannot take any damage at all. But Limes has the body uh, armor, so he can take a hit from the machine guns. Limes are, not only has a body armor, but Limes found a perfectly consistent loop for this fight. Tyler was fantastic at doing. Uh, the loose cannon version of this fight, where there is no control, gonna, you just do your best. I'm just gonna cut you off real quick. Limes is, he's been talking about doing the risky intro. And so we'll see, if he does this, this is just... Alright, oh so... My god, dude, no. God, he's going for it. Lie! You crazy bastard. He got it too. One more. So, he, yeah. He got risky intro. Limes has done the most stupid thing in the whole game. Um, because he's insane in the brain. Uh, this is this is an IL strat. 
End of story. You should not be doing this in single segment runs, but of course, D Limes could give a shit. Um, he was practicing this a lot last night in anticipation of using it. So we're going to see him set up his loop here. And his loop saves massive time. Now he's delayed that shot on purpose to um, because he wants to kind of manipulate the cycles. So he's going to do a lot of little things that look a bit strange, but it's all part of it. And so a lot of this loop is kind of built on with some competition with Azu and Lions on Ray's IL and just so they were both trying to like do it the fastest possible and I think Azu came in with a pipe and Lions just kind of worked and developed it and made it better um, to the point where you had like on PC UEX the Raids fight is less than so you know it saves huge time but it's yeah, because really difficult to pull off. Yeah, this loop is insane, and it requires... Not only does it require micromanagement, it requires precise damage values on certain rays at certain times, so they all bunch up like they are on Lamb's screen. So, uh, you'll see so like, you are minimal movement. So what you'll see is you'll, like, you'll delay shots, and you'll shoot somebody, and then it'll go to the next one. And it's all done to, like, manipulate the fight as good as you can. And it's, like, it's so exciting to talk about, dude. Like... It's incredible. Like. It's actually like you see somebody jump on stage. He doesn't care. He can ignore. Him. Screw that guy yeah. because I need to deal damage to this guy. It's incredible, yeah. dude. I and love like, it. if you think about this six months ago, before that raised tournament, this fight was literally whatever happens happens. Yeah, it you was just eight minutes long. Best. It was like, anywhere from eight to ten minutes long. You just just survive, and now you have this nonsense. It's ah. Oh. Dude. And if you look at this, Limes has got this time down that the only real risk of taking damage is if one jumps on him. And where he's standing, that can't happen. Like, look at so, it, dude. He's fucking body in the raise, dude. He's in the C's and Tyler's just barely finishing the B's. He is body in the raise. And I'm sorry, I, I haven't been that excited at this entire run, but this is just... Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is a masterclass on... Roy, on seriously. I am semi, dude. I love it. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to calm down, but I just like it's incredible to look at. It's like, what am I? Oh man. Like Body Tyler's got ways. got the Tyler has the loop going as well, but it's not the risky entrance, so the loop is slightly slower. Uh, and like this is just Tyler's domain. Uh, sorry, Limes's domain. Well, the Rays have actually kind of stopped cooperating with Tyler a little bit here. Yeah. Um, Iridescence in shock. I think he is a little bit in shock when he sees. Like, I mean, honestly. Well, put it, put it, when I learned how to do European Extreme Rays, this was a hellhole. I wanted to like throw my PlayStation 3 in front of a truck. Right. Now, like, like, it's just majestic. Look at him. Just look at him, dude. Like, there are no you point. all looking? If I'm sorry, but if you're on audio only, take your phone out of your pocket and just look at this. Just look right. at yeah. it. If, if you've been watching uh, d Lab specifically, there has been no water cutters, no missiles, not even a machine gun fired at him. There has been He's... no bullshit. Dude, honestly. And, and, and Limes, if you've ever watched Limes' stream, and if you haven't, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Uh, he does this so nonchalant. Oh, like, he, he doesn't even care. He could do this blindfold. He, do yeah, he, he does firing his, his fucking USP or his SOCOM around. Like, he doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit, dude. Well, he fires the uh, he fires the SOCOM to keep his hands busy. It's just him, like... it's like a it's like it's just a thing. I do the same thing as like I do a lot of random crap, but like he's almost done with this fight. He's up into the D's. He has absolutely fight... bodied the rings. This 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 fight ends at ease, so uh like it can this end before is... that. Yeah, I'm the Irish one, dude. Honestly. Uh, He's not, he's not Irish, he's yeah, really... Yeah, the Australian he's... one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I was gonna try and do an Irish accent, but uh, I don't have the energy. Just fuck it out. Yeah, it's dude. just... Fuck me, Look, dude. look at that. that. That is a picture-perfect raise. Like, aspire, if you want to run this game, aspire to do that, because I certainly can't. Dude, I have I'm actually... pretty sure Raichu can't either. Oh, man, I am so excited. Are you right? awake yet, Jack? Fuck me. Like, I... 
quit running MGS2 because the game is absolute trash, but I think I'm going to go back to it just because of this. I can't calm down trash. Raichu just says that he'll be okay. No, He'll get over game. it tomorrow. I'm this game. No, I'm just, oh. Probably not. I'll just run MGS3 for it. But like, honestly, the rate... Like, oh God. And now we have 65 seconds of torture, because MGS2, that's why. Oh, MGS2 pal, have fun with this. Look at this man! Just look, look at it, like... To keep your health bar not moving, you must press the triangle button 9 times per second for 60 seconds. That's to not lose any Five health, seconds. not O2. To lose O2, you have, like, to maintain your O2 gauge like that, you're looking at, like, 30 presses a second. Maybe a little more. Limes is just... Dude, honestly. And now Tyler's mash is not to, to be screaming. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, Ty Tyler... Mm. Tyler can mash so fast, he triggered the auto-fire detection on Twin Snakes, so... There's that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Before. So, he, he, he mashed so fast that the game thought he was using auto-fire and killed him. Uh, so... I'd be very surprised if I see Tyler lose O2 in the first 35 to 40 seconds. Yeah, um, this is just incredible. Man. Like, it's like, insane, but, like, this goes for so long, alright? Uh, he did like, I apologize O2. about my overexcited behavior, but, like, honestly, dude, like, just look at it. Look at him, he's look staring at Solidus while he does it. It's just, like, what? So, so the reason Tyler, uh, Tyler, Christ. The reason uh, Raichu brings up his staring at Solidus, if you look to the left and look at Snake, it is slightly easier. Yes, just a little bit. And only on PS2, not uh, HTC. But on HTC, who cares? Because torture is like 50. It's Omega. Yeah, tor torture doesn't go for 10 years. I can't do this. I can't do this torture. My hand. Oh, will, like, okay, so Plywood's actually educated us. If you stare oh. at Snake, the, tor the mash is longer. I wonder if the frame mate goes a bit weird because it's a wider view angle you have. Um, Possibly there's more things to render. Yeah, you're getting a bit of lag there and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, we're at the Solidus now, and I mean, Limes would really have to butcher Solidus here for Tyler to come back. It could happen. Yeah, it no, the happen. Tengu 1 death, that Tengu 1 death was... Was bad, but not the end of the game. Yeah, like, um, this fight is, this fight still takes execution, right? It's... Yeah, I mean, Limes can't just piss around here and... You know, act the clown because if he acts the clown, he's gonna lose the run. Yeah, and I mean, anybody can die to Solidus. I mean, I've never died to Solidus on UEX, but I've been bloody close. So we'll just we'll wait with bated breath. All right, so he's gonna bait the kick one two, and then the loop has started. So this is the problem with this loop: is your movement is really it's quite strange almost. You kind of have to like angle, take such a sharp turn that you really shouldn't be able to take to get around to his blind side. Yeah, because so the missing I mean... eye makes makes actually this loop possible. But there's this fight wants you to struggle as much as possible. The camera angle sucks. Oh like, my god! Like right now, it's not so bad. But if you see uh, the the like unavoidable eventuality that Solidus ends up in a corner, like the camera will like. It has a mind of its own. Limes, what are you doing? Um, uh, it's not. It's it's still looping. It's not the most optimal loop, but he hasn't yeah. gone out of control, which is. The and the thing, thing is, as well, like this isn't even like a uh, what's the word? A, a, an exploit. Like this is a mechanic. Being on Solidus's blind side um, means he just doesn't anticipate. Your, he can't see your attacks, basically. Oh, Limes took a kick though. Which oh, means he's gonna is. do the long attack animation. So now we have Tyler here. Um, T uh, Tyler's, Tyler's got the shitty camera. Tyler's so got that camera. He's still body in it, so. Tyler's so used to doing the loop in this camera angle, and yeah, Limes has knocked him over, but it's alright, that's a phase change. So, uh, what Tyler will be doing here is he's counting his punches very precisely because he's. Oh, counting. he also took a hit though. Oh, damn. So Tyler has an exact count of how many uh, shots, how many punches, excuse me. Um, oh, it's faster Tyler's on UEX, it's Sergeant. It's faster on UEX. Um, Tyler is uh, not having a great fight. No, it's, it's neither of them are, if we'll be honest. I mean, let's not take sides here. I mean, neither of them are having a great fight, but uh, at no point has Limes had to equip the BDU to put fire out, so. Yeah, but I mean, all things being considered with Limes, well, you know something I'd rather menu than have Dr. Well, Tyler's, 
tile has been kicked over twice and set on fire, so yeah. it's not gone great. But it's uh, not yeah. Fighter, but I mean, handing limes doesn't fall off the edge here. Which you can do. That's a thing. Oh. You can get back up, but it's, oh, a, it's if you a accidentally thing. press X instead of trying. <laughs> I sound like that's come from experience, right, you? Um, no, it has not for me anyway. But I've I've heard of people accidentally pressing the wrong button. I've 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 accidentally pressed the wrong button before, but not here. All right, so this is going to be the last hit uh, cycle well, for Lyme, and that's over. GG. GG so, uh, to Tyler. Soon. Team t Team Liquid, the uh, gets one back. Um, Our boys. By about thirty seconds. Uh, sadly, 30 seconds I'm too place? I'm too much of a. You need a couple of minutes, but. I'm too much of a pleb to, to run in this marathon, so I, remember I get now. good fun out of doing some commentary for it. We've still got, what, two games left? Are we doing five? Uh, no, we have three. We have MG. No, sorry, yeah, two. We have TTS, and there's nobody who uh, five. No so. one. Nobody wants to. Well, I don't blame them. Screw that game. Um. So, yeah, we're up to... E oldie... Uh, stock footage of New York City I think I that Kojima bought off uh, Shutterstock or something. <laughs> like th this, this has like minimal relevance to anything. So that, that, that was a, those are fantastic runs from guys. I mean, it was very close, very very close. Yeah, like there's a reason these two are the top of the leaderboards in pretty much everything. Um, so. Uh, so Limes came to do what he wanted to do. He came to win, like he was hoping he would. Um, so, well done to Limes, of course. Uh, Team Liquid is coming back into it. <clears throat> Absolutely follow everyone. Absolutely follow Especially everyone. me. Especially me. All right, Limes, uh, Tyler. Tyler. Uh, hey. Why can I hear? Oh, I can hear it from Limes. Oh, I can hear it from Limes. Go nuts! Say a few Go things. Nuts. Say a few like thank uh, your second like, dog for second dog. whatever. That that was incredibly sloppy. So that was. Be the it, was a, Nancy. Be the it was a nervous run out of me for the most part, but we got it done in the end at least. Yo, D -line yeah, well, spin off your yeah, uh, well, game audio. Uh, you're an echo. You're an echo. Yeah, it's a. Uh... I mean, both of yous had some I have to pretty, myself now. pretty costly mistakes in that run. Like, Tyler took yeah. a couple of deaths. You had some issues with Solidus Loop and the Fat Man Loop, though the Fat Man mm -hmm. Loop you recovered from super well. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, really... And also, ladder glitch, question mark? Well, I was... I, I fucked it. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm not screwing with it. I'm just going to go down the normal way. Mm. So you just took the time loss? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, yeah, it's worth um, mentioning as well, like, the race was incredibly close. It Tyler, was. I, I was Tyler watching sat there with, uh, <laughs> Tyler. Tyler sat there with three continues. I mean, mm -hmm. Limes, you didn't have any, so, you know. Right. And I mean, I, I was losing my f shit, dude, when you did the uh, the, le the the fast-ass raise. I was just like, what is going on right now? It just... It I'm just, more comfortable with that on Pal. More comfortable yeah. with that than I am with a bra. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I think my I think my favorite part was Emma Bump. So. Yeah, I couldn't uh, believe you did it. Yeah. So, can you just do a do me a favor here, Lions, and confirm something? You picked up the PSG one T, assumingly because Emma can't hold her breath as long. Yeah, on you, Pal? You, you you need the breath on Pal. So I yeah, that's what we were. Thinking. That was the easiest place to get it because I did a run I think yesterday, and I she went way too far down. You don't have to get a breath in any other version except this version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. We're like, because we were, we were both like, he's not going to pick up the PSG one T. I mean, you've been talking about it since you know last week. How you're like, if you're behind, the hell with it, you know. Um, obviously, team, in the yeah. end, obviously in the end, obviously uh, in the end, not using the swiping <sighs> is what pulls you ahead there. Um, Tyler is drinking every drop of hydration he can get. Tyler, talk to us. I don't want to talk. It was bad. It wasn't bad. I mean, <laughs> bad. I mean, for God's sake, dude, you had three continues and you were literally second behind. Ugh. Tyler, D-Lines had no continues. 
you know. I I tell you this: I if you had, stream. if you had decided to not go PSG one TVM two, you would have probably won that. Yeah, um, over. I don't know, but the rays were a decent separation. Though. Oh no! Oh wait, never mind. It's the stream. I literally thought your credits froze them, the limes. <laughs> like you care less if they do, so. I didn't even know. Can you even get that on PS2? Yeah, I've gotten it once. He's gotten it once. I haven't gotten it at all. But yeah, no, it was... It was a good race. I mean, obviously... Yeah, it was back and forth. It was mm -hmm. very back and forth. I mean, honestly, like, at some points we were just like, what's good? Like, we didn't know. We weren't even actually sure who was ahead because it was that close. I mean, in the Shell 2 core, you guys were literally, like... Right on top of one. No. Yeah, I was watching the stream. Like, I wasn't listening to the commentary, but I was watching the stream, just seeing like where the pace was at. And uh, there's like codec yeah. pages away from each other, and like yeah, what was like, going on, dude. There, there were like you guys entered uh, president about half a second apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vam was finished, literally. Yeah, and we both got the the fast and, kick end too. So yeah, but Tyler got the better punch cycles. Yeah, so I, really safe. I play. Yeah, I played safe in races. Yeah, so. so Tyler went with the eight punch cycle, whereas like like. But five, I didn't have the six. balls to Emma bump. I was thinking about it because I was doing it in in a practice, and I'd never I mean, gotten to freeze on on a PS2. But whenever I saw that I had a slight lead, I figured there's no reason to. I just mm -hmm. kept on going. No, I mean, if I were you in that situation, I wouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think if I was, like just... behind, then yeah, then yeah. for sure, I'd I definitely go for the bump. Yeah, I, I think I always will on PS2 and PC. Just don't do it on HD collection. Yeah, just don't play HD collection. Right. Also, the interesting thing of uh, both of you missing the Olga loop. Now, Lime, how did you, you miss it? Though? to fight it. Uh, like... Both missed it the same way. You both missed it well... the exact same way. Well, mine missed because I'm a potato and I didn't get the headshot because she successfully looped, but I missed the first headshot. No, mine just didn't loop. Yeah. Yeah, mine got um, the loop successful, but I just missed, and then I just reset the so, uh Yeah, so, like, Tyler, you reset, but you came out ahead at Olga because Lions just had a casual Olga. Yeah, yeah I, like, just, I, I went for no continue, hoping I'd get a shot off early, and yeah. I didn't, so... I really... Yeah. I, I was kind of starting to wonder, you know, if, uh... Like... The, se the second <laughs> she went full left, I was like, oh, boy. I was wondering, like, had Roy mixed up the feeds and he was showing us some OHN or something? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> it was uh, I mean when I saw her hit the tarp that was it like I was like god above help us like what I, 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 it's funnier still Iridescence and I are just like so we have D-Limes and Tyler you know two of the best runners and then you go and look at someone like that it's like yeah two of the best runners only in races only in races yeah, it's yeah. it's true though. I mean, I can't think of a race, a UEX race, that I've done where I haven't died of. It's like I get there and I just get so stressed about because it's a one hit kill. You get so stressed that you just you just die. It's like fucking hell, dude. Um, uh, it was a great race though. I'll I'll. I mean, at no point we were able to just sit there and uh, <laughs> at no point we we're able to sit here and just say yeah. Tyler has it, D Limes has it, it's in the bag. I mean, it was constant back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> and I mean, even when one of you was ahead, it was by mere seconds at best. I mean, the smallest thing, one way or the other, is what uh what uh separated you guys. I mean, for the entirety of Mom disposal, Tyler was ahead. It was just that annoying continuous instrument B that pushed Limes back in front. But then of course Fat man came and limes the loop just wouldn't cooperate. I think he just went a little bit too far back. Um, so yeah, it's like probably. it's it's just these little things that kind of always kept things interesting because limes went in. You went into fat man with fairly considerable lead. But yeah, because he loop, took a continue uh, on the way to fortune. Yes, in Struppy. Uh, yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, then you missed the loop, but somehow. You managed to have a really bloody good fat man fight and still stay a couple of seconds. So it's like, yeah. At no, like I really, uh, you know, I. Oh, I thank you, I Tyler. Oh. We 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 could almost have called it and said, look, oh well, there goes that lead. But no, it's like no. Why would it be? Because, can, it's just MGS two. Really, that's all it comes down to. 
Um, yeah, like it's. Thank it's, you, Limes. Like, you made us up two minutes. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the decision to skip body armor by Tyler, like I know you don't pick it up anymore. And a one thirty four oh two for limes, which is a so very like, impressive time on PS two. Yeah, so the decision to skip body armor, mm -hmm. um, that got you killed. That wasn't great. Yeah, and then uh, of course this the the very next attempt, I get it successful. You've got I've it been perfect. yeah. It, I've been trying that to get that works. fight down to a T, and it's, it seems like in the worst scenarios, you will always get a continue there. Well, no matter how well you play. Like, I'm still trying to fully figure out that fight, because I want to do two stun body armor, because if I'm trying to bop D-Limes on the board, I kind of need to at this point. Well, D-Limes picks up body armor, so... Exactly, so I need to skip it, so that way I can... Well, I, I don't know. Just I think... Risky raise. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I was gonna say... That's next. <laughs> so, so that you're 40, 41 seconds apart. Um, between the two years. So Tyler is a 134.43. Lines is a 134.2. My PB is a 133.28, if anyone's curious on that. Well, there's oh, also yeah, like... Apache. Yeah. They don't count the credits in... We are not counting the credits. Um, the last head of all it is, yeah. And obviously, right. well, like, uh... Lag, basically. <laughs> However, as, uh, as much as everyone loved MGS2, I'm sure, it's time we to make to way go. for the interactive movie that is MGS3. <laughs> I'll go grab some popcorn. So, so we're going to go grab some popcorn and uh, we're going to enjoy like half an hour that is purely just skipping cutscenes. So Metal, I'm gonna, so Metal Gear Speedrunners yeah. is just theater? Well, yeah. I mean, I would, it's like, I would, I would do that, except we literally have no one from the MGS3 crew up up in here yet, so uh, I can't really hand it over. Well, so, um... Well, no, it's Plywood and Joe We're Star. We're here. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, well, you don't do. So you are here. Don't be so rude. I rude. I entered the rude. room and your distance is like, hmm. Well, he's not Nobody wrong here. about it being a movie. Yeah. Nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody here. Good, well, good luck, guys. Okay. Anyhow, okay. Awesome. thanks again uh, to Tyler and Limes. Um, thanks to Iridescence for doing this with me. And vice versa, I'm sure. Uh, uh all right. So, MGS3. This Old is man, MGS4, by the way, same yeah, crap. MG, MGS four. <laughs> it's MGS three plus one. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, it is ten thirteen in the morning, and I haven't slept yet. So please excuse me. Um, so it's MGS three plus one. All right. Up next. Old, old dog. What, what, what is it? Old dog. New tricks. Yada yeah. yada yada. Uh, right. Good luck. Good luck, guys, and uh, go team Liquid. Yeah, I'm liquid. Liquid. Alright. Bye. Bye, guys. Alright, good luck. Bye, fellas. Okay, well, after that uh, wonderful showing from Tyler and D Limes, hi, I'm Plywood, and with me is Joseph Joestar 316. And he runs this game. And I don't, but <laughs> don't be worried. Even though I haven't played this game in 10 years, I have a list of notes provided to me from the wonderful Sergeant Silent. So I will not be talking out of my you-know-what. I will actually have some information for all of you as we go into this Metal Gear Solid 4. It's okay, it's just a movie. New Game Plus run. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing fantastic. I'm just back in town, ready to catch some some more speed runs. Especially like you just said, a, a neck and neck race of T line and D limes of Tyler. Well done to both of them. But now it looks like we're about to get started with some Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriots. That's right. So right off the bat, you may be wondering why they're using a save. That's so we can. Also go New Game Plus and to skip the uh, interactive commercials at the start. <laughs> so, or should I say non-interactive? So we're going straight into the Middle East, Act 1. Now, it should be noted that there probably is going to be some major strat variation between the two runners because historically, Sergeant has been a New Game Plus runner and Sparty has been a New Game runner. So it's going to be pretty neat to see what kind of uh, approaches these two gentlemen are going to be taking. 
and I kind of fallen in the middle where I'm a multi-segment uh, New Game Plus runner. But it's there. There are some similarities between running this single versus running it multi, as opposed to New Game and New Game Plus. But particularly with New Game Plus, like you just said, it, it bypasses the two and a half minutes of watching commercials, which is why it's best to just start off with this save rather than bore everybody with the commercials. Yeah, we like the commercials, but not on repeat over and over again. <laughs> so that that ends the uh, little intro before Act 1, and we're going to go straight into the first act. And now coming up is an area called Red Zone, which if you run the boss extreme or watch the boss extreme, you know that it is a infamous absolutely infamous area but it's not quite as bad on this difficulty okay so as, as you can see sparty went for a gunshot at the start to create this caution on normal runs like on tbe you would opt for knocking over a pot which both do the same thing but the gunshot is slightly faster which leads up to sticking up that guard as you just saw from sparty it's just a quick way to bypass a cutscene with the apc and just makes things faster. But it looks like Silent now just got caught trying to now get out. So it looks like he's going to have a rough go trying to get out of here. But it seems like he might be able to make it. And now Sparty also just being caught past the first zone here, which may have been intentional. But given that it's just a big boss hard and not necessarily a big boss run for TBE, you know, it's okay to get spotted at certain times yeah if you're going for foxhound rank on big boss hard you're actually afforded two alerts mm -hmm. so you actually can't afford that now you may be noticing that they weren't running around with the ak 102 and that's because uh you actually run slower if you have that two-handed weapon out so they run around with that uh stun. yeah you'll have to notice oh i'm sorry go ahead no no, no you're good uh, like, you'll have to notice that they'll run with either a knife or a pistol, because like Plywood was just saying, running with a two-handed weapon like an AK, a shotgun, or grenade launcher, or a sniper, anything two-handed is going to slow your movement down significantly over the course of the run, as opposed to being unarmed, or most likely with a pistol. And so we're going to be seeing the big boss mask, the true terror of his face makes everyone cower in fear and this is a very key element of uh, new game plus runs you can only get this mask if you get the big boss emblem on the boss extreme but it's a very useful item indeed everyone just gets terrified and it makes your lines a lot smoother a lot easier yeah, very similar to what you just seen in MGS3 earlier with the Patriot. The big boss mask changes the way you play the game significantly. As opposed to something in a new game where it changes your strategy, how to approach a room entirely. Whereas with equipping the big boss mask, as you can just see, they're just running on through without a care in the world. You know, as it terrifies anyone nearby that sees you and you go through, most likely not being spotted. And... Similarly to other games, you'll be seeing the runners roll into load zones. There's some neat little uh, over overlap between the various games, and that is one of them. Now, it should be noted that uh, a lot of people get a little bit scared from New Game Plus running because of the big boss mask. And yeah, it is a bit challenging to get that big boss emblem, but you got to remember that... MGS4 was designed around Big Boss Emblem being achieved with multi-segment. You can literally save on every room in the game. So once you get past a couple of the little tricky areas, it's not too bad as I understand it. As you just noticed just now with Sparty, like as he rolls into that little mini cutscene of part of that ceiling collapse, is the reason why they do that is to bypass... Not really the cutscene itself, but normally when you approach it, it triggers that event where Snake is kind of stunned. He can't really move, but if you roll at a precise moment before that cutscene triggers, it allows you to kind of keep crab walking so that as that cutscene ends, you just move right away rather than being paused. 
And how like, much would you say that saves, Joseph? Like, a few seconds? Um, if you get it perfectly on your first try, it probably saves you, like, maybe two to three seconds. And it seems like they both got it on the first go around, because, like you say, it can save you that little difference. And yeah, the little bit of differences can make a huge mark, especially in a race environment. Those little variations can help a lot. And like you were just saying earlier about the big boss category in this game itself, I generally find this game, despite the contrary, yeah, it's majority interactive movie with some gameplay, but the requirements for big boss are a lot more friendlier than you would expect in terms of games like MGS1, MGS2, or Foxhound, which would be the equivalent to something like MGS3, where in this game, you're granted the liberty to save as much as you want over the course of what I believe is five hours and under, which in my opinion is very generous. Very giving, yeah. I think the the flip side of that is that they really, like, you know, they don't really intend on you doing single segment for any of the games in the series, but they really didn't want you doing single segment Big Boss in this game. <laughs> so no, not a strat you here, firing to uh, knock out those mines uh, over on Sparty's screen, just to get them out of the way. Yeah, it just saves you the convenience of just not having to run by them. You don't have to use an assault rifle, your pistol, you just, you get a very wide splash damage range of your grenade launcher, which, throughout this course of this run, you're not going to really, really using lethal rounds on other things other than mines like that. Okay, so it looks like Sparty has now just gotten to what's going to be the frog gauntlet coming up after, you know, regrouping with Meryl's team. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this area, Advent Palace. This is a really interesting part of the run um, because we have to deal with the uh, Rat Patrol. So mm -hmm. we have Ed, Jonathan, and Johnny. Of course, there's two Johns on, this, on the team. And how they operate really does make a difference in terms of the pace of this area. So you might be seeing uh, Sparty and S Sergeant interact with them, punch them, just to speed them up as we move move on. And here you can see again the benefit of having the big boss mask, which as you get close to a frog, they just they just pass out. They Even they can't stand the horrific sight of the big boss mask. Yep, as I was saying right there, you see Sparty shooting Jonathan. That's the guy with the exclamation mark haircut. Uh, shooting him again to manipulate their speed. Yeah, because as you'll notice throughout this uh, this palace, the encounters are mostly proximity-based, where as you get closer, enemies come in, or if Meryl's team is in a certain spot, enemies will, will kind of fall in. And if you delay that just by a, a, you know, just a moment, it allows you as the player to get in to set up, which as you saw at the beginning, he plants a, a sleep gas satchel at the base of the stairs, which is to stop incoming frogs from coming from behind. And as you'll see, he'll plant another one very soon, which is, again, for frogs that will come in. Yeah, you know, when you play this casually, it, it definitely feels a bit overwhelming, especially when you get into the palace proper. But that manipulation of your AI teammates really does give you that room to work around uh, the encounter itself. Yeah, you'll also be seeing some significant usage of the uh, MGL-140, or just grenade launcher, as I call it. Um, you often use it with stuns. It gives you that quick knockout from a distance, saves you the trouble of trying to snipe or pistol them. And once again, you're just seeing more usage of the sleep gas satchel, which is by far one of the most convenient items you can have um, throughout um, either New Game, but especially with New Game Plus. And you can also see he's doing more manipulation with Johnny, which engages uh, what normally would be a little funny cutscene of him trying to hold it in, if if you get what I'm meaning. You know, because Johnny and his stomach kind of don't agree with each other at times. But by doing that little manipulation, it triggers that event early, so it prevents uh, Meryl's unit from being held up in that corner, and it advances them in the encounter faster. 
It's worthwhile noting as well with the frogs, uh, you can't actually damage them while they're in the air. You need to have them either planted on a wall or walking around. So if you ever see them kind of just waiting for the frogs to stop jumping, that's why. Yeah, because like even though you can shoot them leading up to it, but during that animation jump, there's iframes to consider. You know, so a lot of times, like like Plywood just said, you're often seeing them wait for them to either line up for a shot or line up for a big boss mask um, usage. I just like the idea of, like, Old Snake throwing the big boss mask at all of them. Like, bam, and then they just, it's like, it's like a projectile and they just get terrified. <laughs> just throw it in a room and clear it. <laughs> it's like a grenade. Yeah. They big see boss the mask grenade. on the ground, they're like, oh my god! <laughs> no! <laughs> What's with your face? So this is a little unskippable cutscene of uh, Johnny mm -hmm. clearing the lasers. Yeah, as much manipulation as you can try to do, this is just one of those cutscenes you just have to sit through. But at, at the very least, you can optimize what it will take to get up there. So here he's just doing more manipulation with with uh with Johnny or Jonathan this time. It's so confusing, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It's like you got a Johnny and a Jonathan. I mean hell, I've been running this game for years and I still can't even get it right. Poop boy and bold boy. Oh, yeah, God. there you go. <laughs> also, I don't know if anyone's uh, ever said this, but the the satchels, they kind of look like dishes when he's just like holding them. I, they I they really that. do. They <laughs> look like he's got like a little little dinner dish. Man, Meryl does not care about those darts. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if he was just kind of buying for time or if he's just kind of sending her a little, uh, a little love tap there. <laughs> The good thing the Rat Patrol doesn't care about the mask, though. That would uh, be a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So a nice little thing about this game, since Codec, we're, we're seeing a whole different lot of uh, Codecs and radios throughout this whole relay race. In MGS1, you got to mash through them. In MGS2, you got to do a double tap. Same in Twin Snakes. MGS3, you have to hold a button down. This game, just press a button once and then it's done. Which is a, you know, that's a nice little thing. You don't really have to worry too much. Yeah, it's it simplified over the, the course of the series. Yeah, because I'll tell you what, I mean, mashing those codecs in MGS1 is... It, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Especially if you're not used to it like me. Yeah, that is a, a skill that is annoying to have to deal with. But in certain games in the series, it is not a big deal, including... Uh, <laughs> GS4. Oh, I was just kind of admiring a uh, silence, uh, somewhat manipulation of Johnny, or if he was just doing that for fun, just hitting him at the doorway there. Because again, he he doesn't care as much as the the unit does either. Okay, so now it looks like Sparty's doing a smoke lineup here, where he's covering a group of soldiers on the left, which just briefly we saw him, but passed out due to the big boss mask, and you can see him doing it again. Because the beauty of the mask is, like I said, they may see you from a distance, but as you get closer to them, it just puts them out of the fight just like that. Okay. You know, yeah, screaming it's and like terror. It's kind of like they see the figure in the distance, but once they, <laughs> once the smoke clears and the fog of war is over, they get terrified, mm -hmm. and that's it. So. Yeah, there's actually one thing I'd like to add about smoke grenades in this game over the course of other games, which I think this was the game that started, or actually, no, I'm sorry, MGS3 started off with smokes. But smokes in this game in particular are very, very good. They do a lot for you, aside from what would be the obvious during like a casual run. But aside from blocking line of sight, it interrupts them for quite a long time. And not only that, but you can stack it, meaning you could throw one smoke, they cough for three to four times while not seeing you, and you can pro approach them while they're doing that, but you can throw another smoke on top of it to extend it even further. Whereas in games like MGS3, the coughing animation is brief, 
but you're mostly using it for line of sight manipulation, not necessarily to, you know, keep them out of the area, so to speak. But in this game, it does both very well. All right, so it looks like Sparty's just about to get out of Act 1. Yep, going through that Millennium Park area. I liked his, uh, he used a neat little trick by uh, hitting a guard with a Trank Dart, causing him to turn around and then see the mask, causing him to knock out. Very cool little uh, uh, AI manipulation with the shot. Let's see, so he's and, got a 1734 for Act 1. You not know, bad. Was, oh, was, well, at pretty... least I think it's not bad. Uh, I mean, it, Don't it, it, ask it looked... me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it looked pretty smooth. I mean, just given, yeah, it's a, it's a new game plus. He's using big boss mass to his fullest extent. You know, it's pretty pretty good so far. I haven't really seen any uh, major mistakes, and well, mainly nobody has died yet. But the nice thing about this game as well, as you can see, Silent has uh, rations equipped, which in categories like big boss, you're not allowed to use recovery. But given that they're both doing... Um, you know, big bus, hard new game plus, you know, really anything goes. Um, you know, rations are pretty helpful and plent and plentiful. Unlike other games like MGS2 where, um, you know, on extreme, I think you maybe get like one or two throughout the entire game and oh boy. Okay, I wonder if Silent's gonna get out of this. Okay, he's got past the worst part of it. There's like eight <laughs> guys yeah, yeah. just <laughs> staring him down. Yeah, he's got quite the melt welcome committee to get out. But the nice thing about the mask again is that although, yes, it's terrifying, but the the range of effectiveness is, in my opinion, it's pretty generous. You know, it's not like you have to be within CQC range for it to work, but you just have to be within maybe like CQC and a half of, you know, grabbing range. Okay, we're going into the first room of Act 2, and this is a really tough room, Cove Valley. Mm -hmm. You see Sparty throwing a smoke grenade to distract those guys and then just run along the path. It looks pretty good. Yeah, and it looks like Silent just finished. He was at 18.04, so he's roughly about 30 seconds, uh, give or take, behind Sparty. And again, you're seeing the excellent use of smoke grenades to create the, the opening for him to get through. And they're still screaming in, in terror. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you get used to quite a bit if you use the the big boss mask. Okay, so coming up here is an area that on a casual basis is not fun to play. It's often what I refer to in my runs as the steps of hell. Meaning that it's a lot of steps to climb, but the big thing is that you're more likely to get spotted here than anywhere else in Act 2. Simply because you go up one step you get spotted. You go up another step, you get spotted by someone else. But the beauty of New Game Plus is that you can get spotted as much as you want, and the big boss mask will more or less kind of pave the way for you to get through without losing your mind. <laughs> That's a great little screenshot of Roy Campbell right there, <laughs> staring at the ground. It's like, yep, I'm, I'm looking at something here. No, I'm looking at not you. Because you're terrifying. So I'm thinking from here on out, it's just going to be uh, just a casual stroll through the, you know, the the forest here, just to get to the the power station, which is a uh, another big significant part of Act Two, which rather on a casual versus a, a speed run basis, it's a pretty significant area to optimize. And it looks like Silent is just about to start off. Um, his entryway into yeah, the village. Yeah, he's doing it a little bit different here. I think he's going to be uh, taking the more loud approach. Oh, he's so operator. He... No, no, I think he just equipped that to speed himself up and then just That's... run through the, the crew. Yeah, so it looks like to me he was equipping his items, which, again, you'll see quite a bit throughout the run is that they, they really try to optimize everything they do, including what items they carry, and when they carry them. And it looks like they will equip what they need for not only what's ahead, but for the rest of the act. You know, so it looks like he's equipping the railgun and the 50 cal for quite possibly things coming up later in the run, aside from what you're seeing. And it looks like Sparty is now just getting through the power station, which, thanks to the magical powers of the big boss mask, you just run through that war zone, and no one, <laughs> no one misses you.
question. How does this run work? Big boss mask? Answer, yes. <laughs> yep, that's it. You just equip the big boss mask and you just get your best running shoes and just stroll on through. I mean, Smash hopefully I'm dying. Times, you get a little yeah. out of breath. You know, I gotta say, the big boss mask is probably the most overpowered a new game plus item in the entire series. I would also agree in addition to which I don't know if they're going to be using it anytime soon given the conditions of the run, but the solar gun is also a very powerful non-lethal weapon which takes out most enemies and one full charge shot with the exception of a few bosses, a few certain types of enemies. And you also notice here that the stress meter is usually something in a casual one that you want to keep down because when your stress meter goes up above 50, the stamina meter starts to decline, which below 50% will affect your aim as well as your rate of recovery for HP when you need it. But again, since it's New Game Plus, you have the syringe already in hand from your run before. So when that stress meter goes up, pop the syringe. It gives you to full stamina for its usage. And you can stack this as long as you need to, which it looks like they're going to be using this quite a few times throughout Act uh, 2 and possibly later throughout the run here. You know, the other reason why the uh, solar gun is so overpowered is that it brings a light to the big boss mask and uh, that makes people more scared. Mm-hmm. More it's like, yeah, you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's not the, the sunlight cry of charging the gun, I mean, you know it's coming. <laughs> All right, nice so headshot from uh, Sparty there on that guard. Very yeah, key was. to get those uh, nice shots and vaulting over the little barrier there. Get that nice line, not having to run around as we go into the mansion. Another uh, big fight scene, as far as the uh, the act is concerned. If I'm thinking of the right area, at least. Yeah, the Vista Mansion has quite a few approaches to it, which, um, given Sparty is now just starting to do his, it looks like he triggered a early caution, which creates that uh, misdirect, you know, for a guard to look at him, you know, for that big boss mask. And as you can see, now he just triggered the mini event of the bulldozer to come in and open up the gate. So at this point, he's just going to pop another syringe because as you notice, without that syringe at 80% stress, that stamina meter is going to drain until you either get it below or you just pop another syringe. Now, worthwhile mentioning that Sergeant at this point only has one ration left. I don't know if there are easy rations to pick up throughout the route, but he has pretty low health, so... Yeah, I think he had a... Well, given that he did his Act 2 intro a little differently from Sparty's, which gave him less of a, I guess, uh, aggressive entrance, which gave him less opportunity to get hit, uh, whereas Sparty, or, or, or we're silent, went in for the, uh, you know, the loud and proud approach, which, as you notice, y you do have to get close, but up to that, I mean, yeah, you're going to take quite a few hits. And there may be some rations as backups that both of these guys are aware of, of where to pick them up, but you do want to try to avoid getting them if you must. You know, because sometimes your backup it goes out of your way just to keep your run alive. Alright, but it looks like Sparty made it through the mansion um, relatively in one piece. His rations are still intact. His stress meter is now going down. And Silent is having... Uh, quite a bit of a ways to get through. All right, now he's now getting to the mansion. So Sparty heading into the second frogs sequence, followed by octopus. There are going to be four waves on Big Boss Hard. There's a starting wave and then three afterwards. And the whole idea is that the movement's going to bait the frogs to going into a specific lo location, get them all bunched up, take them out easy peasy. And of course, that big boss mask may factor into this. Yeah, 
Yeah, also to note, Silent opted to do an alternative route to get to the mansion, whereas you saw Sparty take the 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 high approach through the prison camp, whereas Silent went through a another military camp, followed by going towards the right, closer to the bulldozer. Now, both will trigger the event, but I believe going towards the right may trigger the event slightly faster as opposed to going towards the left. It's one of the neat things about uh, a few of the rooms in uh, MGS4 and Act 1 and Act 2. They're so open that there really are some variations that you can take in your approach on your lines. Yeah, it's almost like you, you almost want to convince yourself that it's like there's always more than one way to clear through a, a room. Like there's always like there may be the obvious way, but there's always another way to um, to get there. And, and it looks like uh, Silent opted to get the backup ration, which is not necessarily out of its way. It's on the table. It's on the way out. Um, given that, yeah, he's kind of living the uh, the dangerous life right now on the, the scarce rations. And now Sparty's now starting up his fight with Laughing Octopus, which he's opting to start with the Railgun, which, as you can see, fully charged, does quite a bit of damage. A lot more than I thought it would, honestly. Pretty, pretty powerful thing. And good thing is that this fight, as long as you know the route as far as where Octopus is going to hide, uh, this is pretty much scripted. You know, Octopus tries to trick you, but uh, we're better than that. We know we know the tricks up her <laughs> sleeve. Yeah, the the railgun kind of accelerates the hide and seek um, tactic, as you would, because that's essentially what the fight is until she reveals herself. Which, given yes, there are predictable places where she will be. Um, that gets the constant is that she'll always start in the same place. And given that her HP influences where she will hide, or rather where she's likely to hide, and given that you trigger her to 50% quite early, will trigger a little mini event of Octopus pretending to be Otacon's little Mark II unit. And it looks like Silent, uh, hopefully once he gets through this in a frog encounter, will attempt to do the same. Now the beauty is out of the beast, and you've never seen an MGS4 run before. You're probably going to be mad if you've never, <laughs> you didn't know about this strategy. You just go prone, uh, and they go prone, and it's a uh, pretty easy shooting at that point. Good use yeah, of the that's... solar gun to just <laughs> decimate her uh, st stamina meter. Yeah, the whole advantage of getting the uh, beauty to lie on the floor with you is that it mitigates the uh, evasion because uh, normally if you fight them standing up they're very likely to dodge I've lost quite a bit of time trying to make it work with the solar gun standing up until I um, seen the strategy of lying down where as you start the fight you lay down just two times which triggers her to uh, lay down on the floor with you which now she can no longer dodge um, granted, you t you pace your shots properly with starting with the solar gun because it takes 50% off a fully charged shot, followed up with either the MK22 pistol. Sometimes you can use a shotgun V ring, but MK22 has a faster reload um, rate versus the shotgun, um, and it just makes the fight um, in the second round a lot easier. It, it just eliminates all the headaches of man, how could she dodge that? Because, <laughs> like I said, I've lost quite a bit of precious seconds to wondering how she could dodge uh, those certain shots. So, if you played this game casually, you'll know that this area that Sparty's in is a whole mess of foot footprint trails that you have to figure out where Naomi went. Uh, luckily, um, as speedrunners, we already know the path, so that doesn't matter. The puzzle is uh, irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, as long as you know where to go, it's there's, there's not really a whole lot going on here that's not already uh, taken into account. Okay, so it looks like Silent now just finished up with... Eh, I'd probably say a little more than I would like for HP, but it gets the job done. Which, he will now attempt to do the... Uh, you know, get them on the, the, the ground. 
with what would be, I would expect to be what Sparty did with the solar gun, followed up with an, oh, oh wow, Sparty took a ride with the mine there. Oh, interesting enough. So Silent opted to do a lethal finish for um, the beauty two phase of uh, Laughing Octopus, which the 50 caliber rifle, in addition to items like the solar gun, is one of your best friends to have to carry into battle. Solar gun is your best line lethal approach, and in my opinion, the 50 caliber is your best lethal weapon you can have right next to the rail gun. You know, it's a fast fire rate. It fires 50 caliber rounds, easy to reload. Uh, Railgun does have similar firepower strength to the, the 50 caliber, but it takes some time to charge it up. Um, the ammo... Uh, the ammo rate co uh, conversions are a little different from just having your typical 50 cal, but it does get the job done. All right, so now it looks like Sparty is now just starting the first auto-scroller segment or interactive movie, as some may call it, <laughs> of the Act 2, which is the APC Escape with Drevin. Now, this is a point-and-click adventure game, okay? <laughs> we're, we're doing some strong uh, clicking on these guards. These zombos and the uh, little robots that come in. All right, so you'll notice that he's focused firing on the power suits and not the zombies, and simply put is that the zombies are... A distraction. They don't really do anything to harm harm you or your run. Unless if they climb up, which that front one looks like he's trying to do. But I'm sure he'll uh he'll get the message later to that there's no uh, there's no hitchhikers allowed on this APC. Wow, he's still hanging on there. No free rides. <laughs> no free rides on the uh Drebin vehicle. I'm gonna step away for a quick moment. I'm sure Joseph has this covered. Oh, believe you me. It's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, so this is the second segment of the APC chase. Now, you'll notice that this gecko, which, interesting enough, he chooses to blow it up, but in other runs, when you're doing this for TBE, you'll often find it where you purposely let that gecko hit your APC. Now, you might be wondering, well, why in the world would you ever do that? You know, you don't want your APC to get damaged, but during this moment where you're just standing still blowing up geckos left and right, the zombies down below are trying to climb up to you so, one strategy to not deal with the zombies climbing up and addressing them is to let the Kecko kick your APC, which will kick them off at the cost of damage, which in most cases is worth it. But it looks like Sparty got through, no problems. Let's see, Silent is still on his way. It looks like he's coming up towards the end of his path adventure to following Vamp. Uh, so now he's coming up to the APC segment. Okay, so now in this area is the world's strongest gate. I kid you not. You can put in as many 50 caliber rifles as you think it's required, and I will tell you it, it, it requires more. And more. And more. I don't know. It's just one of those funny things that y you kind of... You don't really question it in the moment, but afterwards, you're like, man, how in the world is that gate so strong? But as you can see, he just takes his time shooting the gate because, after all, you got nothing else to do but shoot the gate, as well as Otacon reminds you quite a bit throughout the game to shoot the gate, as if that's not the thing that you were already doing. But as you can see, he, he addresses his attention on the gate. He ignores the MGS APC tank. He ignores the zombies, and he's on his way. Silent is now just starting. His APC segment, which again, focusing on those power suits, they're blocking the way out. Just ignore everything else. And it looks like he's got one more behind that corner. Okay, and he looks like he cleaned that up fairly, fairly well. Alright, so now, in here, it's just gonna be more geckos to blow up, nothing unusual for beginning just blow up those two turn the turret around blow that one up and then there's gonna be an mgs tank coming up from the rear which you can just quickly take out um a lot more easily than the gate you know ironically enough it takes a uh, you know millions of rounds to take out one gate but only just a sharp burst to take out that apc mgs tank
All right, so now Silent's starting his... Oh, what's this now? So, okay, so unlike Sparty, he did have to address that one PMC that climbed up on the tank. It's kind of one of those random events that you have to plan for. Given if you're fast enough, you don't have to address it. Life is good. But sometimes geckos don't go down as quickly as you like. You know, as you can see, there's even a guy right behind him. Oh, boy. All right, so thankfully, Drebin uh, hit the gas soon enough. You know, and the PMC just falls right off. All right, and it looks like Sparty is now concluding the APC chase. Even with Atacon cheering him on. All right, and that concludes the APC chase or, or escape segment for Sparty. Uh, looked pretty smooth, honestly. I didn't really see anything major um, that slowed his run down. I mean, he didn't run into any zombies on uh, his turret. You know, didn't have to really address anything that already wasn't addressed. And now he makes his way into the marketplace where, you know, pardon uh, the puns, but... Or not necessarily the puns, but my uh, my ripoff of uh, Hollywood famous lines. But it's get to the chopper as uh, Otacon and crew are waiting for you to get out. But once again, you just walk through the marketplace. You know, you get one gecko that's blocking your way. Which, if you time it right, which he just did, you can dodge the uh, 360 sweep. On TBE, I refer to it as a 360 sweep of death because on TBE, one hit from a gecko. Or a lot of things will kill you, but on Big Boss Hard, with a ration, you can survive it. But he got out of there pretty smooth. Nice, nice, well timed uh, roll into a cutscene. Gives you iframes. And now he begins his adventure into the uh, most exciting act, in my opinion, which is Act 3. And uh, as he begins, I think you'll understand why it's the, uh, you know, runner's favorite. <laughs> Totally not uh, in the most sarcastic way. But it basically involves following a resistance member around for quite a bit of time. It, it's it's a slow part to the run, but it does have its share of optimizations to kind of help expedite the process. Okay, so it looks like Silent still has quite a bit of ways to go, but he'll be done soon enough. Probably like in the next, uh, I don't know, like two to three minutes, he'll be out. <laughs> Man, that, that would be something to hear uh, some uh, plywood ASMR for act add some a little more excitement to uh, what's potentially uh, for some, including myself, uh, the not so exciting. All right, so one thing you'll notice off the bat here is you keep your disguise, you know, because as you noticed, um, disguises are a good part of the run when they're used properly, but in this case, you keep the disguise you're provided with for Act 3, and he changes his face camo to something other than Old Snake or Young Snake. And the reason for changing the face camo disguise is so that the PMC guards are not alerted to you. You know, contrary to belief, but as long as you show up as anyone other than under, uh, Old or Young Snake, the guards could not care. You know, they just see you as what looks like, you know, one of the, the big... Uh, one of the bosses, uh, Laughing Octopus, as a matter of fact, you know, who, you know, they just killed just quite a bit ago. But to those PFC guards, I think they were just kind of kept out of the loop. But as far as they're concerned, you know, they don't really care. Just change your face cam disguise and life is good. Uh, but it looked like at the start, he did another misdirect with his pistol, which I believe is to help influence the uh, pathway uh, behavior for the resistance member, which you just see there, because normally uh, the resistance member starts his um, pathway to the right, he slows down for a bit, looks around, he goes to the left, and then he goes to a corner, which is kind of slow. So my understanding is that doing that little misdirect, which causes the um, resistance member to alternate his path to a different location, because he doesn't quite react well to, you know, ricochets as most understandably, I mean, I mean, even those guys cannot, you know, can't stand it, and they're and they're they're sobbing. I mean, look at them. See, I mean, like that. See, like that that guard right there. 
That's how I feel trying to, to run Act 3 for so many years. I'm just on the ground sobbing, saying, Why, Kojima? Why? Why did you do this to us? Why did you give us this monstrosity known as Act 3? <laughs> but for the most part, as you're misdirecting and, you know, taking out some guards, because, uh, you know, for the most part, you are just following him around, but the... Um, on a casual basis, yeah, you are required to take out some guards to help the resistance member pass through. But quite literally, as you can see, Sparty, he's just yeah, he's just kind of following them. And and you know, even though the resistance member kind of checks around his shoulder every two seconds, and I mean literally every two seconds, he doesn't have a care in the world that there's just somebody um uh, just kind of following right behind him. But interestingly to note that some people might believe, well, you know, could you go ahead of the resistance member, clear his way for him, and then he just walks on his own? And my understanding is that it's not true because his movement, not only is it environment-based, meaning if there's guards in his way, he stops or he alternates his path, but if you're too far away from the resistance member, as much as you want to get away from him, you still have to be close by to trigger his movement to go forward. And so now it looks like Silent is, or, or what Sparty is doing here, and he's removing these guards out of sight, which, again, is part of the AI manipulation for the Resistance member when he, normally if he sees a body on the ground, unconscious, it kind of gives him a, a brief pause, which lasts more, um, I would want to say, like, for every event, maybe it's like five to six seconds, you have to kind of wait for him to look, and then he kind of, you know, stabilizes, and he starts moving again. But if you move him out of the way before he gets there, you just bypass that, you know, sudden shock that he's like, oh man, there's just two guards lying there. You know, because like I said, every bit of second you can squeeze out uh, in this game is worth it. You know, despite how um, dreadfully slow it may seem. Okay, so once again, you can see Silent now doing the same strat of that misdirect. Firing off a warning shot in the the street, causing the resistance member to walk to run around towards that opposite corner, which is going to get him further ahead faster than the standard path. Okay, so coming up here for uh, for Sparty is going to be an important uh, fork in the road, if you would. Now, in a casual playthrough route, if you do not do this, it will cause the resistance member to go left, which takes you through an additional um, two zones to get to the end point, which, you know, you don't want him to do that. You know, you, you want to be fast. You know, you want to make him as fast as possible. So what he's going to do here is take out these two guards here, which are blocking his way. You know, because the tricky thing here is that you want to take out those guards without them seeing you. Because despite the fact that, yes, you are in the trench coat with um, beauty mask disguise. But if you show your weapon to a PMC guard, they will be alerted to you. So you have to be very uh, creative on how you take them out without them seeing you. And at the same time, you don't want to let the resistance members see you either. Because it will cause them to either A, run away out of panic, you know, causing them to uh, to go out of their way, slow the run down. Or if you get too close to them, like someone in the chat just mentioned, um, since you're wearing the beauty mask, it kind of makes the resistance member uh, interested in you in a way, which, you know, you don't want to do that. You know, as much as you may like the guy, he's he's not worth it. <laughs> Trust me, he's, he's not worth it. Ooh, I came back just in time for the best part of the run. Oh, man, I thought you were going to miss out on the best part. No, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't uh, avoid this. I mean. <laughs> I mean, because clearly, a after all my years of running, I mean, this is this is my favorite part of the game. I mean, there's no intensity. You're just following a guy around shooting a few guards. I mean, what's better than that? I mean, I do like with New Game Plus that they do use uh, that bullet variation for the Mark II to save a little bit of time so that the 
resistance member doesn't investigate the sleeping guards, but he won't he won't care about uh guards that are screaming in pain and agony and crying. Okay, so now this is the uh, second zone, uh, which I believe is the, I think it's the northern section. Um, honestly, I forget the uh, different sections at times, but this is the second uh, portion of uh, three zones, which would be your optimal route with the resistance member. Now, the chopper is normally a threat, but given again that, yes, you're in that um, unique disguise, the chopper will not be alerted to you as much as the PMC guards, uh, PSM guards would be. You know, and then I think, again, he's going to do... A, let's see. Okay, so I think what he's doing here, he's doing a little bit of guard manipulation. He's allowing for the resistance member to advance forward because one of the tricky things you want to avoid is not only, again, letting the PMC guards see you, but you don't want the PMC guards to see the resistance member because technically, it's on curfew. No one's supposed to be out. So if they see him lurking about, they're going to haul him away to a place... Uh, Probably not so friendly. And, you know, again, it just wastes time. So by sitting in that corner and having the guards notice you, it kind of allows for the resistance member to get further down that street without them seeing him, you know, and keeps them moving. Man, I feel bad for those two right there. <laughs> it's like he just, it was either he was putting them out of their misery, you know, kind of rubbing it in. He was like, yes, I did this to you, and now you're, you're going bye-bye. Let's see, so Silent, let's see, Silent is opting to do, let's see, now he just seeks you see the guard and he's dragging him along. I'm actually kind of curious what he's up to here. Sergeant, what are you up to here, huh? What's going on here, okay, in Eastern Europe? I don't know, it's just things. <laughs> things are happening, Understood. look. That's all I can say, folks. Things are happening. But uh, it is pretty incredible how useful this beauty mask is here, and it really does make this whole sequence a lot easier. Mm hmm indeed. Nice use of that uh, bullet distraction to advance the resistance member further up. Which seems like a small thing, but being able to advance him to the next checkpoint on his route, pretty big deal. Given that we can't really uh, do a whole lot. This is HQ. Okay, so it looks like that Mr. Rack brings him to this corner here, which is a normal uh, stopping point for the resistance member now in the Totally not fake uh, guard disguise, including with the standard edition uh, biker's helmet. <laughs> Which is the one thing I always found odd about his disguise. Aside from the fact that he has no main weapon equipped. Safety first, okay? <laughs> not like a, you know, a soldier's helmet. Like, literally for a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who knows, maybe he's part of the Raging Ravens, uh, you know, bike racing team. <laughs> you know, the, P the PMC has their uh, weekly uh, end of curfew bike race. Uh, you know, it's nice and quiet, so I mean, no it's one's on the streets to ruin it. I mean, it's either that or it's just like a low-budget helmet. Like, maybe they just ran out of uh, PMC helmets and they're like, here you go. It's good enough. Well, that's, that's the mark that you're due on the squad. That's how they haze you. You, you get the bike helmet. Yes, yeah, so you have to get promoted up to helmet. You know, and you also the get a main weapon. Promotion. <laughs> yeah. Then you get a weapon. <laughs> You're not just gonna throw your helmet at people or uh, I don't know what else. Throw your little fanny pack. This is HQ. Uh, Listen, let's see. folks, we have to riff for a bit, okay? <laughs> I mean, we're trying our best here. I mean, it is Act Three after all. So we're we're. We're, we're getting there. Okay, so luckily he didn't have to do this here, but normally, um, in addition to these uh, Mr. X with the pistol, you have to do a little bit of cheat manipulation, which is a thing 
on difficulties. Um, I want to say normal and above, but definitely on hard and above. On lower difficulties, I believe the Jeep does not spawn there. Um, which is just another obstacle between you and your goal of, you know, slowly getting your guy there. So one of the things that you would do is just kind of, you know, do the thing you're not taught to do is stand in the street with a with a, with a a moving vehicle coming at your way. Because, uh, believe you not, I mean, the Jeep can and will run over your resistance member without any second thought. And uh, in most cases, in a single segment, it's a rip run. In a multi-segment, you could reload, which costs you a bit of time and, and some added frustration. But one of those simple things, again, just, you know, in a, in a disguise where, you know, you're not going to get spotted. I mean, standing in front of the Jeep in your disguise, you're not going to get spotted. All you're doing is just stopping it. And it allows for, you know, our friend here, his uh, safe journey to the hideout. I thought that a uh, bike helmet would do wonders, but I guess it wouldn't, huh? <laughs> oh, you would think so. But, I mean, again, you know, you, you have to get promoted up to helmet. <laughs> the full helmet, yeah. I mean, you know, he doesn't have the full helmet yet. You know, it's kind of like I joke about in MGS2, like, why you see uh, guards with boxers and why you don't. And my explanation is like, well, clearly you have to get promoted up to pants. I mean, it's the same thing. Full-on pants promotion. Yeah, exactly. It's oh, I will be. <laughs> pray for the Raven fight, which is a, a big obstacle. The next two beauty fights, Wolf and Raven, uh, can really pendulum swing the pace here. Yeah, even on a TBE run, I mean, it just, you know, my feelings are that, like, Raven and Wolf are probably, like, your highly influential boss fights in the run. You know, I mean, Octopus can be, but your advantage is that you can predict her movements. You know, you're just kind of following a routine, so to speak. But, you know, Raven and Wolf can really uh, stir things up and not always for the better. Okay, so it looks like he's just kind of waiting for him to cross to his final corner. So Sparty will be, um, I think he's probably like, uh, probably like a minute or two away from finishing up. And now, uh, Siren is kind of joining the, uh, the new rookie squad. Admiring the, uh, the, the helmetless guard. <laughs> and, uh, once we're done with one auto-scroller, we join the next. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you thought the auto-scrolling was done, oh. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, it's like, I hope you like auto-scrollers, because uh, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just kidding. Some of them are good. Just not this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I, I try to like this segment, and Silent, I kid you not, makes fun of me for this. And I'm like, listen, I just cannot stand Act 3. I don't know how you do it. I mean, you know... <sighs> this is just a huge mistake by the program. <laughs> <laughs> For new game plus, at least there should have been something to not make it quite as tedious. I mean, something to really expedite the the whole thing forward. You know, like even just reduce the amount of zones you would have to travel, or like start in an alternate location. You know, or making the trip shorter. to the church. Yeah, I mean, just skip the whole thing together. That, I mean, that'd be, that'd be wonderful, but I, it, it almost seemed like to me it was kind of like one of those experiments uh, gone weird. Not necessarily gone bad, but it was like for the weird. Okay, so now Sparty begins uh, the next Otter Scroller, which is the infamous Act 3 bike escape. Uh, lots of things going on here, and I guess uh, we'll try to explain it as best as we can as he does it. Uh, but one of the things that you'll notice that he'll use right away is aiming, which, um, you know, it, it helps you quite a bit trying to target guards um, going along the, you know, the streets of Europe here. All right, so he may do it again. Okay, no, so he's going to have for a barrel detonation here because like MGS3, um, if you detonate barrels with guards next to them, as long as you do not shoot the guard doing it, it does not count as a kill, which... Given this condition of the run, it probably doesn't matter, but at the same time, you know, it kind of takes out guards at the cost of one bullet. Um, it's just very uh, convenient to have. Um, if you're going for big boss, uh, blowing up barrels is an essential. 
because uh, you're not going to get everybody with the uh, the Mark II pistol. As good of a shot you may be, but those barrels um, in this segment are going to be your best friend for uh, removing guards out of your way. And it looks like he had a very good uh, first segment of the bike escape. You know, it didn't really take any damage. Because um, that's the one thing you want to be in control of is uh, the damage. The damage you're going to take. You know, because sometimes you will have to take damage, but there are some things you can do to avoid it. So as you can see here, he's going to use a solar gun to take out this uh, group of five guards. Swept to the uh, auto lane with the pistol to take out the turret. Uh, but it looks like the turret is still up, so he may shoot it here. I actually can't tell if he hit him. Okay, so I think at this point he's, he's still safe. Um, the turrets are usually a threat to you when they're up close, because they... Aside from, you know, a hail of gunfire from everyone else are like your biggest sources of uh, damage taken. They can do quite a bit of damage on hard mode. Um, on TBE, it's even worse. They can take up to like 50% plus in one shot. Um, so here you can see again, he's just using his barrels to his advantage, taking out the guards all piled up in that corner. Shoot the rest. Thankfully, the rations really uh, can save your tuchus here in case... Uh... That stuff happens in slow mo Mark II action. Oh man, look at that item cycle reload there. Pre impressive tactical reloading. Yeah, because see, that's one of the benefits to this game is that it allows you to have different equipment styles, which include equip, unequip, which is um, one item, and then it unequips it. You could also have a previous, which is similar to MGS2, where you could swap between two items. And now comes MGS4, where you can allow for up to three items on a cycle A, B, and C. And your inventory also follows the same methodology of item management should you choose it. And so it looks like he's having a really good second segment here. You know, it's, I mean, things are going really well for him right now. As the time. Well, except for that guy that kind of collapsed in the bike. It, it didn't end up well for him, but if I started to do it, So, in the third bike chase screen, I think we're going to start seeing Raven. And I'm going to try and use the grenade launcher to hit her while she's flying in the air. To can get 25% for HP done, but it's a bit of a tricky hit to do. We have to keep Big Boss yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Shagohod segment where you can have some, like, pre-damage before a fight. You know, the Shagohod is a little more generous, but with Raven, it is a little tricky. Her hitbox is kind of strange. Um, but I think, like you say, through some careful use of auto-aim and grenade launch, you can get quite a bit of damage um, if done correctly. It's probably informing us that he will not be doing it, so I think we'll expect it with Sergeant. Again, yeah, I'm only going off of his notes, so that probably means he will do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, auto-aim is more or less, like, not really, like, a safe, but it, it's more consistent, you know, because, like, the minute you go away from auto-aim for something like hitting Raven in the air, I mean, you, you're kind of audibling the run, you know, you're kind of, you know, taking, not really a risky, but it, it's not um, as reliable, but only if you don't get it, because if you get it, it works out great, um, but a lot of times, like, you see with auto-aim with Sparty here, it's just consistent. You know, because this whole bike chase is just one big auto scroller. I mean, it's all pre-planned. Like, you know what's about to come ahead. You know when to use your weapon when you're supposed to. It's now coming up as a Humvee shot. Which, he's going to auto-aim it. And it looks like, yeah, he did get it. And, and I'll tell you, that is not an easy shot, by the way. Even on auto-aim. I've missed so many shots and lost HP for free because of that corner. Alright, here comes another Humvee, which is even harder than the first. And he gets it on the first shot. Very nice. Okay, and then for this part, he's just gonna... You know, stare at the Jeep that's trying to ram into him. Okay, so now coming up for Sparty is gonna be... Um, in my opinion, one of the hardest corners in this chase where you're most likely to take damage from Humvee fire. So it looks like he's going to auto-aim it. He 
got the first. And it looks like he's through. Because those two Humvees, when they pincer in, they can do quite a bit of damage to you if you don't address it. Or other times what happens is they'll detonate a car that's coming up. And the explosion damage, in addition to the burn, can take uh, quite a bit of HP off. Here comes another slow-mo. You ready, Playwood? Oh, we got the first one. Oh, and we're back. Okay, some more quick use of barrels. You know, because if there's the one thing you got plenty of in this escape, is barrels. Plenty of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he waited there a little bit to detonate that barrel so that a frog lines up in position first because you don't want to detonate them too soon. Um, it's one of the rookie mistakes that I've often done myself, which is uh, sometimes you just want to shoot whatever you see, but you kind of want to wait, um, you know, for its best effective usage. But it looks like he's through the worst of it. Um, so you just got one more barrel here. And then he's got another uh, group of three frogs here. Just shoot him out with the, this, uh, the solar gun, which the nice thing about this segment is that it only takes one hit to knock them out with a solar gun, unlike in normal conditions where it takes a more charged shot to, to fully knock them out. But in this escape, it's a little generous. Just hit them once and they're out. And there we go, Sparty popping that wheelie and he's done going into Raging Raven. Yep, and Sergeant coming into the third screen. I got bad news. The decoy vans have where I think we will up. see him uh, try to get those shots off. Let's see. Oh, he's got the grenade launcher out. I think he might go for it. He's going for it. Oh, he's doing it. Let's see. Uh, it only looked like he got one, one full hit. I mean, he may have gotten two, but I don't know if I saw it. Okay, so now what you're seeing Sparty here do with the railgun is lining it up at this window. Hopefully going for a quick kill. And I believe he may have gotten it. I'm just going to wait until he uh, uh, finish just menuing his next set of items. And he did it. Well done. Nice shot from Sparty. Yeah, that, that, that is one of the hardest things to do. Um, in this game, besides, you know, enduring uh, Act 3 itself, is lighting up, you know, the perfect uh, shot against Raven, which, if you do line it up at her at her head at the right time as she flies through, because her beginning flight path is consistent, um, you'll get an instant kill. Let's see. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's the full damage. Yeah, it was kind of odd with the... Uh, I, I couldn't tell if he wasn't fully charged, but yeah, it only looked like it did like a fraction of stamina damage in that solar gun Because it normally takes two full ch uh, charge shots But yeah, the the uh, the insta kill on Raven is probably one of the hardest things to do You know because a lot of times you'll you'll often get like a two hitter where you'll hit her body She'll fly in you'll have to shoot another charge shot or possibly a 50 caliber to finish it But very nicely done on Sparty all right, folks, we're coming up to the part of the run that I know very well, okay? It's going to be super exciting because uh, I know this game, played this game, uh, I played it earlier, so I'll be able to make great commentary here. Get ready. Oh, I'm ready. I'm glad you're ready. <laughs> Goes an slow mo. Oh my god, they just got wrecked. <laughs> so he's opting to go with the grenade launcher route, unlike uh, Sparty that went through majority uh, MK22 and mix of solar gun, as well as uh, the Uzi for shooting barrels. So it looks like he may do it again here with the grenade launcher. Okay, follow up with some uh, 
Oh, there, is a, there is a wasp on my mouse right now. Oh man, muck ass, dude. I think you need a new mouse. It is crawling towards me. Cry for plywood, everyone. <laughs> I wanted to talk about my paper. Oh, oh hey, look, it's your game. Alright, alright. So, up on the helipad, he's not gonna get the chapter name. It's pointless. You don't need it. Just go straight to the vent. Take the shot, it's fine. Just do the throw, boom. Don't don't do a quick throw because you don't have a weapon, and done. That's MGS1, baby. <laughs> See, I knew you came prepared. Yes, I was prepared I for that. <laughs> and, uh, you know what? Sergeant smartly did not add a note for that. So, good job, Sergeant. I, I can talk about that part. No problem. Okay, guys. I'm going to try and remove this wasp from the face of the earth. Wish me luck. I'm holding my breath. It's like on the corner of the desk. <laughs> oh, man. Well, while Plywood's trying to deal with his... Uh life emergency. Um, Sparty's now just beginning uh, Act 4, which is the return trip to Shadow Moses. Um, so it looks like his main item of choice will be the chap grenade, since you're no longer dealing with guards at this point. It's mainly with uh, geckos and dwarf geckos, and your chap grenade is um, going to be your, your, your most likely weapon of choice. Get you through pretty easily. Um, up until when you get up to Crying Wolf. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, you don't need you do not need the big boss mask here since uh yeah, machines know no fear. You know, it does not work against them, but yeah, chaff grenades are their worst enemy. Okay, so it looks like Silent is about to do um his beauty tube, which he easily does with the uh stun grenade uh launcher. So very nicely done on him. Um, I couldn't tell if he got the perfect shot or not on Raging Raven um, in the first uh, phase. I mean, he may have, but I, I just missed it because I was partially distracted with uh, Plywood's emergency, the Wasp. I mean, nobody likes Wasps. Um, as well as, uh, so it looks like Sparty is now going into the uh, Nuclear Warhead storage building. Which, of course, again, is just going to be uh, mostly... Uh, Stroll through the park up until when you get these uh, Force Codex. You know, you could, could skip them quite easily, just, you know, press start, and then you have to trigger this door um, to, again, just advance the story, you know, which triggers a conversation between Otacon and Snake saying, hey, there's no power to the door. I think we got to go to the lab to flip the power button. All right. Wasp update. It flew away before I could give him the napkin special, so I got a fly swatter now. Well, I'm glad to know you made it back in one piece, Plywood. Well, <laughs> pray for my safety yet. <laughs> oh, by the way, everyone, there was a wasp in my room like last week, so I'm starting to get a bit suspicious. Oh, boy. <laughs> Man, that, that definitely made me nervous. Yeah, yeah. All right, Surge and Silent coming up to... You know where. Sparty making his way to the lab. Old memories, folks. Remember? Remember this? This didn't happen in the relay race because we skipped all this. Snake never met Otacon in the any percent route until the very end of the game. <laughs> All right, let's see how Sergeant handles the helipad. Oh, he's he's actually going for the chaff grenades. Bold strategy. I hope it pays off. But you don't have them equipped. You gotta have those chaff equipped to run faster. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that was quite the display. If you die there, does the whole thing just? Or do you have to start the screen again? 
I, I honestly don't know. That was scary, though. That was very scary. You can die and it continues as normal? Oh. Wouldn't it be faster just to, like, take the shots on the helipad, then? I don't know. No. Good thing Sparty can talk about this. Then you have to menu. Game over. I see. Well, had to offer it as, an, as a possibility, at least. So, you see Sparty taking out these Gekko, hanging out in the nuke building, or what was the nuke building. I'm just waiting for that door to unlock. As we take our casual stroll through Shadow Moses. But don't worry, we'll be back in Shadow Moses for the final game, Twin Snakes. Okay, so heading into Crying Wolf. This fight's a bit infamous as I understand it. Uh, because randomness is a factor in terms of her spawn point. And if she runs away, you gotta find her again. So that can be a bit of a problem. Now the goal is to get a smoke under her and then fire the uh, grenade launcher rounds at her. So let's see how Wolf treats Sparty here. There's also these frog units. Now the wind direction actually does play a factor in whether Wolf can see us or not. Let's see if this, all right, can you hear me again? I can, I can hear you. Okay, Thank yeah, you. maybe, I was, yeah. I was, like, dying for water here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe during that flashback, it almost made me, uh, you know, <laughs> almost made me lose it. I don't know what happened, but, uh, but, yeah, I guess, like, as Plywood was saying, uh, you know, Crying Wolf is probably one of the most RNG-heavy bosses in this game. You know, her spawn can be one of, I mean, maybe, like, a dozen places. I mean, some of them are good. Um, one of them is particularly off of which I'm um, looking to see where Sparty is checking because sometimes she could spawn in this back corner. Um, there are two close spawns where she'll be closest to your start, which is the most optimal. Um, she could spawn left or right in the backfield, which is where you fight um, Sniper Wolf um, during the second round, you know, for MGS1 and Twin Snakes uh, fans. Um, but it looks like... I couldn't tell if, if she got spooked and moved, or if he still couldn't find her. Because normally it would not take this long to be able it's to locate her. It's a bit of a her. struggle bus right now. There's the yeah. struggle truck right there. Uh-huh. Let's see, so I think she's going to be right there, right behind that tree. Oh no, those are some frogs. I finished unlocking the door on the first floor. Yeah, because uh, unfortunately with this fight, when you spook her off her starting spawn point, uh, it, it's quite of a it's quite of a journey to find her again because she can literally move all over the place before you relocate her while trying to avoid being spotted by the frogs at the same time. Yeah, that's the whole thing about that quick kill, huh? That like really key that you get that quick kill, or else this fight can just be a huge pain. Oh man, she's coming. Okay, here we go. Throw that top, toss that smoke grenade. Okay, Snake. This is this is could be a very big opportunity for Sergeant. By the way, he's quickly coming up to to the crying wolf fight. Yeah, he's 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 closing in. All right, so it looks like she reset. All right, going for those shots. Three, okay, so four. I want to say it's six. 
Yeah, that's six hits. Yeah, it's six hits on um, hard TBE, um, but I'm not 100% certain on normal and below. It might be less, but yeah, six stun grenades while she's coughing is pretty normal. Alternatively, if you don't have any stun grenades in your grenade launcher, you can do that strat of what he just did with normal stun grenades, but it's way slower, less ideal, and... Uh, I mean, look at that. I mean, that's just instant. It's like, why wouldn't you have it? Unless you're me. <laughs> you know, which didn't realize you can buy them for years until I changed my uh, my new game plus to a different difficulty to buy them. Okay, well, uh, I think all eyes are on Sergeant, whether he can really pull off a quick crying wolf here. Because if he can, this is going to get a, become a pretty interesting Act 5, I'm going to say that. Especially with uh, the Ray Rex fight. That could also uh, affect things a bit, too. Yeah, there's a, a quick hill strat for Ray. There's also top deck optimization for um, Outer Haven in Act 5. I mean, there's, there's, there's opportunities to, to come back. And for Silent, it's going to start with, you know, what spawn he gets and if he gets um, a one instant setup. You know, like, she, you know, he doesn't spook her away and then have to, you know, relocate. Okay, so no, I believe that alert is intentional. Uh, what Silent got there. You know, because, I mean, you can be spotted early prior to finding her, so there she is. So that's a really good spawn to get um, going right side. Great, great spawn, great fight. That, Very uh, good. that just uh, really made up. Yeah, I mean, that was probably as good as a wolf as you'll get. Also, uh, shoutouts to Arlues for being online. <laughs> On a surgeon's <search> screen. <laughs> Where would we be without Ar Arlues? I think Arlues was the key to his success there. So yeah, this, this race just uh, became a bit interesting, folks. At first, we had this huge disparity due to loads, and then... Lo and behold, Crying Wolf completely killed a huge chunk of Sparty's lead. Now he's he's got like, you know, like two minutes. I wanna, uh, yeah, I want to say he's like around he's maybe like two and a half to three minutes ahead um, oh. still. Uh, but coming up is going to be uh, the vamp fight. Um, which, of course, again, you're seeing more use of misdirect with pistol. Um, chaff grenades, which makes that area that Sparty just went through a breeze. You know, because it's... Uh, chaff grenade, again, is really your best friend for this act. Okay, so it looks like Silent is getting through as well. Um, again, you can be spotted briefly, but as long as your chaff grenade goes off, um, you know, all is well. Hey, look, that already looks familiar. On a Sparty screen. Snake, snake. Don't remind me. I've got something. <laughs> I don't know. I think you might know that area very well. Uh, yeah, I don't even need a reminder. Something about Rexes and, you know, guards and particularly a, a very favored rat. Thankfully, I don't think there's any rats in this game, in this act. So instead, we have a vampire jump in from rubble to rubble. All right, so what he's going to do, he's just going to use a solar gun, and oh no, so that was a misplay there. But thankfully, backed up with a second shot. Because um, you want to charge up that solar gun right as Vamp is on the ground, because you can only syringe him to end the fight when he's on the ground. A common mistake is to get him when he's not on the ground, and then he has to revive, thus extending the fight um, even more. Okay, so now this is probably what I would call an interactive movie. You know, because you're just shooting out Gecko while Vamp and Raiden are kind of, you know, playing, uh, playing daggers with each other. And uh, you're just kind of chilling until uh, their fight's done. Playing the old Sharpie Sharpie. Yeah, trying to see uh, who whose knife is better. Now, I will say that the gameplay on the right uh, is more exciting than the gameplay on the left. 
<laughs> Can you imagine if it was the other way around, like you were playing as Raiden here, and then on the other side you just see <laughs> Snake just like pew. I'm like, hey, where's that pew. game? I want to, I want to play that game over there. I think, I think that game came out. It's called a uh, Rising Revengeance. Oh yeah, my thumb remembers. <laughs> yeah, it's a very intensive but fun game. Rex is on the floor above you. Wait, what, what game were we talking about again? I thought we were just blowing up some geckos. Oh, I I kind of lost it. I thought we were talking about MGS1 for a quick moment. Then then we were in MGS4. Now we're talking about Rising. Okay, so now it looks like Silent is going to step into the vamp fight, which... Again, I mean, could add another significant step to gaining back time with Sparty. All right, so again, he's going to charge the solar gun. Take, he'll get it. Oh, no, he misses two. Oh, man. All right, so hopefully he'll get a back up. All right, so like Sparty, he also gets uh, the good backup. You know, it's, uh, you know, the one decent thing with the solar gun is that it does provide you a, a decent uh, recharge. Um, to get that second shot in, unlike the railgun, which, I don't know, probably takes just as long as it does to complete Act 3 to get the full power. Oh, man, look man, look at all this action we're getting in here. We're getting four rectangles of action. I mean... And in those four rectangles are, are larger rectangles, and then there's the rectangle of the Twitch stream. I mean, there's so many rectangles here. Yeah, it's like there it's like there couldn't be enough rectangles in our lives. No, I think we I think we need more rectangles. And we got some more rectangles. Post your favorite rectangles. Oh, you know I got this one. Well, it's more of a square, but you get the idea. Well, it is true, though, that squares are rectangles. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So you got it. Man, that just blew my mind over learning the resistance trick. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag okay. geometry class. Okay, so it looks like uh, Sparty will be done. Um... Probably like he has like one more wave of geckos to go. Here they come again. Hang in there, snake. I mean, technically, I mean, like the objective is not to get them to blow up, so it's not like they're specifically tied to the the fight progress that you know Raiden and Vamper undergoing, but it, it, it still looks more exciting than you know kind of like what Snake's doing. I mean, I, I mean, even Sparty's looking up and saying, "Man, why can't I be playing that game up there?" That's a more exciting fight than the uh, vamp fight we had. <laughs> snake versus like, yeah, I hit you once and then I inject you with the syringe I've been using for myself the whole run. Now I know Snake just said he couldn't shoot right there, but I, I want to call. Uh, I want to hold up the red card for that one because I, I do believe he could have taken that shot if he wanted to. I mean, just kind of get that kill steal from right in and just be like, yeah, I did that. Um, so now it's going to come up the Rex segment of Act 4, which is going to lead up towards what will potentially be a quick kill strat um, if either Sparty or Silent will get it. But in this segment with Rex, you're just doing two things. You're moving forward and you're spamming X. And that's it. Little dash. Yep. Um, cause technically it's faster to dash, uh, forward than it is to walk normally. Um, it does save quite a bit of significant time, um, from the beginning to end. I don't have the exact number, um, uh, how much time it would save on one method over the other, but... Um, like a year. I was gonna go with two years, but, you know, a year sounds pretty good. <laughs> uh, but I think one thing that you'll notice that Sparty will do, if... Um, they're going for the quick kill strat is that right before he gets to the end of this tunnel um, He's gonna swap from Gatling gun to missile, which is a prerequisite to doing uh, the kick kill strat for Rex 
uh, which involves some missile usage, uh, position manipulation, and a charged laser, um, if he gets it. Because it's a lot harder than it looks, but if you get it, it pays dividends uh, sunlight, for saving time. Sunlight, 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 Meanwhile, Silent is uh, Silent's kind of just gathering sunlight, some sunlight. It's hard to in this uh, sunlight, sunlight, underground base. Sunlight, sunlight, sunlight. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that that's the best part of the game right there. Forget about piloting Metal Gear Rex for the first time ever, but just hearing Snake gathering some sunlight is the best thing. Okay, right. so let here we so go. Let's, let's see what Sparty will opt to do here. Okay, so he is gonna switch to missile. Um, it just gives you a nice little damage boost at the start while it gives him time to charge his laser up. Now, if he does this right, he's going to fire this laser at the exact moment when he dashes in, which will do a significant amount of damage because it's during what would be thought of as an iframe, but it's not. So here he goes. He's charging him up again. He's kind of waiting for Ray to get in position. Which is the hardest part, is getting him in the right spot. Well, folks, I think we will call that an L. Uh, Team Solid and uh, hashtag Virgin Liquid, hashtag Portable Water. He's again, gonna be a nice opportunity for Sergeant if he can get that quick kill. Because this is looking to be a bit of a, a tough situation. Yeah, it looks like he's getting some pretty bad Ray RNG. You know, he's not really kind of getting it. Because you, you kind of want him to dash in, which is hard for him to, to do um, consistently. Which involves a bit of position manipulation on your end, as well as manipulating his position on uh, Ray's end. But yeah, so, I mean, anything goes at this point. Kinda of wanna be careful, right? Because Ray can do some pretty serious damage to Rex if you're not careful. Yeah, I mean the most dangerous thing Ray can do to you is get up close and he'll do like a like a three-hit wombo combo as I would call it. Which he'll kinda of do like a hit or two, which does quite a bit of damage, and then he'll do like another headbutt, which does some more, followed by an animation of him jumping on your head. Um so it looks like to me on Sparty's and he, he may just go for a traditional kill. Um, the I just don't think he got the setup uh, for the quick kill. So he may just opt to just kind of end this normally. But yeah, I mean, right now, Silence just starting up uh, race. So I mean, this, this race was kind of spaced between for quite a bit. And you know, they're, 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 it's getting close. It's all up to Sergeant. Can he pull it out? Mm, got half health. Let's see. And oh, well, we got a little bit of a one right there. But that's the idea: is to get him to either jump Ooh. in or preferably dash in. Baby. Oh, there we go. That's it. Wow. And this race just took a turn. Act and four completely deleted Sparty's lead and Sergeant. Now ahead. This late into the run, very impressive. Yeah, I mean, see, you see, <laughs> you see, Ocelot running there. That's that's Sergeant running with the lead right there. Yeah, he's just you know he's running ahead. He's turning around. He's like, <laughs> I got it. So this but, is really going to come down to two things, as I understand it. One, that uh, that deck, and two, that fist fight. Yeah, and I guess a little bit of Mantis, but the, the, the thing with Mantis is that it's kind of more of a, a scripted fight than an actual fight. I mean, the worst thing you could do is, um, you know, miss your hits on the doll, which causes her to move around some more. But yeah, the, the big things in play is going to be top, de top, uh, bleh, top deck <laughs> movement and uh, the good old fisticuffs with uh, Brother Liquid. I mean, because literally, if you think about it, this whole Team Solid versus Team Liquid is going to take place in this game. I mean, they're going to fight each other. 
Yeah. Well, kind of. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> I don't know. That was just my poor attempt of uh, in-game humor. You know, there, there's these two brothers fight over and over again. Oh, man, that SSD. And now, like, they're pretty much even. So, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, so they're doing their menus, and this is pretty important. It's not important in IGT, because IGT is not a... doesn't factor in the menus, but it certainly is. The Wasp is back! <laughs> Man, just when you thought it was over. It's not over. It wasn't over. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, you know, like Liquid says, it's not over yet. I, I wish you the best of luck of, uh, you know... Wasp, uh, <laughs> wasp uh, elimination, but uh, but it looks like Sparty um, got a good start with his top deck. After the goal towards the right side. Oh no, you missed. No. Way. no! Oh boy. This is this is not looking good. Man, look at this. I mean, they're both at the door. Sparty just getting in. Oh no, but silent though. And, oh, okay, that is one way to get in the door, you know, forcefully, but they do make it through the top deck. But unfortunately, because he got spotted, he has to wait for the alert to wear off before the elevator will close. But you know what? I mean, this this race is anyone's game, honestly. I mean, I, I really, you know, like, like I said, Mantis will probably be... Um, a little bit of con uh, con uh, contribution to the the pace, but then coming up for uh, for Sparty, I believe he's gonna attempt to do a frog wave skip, which is using a precise use of spokes and singling out one of the frogs um, to basically glitch the game into spawning the remaining uh, three waves. Because normally this encounter here, which uh, Sparty just started, is three waves of frogs. There's a lot of them. It takes forever. There's got to be a better way, and there is. So he's going to take out what looks like uh, three out of the five starting frogs. I think this is number four. Okay, so that was number four. So there's the last frog of wave one. So what he's going to do is keep her in place while using a smoke, which lands. And while that smoke is affecting the frog, he's going to throw a smoke into her. So even though she's coughing, her stamina bar, as you may notice, is at zero, despite the fact that she's coughing, uh, which is going to glitch the game into thinking that, wait a minute, how could this be? I mean, there's a frog that's kind of alive but not, and doing that will allow you to skip the remaining two waves, which he just did. You know, so very nicely done. And it looks like Silent is also doing the same. Looks like he got it. And now begins uh, Screaming Mantis Phase 1. They, so it they looks say like she's screaming, but she was laughing there. I'm gonna call... I'm gonna call BS on that. Oh, just wait till later. <laughs> sunlight! Oh, man, you can't go wrong with that sunlight. No, I think that's one of the best aspects of NG+. I mean, in addition to the benefit of knocking out enemies quickly, the uh, projectile um, heavily favors this encounter as opposed to using items like your pistol, your M4, or sniper. Um, but from what Silence told me before was that the projectile for the solar gun is not only favorable, but it shoots really fast. You know, it's very easy to use. And it looks like uh, Sparty is going to be on... Um, oh, look, he's got one more hit to go. So look, he's going to be on the second of two, like, mini phases. Hell yeah, get that sunlight in. Man, he, he is having a lot of fun with that solo gun. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Alright, so this is phase three. 
Um, the Dao should have, I believe, two hits remaining. Okay, so... Yeah, so he didn't get it there, which will cause her to move. Uh, move inward, which you can use to your advantage if you're quick enough on the trigger. But it looks like he just got the doll to be shot out of her hands. Now, despite in New Game Plus, uh, I believe you have to repossess the doll in order to use it against her, as it would normally be done in New Game. Alright, so he's got one, two. Oh man, she's she's got the jukes. Okay, now he got it. Now, despite what you see on the screen of flipping up and down, the optimal thing to do is to wave left and right with your controller. It does a lot more um, oh, damage. I'm so relieved about that. I'm so relieved that you really don't need to use six axes for this run. Okay, so um, they're both done. Okay, so Sparty just finished his phase two. Um, Silence is not going to do his phase one. Uh, which again will utilize the, uh, you know, laying on the ground and uh, hitting triangle twice. Um, on the third time just to get her to roll over. And then just a simple uh, stun, grade, uh, stun nade finish. I'm telling you, with Plywood, I mean, honestly, this run's going to be determined on Liquid. I mean, what who, who is does our, the best liquid? What is our, uh, split time here, Roy? Final punch? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just final punch is easier to, to track. You know, it gives you, like, a visual cue. Because um, I used to do it by ending the cutscene and... Um, but... But yeah, it's typically on final punch. Yeah, it's literally the final stretch. I mean, it's gonna be whoever does, uh... Whoever does Liquid. Beats them up. Um, now I think they're gonna do... Um, the MGS4 version of the Infinite Punch of Liquid. Um, as you've commonly seen in runs like an MGS1. Um, the setup is a little different, but it, it does pay out, um, greatly. Um, uh, when it works, and... From what I've been told, it's not particularly too hard to set up, but it's maintaining it as the uh, the trick. Because sometimes if you spam too much on your right trigger, you'll opt to do the uh, the full um, like three punch double kick combo, which you don't want to do. You kind of want to loop the first two punches, uh, which hopefully we'll get to see once uh, Sparty is done with this uh, dwarf deco holly. Which why they added it in, I'll never know. They just wanted you to have one less chance of saying goodbye to your little friends. While they just kind of, you know, dance around in the chaff grenade. Now, you really don't have to mash that hard for this microwave hallway, huh? Um, not at the start. I mean, the start you don't. But at the end, um, only to a certain point. But yeah, you don't have to really, like, overly mash it. I mean, I do it just because it makes me feel like I'm getting into it with the run, making me realizing like I'm almost done, but you really don't have to uh, overexert the mashing. But yeah, for this part, we're just gonna watch Snake get cooked. Uh, but I don't know about you, Plywood, but I like my snakes extra crispy. Because uh, Snake's gonna get a lot of, a lot of cooking right now. Man, look at this, more rectangles. Can't get enough of those rectangles. But yeah, for like the first two parts of the hallway, you're just moving it forward. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary going on. And then once you get to here, then you start the mashing. You know, get a nice view of a... Uh, Get a nice view of a uh, snake's uh, dummy thick uh, cheeks. And also what I've been told is that you want to keep the camera forward as much as you can. And you also want to keep his movement as in the middle as possible. 
because you can get shocked additional times if you veer off course, you get closer to those probes um, sticking out on the walls there. And as far as the camera usage, um, like you can literally move the camera in, in 360 if you want, but you know, Silence told me in the past that sometimes your camera can manipulate Snake's movement a bit, which yeah, you could do it for fun, but sometimes it just leads to, uh, you know, you veering off course before you realize it. But once again, it almost seems like the game that's happening above is more exciting than the game that's happening below. Okay, so he's got just a little more to, to go. I mean, Silence just like... He's in the same section with him. I mean, he's he's almost there. This is gonna be a really close race. All right, so now Silence on his uh, final stretch here. Crawl, crawl, crawl some more. All right, so you can kind of see Sparty kind of letting up on the mashing a little bit because you can see the spamming indicator because I think once he gets to this final point, and I believe you just have to crawl for just a little bit, enough to trigger, um, like, the final cutscene to happen, then you just stop. Um, you could continue to crawl, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so as you can see, he just has to crawl, like, one more um, cycle. And I think once you get to here, then then you can stop. You know, but I think yeah, he just chose to keep crawling. No, because it, it's because the thing about the crawling here is that it's not really like you're gonna lose time if you overexert the mashing. You know, aside from just not getting killed here. But it's just mainly to give yourself a break. You know, because it can get quite tiring. Because as you can see, Silent chose to just kind of take a breather. <laughs> well, I guess Otacon didn't like that. All right, so now here we go with Sparty now starting the final fight with uh, with Liquid. This is really where it all comes down. And here comes that little infinite tappity tap one two one two. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, because the way that this works is that once you start hitting Liquid, his uh, cooldown is quite. Um, longer than you think, you know, which allows you to get a huge amount of damage, you know, literally just through um, tapping away at those buttons. You know, but yeah, as you can see every once in a while, he will try to duck underneath, uh, which you could follow up with a punch, punch, kick. Okay, so now Silent now starting his uh, fight with Liquid. Now Sparty getting into phase two. Oh, there goes the shoulder check. Oh man, that is gonna be quite a doozy to come back from, but it's it's still anybody's game at this point. Okay, I got knocked down a second time. Yeah, the real tough thing about this whole fight is that you don't want to get into those long cutscene uh, cinematic shots. You want to just be in control as much as possible, as I understand it. Yeah, you want to you want to be in control of your punching rhythm as well as where liquid um, is, and like you say, it's uh, whenever you use certain things, like if you do a kick or you do a, a heavy arm punch or if you do a jab underneath, it does like a little pan cutscene, like you just saw just then on Sparty's screen. Um, it takes up quite a bit of timer, um, and because their phases are based on their HP bar, not really the amount of time. Um, that you're in, but you want to do the maximum amount of damage with minimal, like, cutscene interruptions as much as you can, but there are times where, yeah, sometimes you just have to let it slide, and now Sparty's entering in phase three of the liquid fight, you know, with Silent just coming up behind him. As I understand it, Phase 3 is really the one that's uh, pretty tough as far as uh, this fight goes. Because you have to watch out for uh, Ocelot's counter. He opens up his hands. 
Yeah, because, like, once you get to phase three, Ocelot gets better at the fighting where you're no longer just dealing with dodging his punches and countering. He now starts using CQC maneuvers. He'll often block more, like he just saw with Sparty. And in addition, he can counter with either a headbutt or often he'll just throw you to the ground uh, for some CQC. But it looks like he's opting to do an interchange of infinite with headbutts, which headbutting does do some significant damage uh, when you get it off. But um, infinite can be done, but in phase three, it's really tough to do optimally. Okay, so now he's done with phase three, now coming up to the final segment with silence still coming up behind him. Final phase here is pretty much just scripted. There really isn't much to do. Yeah, I mean, it's just basically a set of, you know, blows at the start, and then you get two more punches to get him down, followed up with uh, three final hits. And it looks like Silent is having, having, or, or he's having quite a bit of struggle with trying to get him down. Yeah, because you can see he'll, he'll often duck, he'll block, he'll move out of the way. Okay, going up with an infinite once again. Alright, so now he's just getting into the final segment with uh, Sparty having one punch left. So... In spite of the uh, hard drive to SSD disparity, this was a very close race. Ultimately. Absolutely. Okay, and there's the final punch for Sparty. So, f very, I mean, like you said, this this was really anybody's race because there was back and forth for a bit with a bit of a lead because of the, the loading. And look what they're at. I mean, this was, this was a hell of a race. All right, so while we watch uh, Silent get that last uh, few set of punches in, Sparty will just be uh, skipping some cutscenes along with more cutscenes, followed by some uh, fake credits, and then some more cutscenes, followed by the real credits, and then, you know, presents the, the final scorecard. And here comes final punch for Silent. All right, so again, a very, very nice job on both uh, Sparty and Sergeant Silent. All right, so I think um, I would want to ask, like, uh, if just during, like, the final credits, if that would be fine to get um, the runners in for just some uh, Q&A. Like, is that how we're going to do it with this one? I uh, think so. We got some. We got some time. So we yeah, because like I'm not sure if we're gonna wait for like the final scorecard or 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 whatnot. Uh, I think I think we are interested, given that there was that load disparity, and just to amp up the the build up. Yeah, because I would like to see it. Definitely there between acts. Like when you go from the mission briefing and stuff. I definitely gained like 15, 10 to 15 seconds on him. Oh my god. <laughs> Between those acts. What is act? What was your act? What's my act oh, we're in? Yeah. Uh, I was a 121 XX. You were a 125. 120. <clears throat> I think, what was I? Like a 125? Yeah, you your act four was four minutes behind, so it, like, it'll be interesting. It's just the thing with MTS four is it's never consistent loads, even HDD or SSD, especially when you go between acts. You can really see it when you go into act two mission briefing. <clears throat> like sometimes you'll get that instant pop up where the mission brief happens on SSD. Like it'll just take. Now, do you believe that that uh, like the version of the game could also contribute to that, Sparty? I don't think so because I run the same version every run, and 
just gives me different loads on different runs. Like it's never you're, given. Are you running loads. on disk or is it a, a like disc. a download version? <clears throat> I'm on disk. Okay. I mean, I still have to say though that despite the you know, like you said, the disparity between uh, HDD and SDD, that this was a close race. I mean, just the you know the back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, I'm, I can't really say how close I was to him just because of the loading thing. To, yeah. like, maybe I'll actually look to see gameplay only and cut out all the mission briefings and actually see what the time was because IGT, it says I'm four minutes behind. Correct? Like if I just take all the gameplay only, am I really four minutes behind? Uh, IGT? Yeah, it said you were far at the time. I mean, right. my final punch was at 148, uh, because I was timing my run. So, it would depend what yours was if you were timing it. I wasn't timing my run. I don't know. <clears throat> but, that was fun. GG, and thank you for the GGs, everyone. I have to admit, I was kind of nervous going into that. <laughs> yeah, when yeah, I saw I... a wolf come up, I was like... Oh, I have, I have no idea where she is. Maybe she's around this corner. It's like, nope. I, oh, maybe she's around this corner. I, I got I'm the like, best wolf spawn. I was so happy. I was, I like, was about to say go. that that wolf fight was a big uh, differentiator to where this run is right now, given that, yeah, Silent had, like I just said to play with her, like that was probably the best wolf that you're going to get, you know, given that you went to the right. Mm -hmm. And for Sparty, it was probably like one of the worst ones you could get given. It was like, you might know where she is, but she could be in the furthest spot from where you start. Sorry. The thing I didn't want to do is like reset that whole thing. I was like, I have to get her in this fight. Mm -hmm. like, it's just going to put me back even further. So that was a good thing. And then the Rex versus Ray, I didn't get him. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah so was that? Around. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Around like the whole map. Now, do you feel like that was part of like trying to manipulate the raised position for the the charged laser? I was trying. Well, at the beginning, I was trying to manipulate the the laser, but it didn't work. So then I was just free walling. Oh uh, yeah, Sarge definitely won this race if we're just going consistent loads in this race. I I think um, it was really interesting because by Act One. I noticed you were already ahead of me. You were 30 seconds, then you were a minute, and then two. And then I look back after Ray, because I hear Joe say something uh, in the headset, like, uh, and now he's ahead or something. And I look over, and it's like, what? How? Your loads were so much faster than mine. Just That's next time we do this on MGS4, like, there's got to be a consistency we got to hash out, because no one has done this. Like, no one mm -hmm. has really sat down and timed it. SSD, HDD, so we just kind of yeah. went in mind. You, you are the first person to run this game on SDD, so this and yeah. your whatever other runs you submit are a prime candidate for examination. So we can, we definitely need to like get a consistent basis next time we do runs of MGS4. Mm -hmm. The only, hard. the only thing is, uh, we'll have you'll have to either have runs on both new game or new game plus because. I, you saw the no document I made. New Game Plus had some loads that were 20 seconds slower and exclusive to New Game Plus. The thing I'll say always about MGS4 is loads are never consistent. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. It's it was, never consistent. It was probably just a freak coincidence that the two New Game Plus had 48 second loads and the two New Games had 20 second loads. Using the same exact hardware, you're going to get like that disparity. But Yeah, PS3s are crazy. Like, I... I'm willing to invest in an SSD. I probably should. I think it's fair to say that SSDs, RTA-wise, load faster between acts. Mm. I think that happened during every single uh, mission briefing. Like, my loads were just faster than yours. Now, I don't know about all the loads that are in between the acts, like all the gameplay. Yeah. Mission briefings are definitely faster, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It is 100% worth timing, especially considering you said the other day you did a run and your RTA was like eight minutes, and then I know your TBE was six yeah, minutes. I did, I did two runs the other day. I did two runs. One was on the Boss Extreme, one was on Big Boss Hard. The Boss Extreme, the difference of RTA, IGT, was eight minutes. 
Mm. Then my big boss hard run, the RTA difference to IGT was eight minutes, like using the exact same mm. hardware, disc, same PS3 model, everything. So I guess what would you guys say is like probably like your highlight of the run if you had to pick one? Uh, I'll let you go first, Sparty, since you finished first. Uh, say my highlight and my low light came into one. It was the uh, the wolf fight. Like yeah, I didn't get the the quick kill. It's just making up and kind of not having to take that reset, just taking what the game was giving me and somehow making something out of it. I think that's what I enjoyed the most about the run. Yeah, and a no reset wolf is uh whew, you hope. You hope. <laughs> yeah, it's like you gotta say that a little 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 prayer for, for a good spawn. You know, I know the yeah. feeling. And and even then, uh sometimes you get a good spawn and something hits you, your grenade goes flying the wrong direction, weird things happen and next thing you know, wolf's running you over. And you didn't even have anything to do with it. Yeah, but what, where I was really scared for you, uh, Sergeant, was uh, on top deck trying to get to that door, and the gecko kind of just like pushed you through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I messed top deck up so bad. I, um, I twice that run I didn't push. Uh, so if anyone doesn't know, grenade throws are uh, pressure sensitive in this game. Uh, pressing R1 lightly causes you to underhand and holding it causes you to overhand so two times i underhanded and i was like uh uh this is gonna be an improv right now <laughs> um highlights i'd say i'd agree wolf uh was by far a highlight uh that was probably the most interesting part of that whole run low light i missed a railgun shot on the easiest boss in the game i can't believe I did that. I just sat there watching Octopus walk back around the wall, and I'm just like, well, if I get off this bed, she's going to roll into me, so I'm just going to sit here and wait. But you know what? Even despite the uh, the difference in loading, like, the run was, I mean, in spirit, like, neck and neck. I mean, I'm... like, Act 1 was pretty smooth. Act 2, yeah, had its set of hiccups. Act 3, I mean, it was pretty identical. Yeah. I mean, except oh. for, yeah, maybe the Raging Raven might have differed, but, like, it was pretty close. Speaking of Act 3, did you get the Resistance Room 3, Sparty? Did you do oh, your strat? Yeah, both of them worked. Do you use your strat or the new one that I tried? It's mine and it worked. Okay, I used the new strat and got it to work, but earlier I didn't, so I kind of whimmed it there. That's good to know. We both got it to work. Um, yeah, we both had strat. optimal Act 3s, I think. The one okay. thing I have is learn the any percent better. Especially when, like, you take down the beauty form. I still go with, like, the non-lethal and charge up. So I think I gotta know when it's faster to get kills and when it's not. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. My Act 1 was undoubtedly slower than you, IGT. Uh, it was 30 minutes. I lost, uh, 30 seconds. I lost. Yeah, it was about 30 seconds behind, I think, when I looked at it. I typically have a really bad Act 1, so I think I need to figure out some way to work non-lethal in. But I was playing around with non-lethal frogs and the best i got it was within 20 seconds you gonna say something plywood yes i have a question for sergeant because for there's a bit of a i had a bit of a confusion so yeah joseph was saying uh for the mantis fight that it's faster to press left and right instead of shaking the controller um, and then in your notes, it says killing Mantis requires six axis support on your DualShock 3. I will be honest, I did not know you could push left and right. Yeah, because like when you have control over in the Mantis doll form, instead of like the on screen telling you to shake it up and down, I thought it was yeah. either you or someone told me that says no, shake left and right, and it kills her in two no, shakes. I, I said shake left and right, but are you saying you can use the D pad I, to move her left and right? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Because no. if you could use that, that would change everything. You would oh, absolutely a D pad or a six axis. If yeah, you have I, to shake, then yeah, you need a official dual shock three with six axis, or you literally cannot beat Mantis. Your game yeah, is I apologize for that, that confusion, but it's like, like what I was trying to point out was like, like for the longest time, I followed what the on-screen on thing said to do was shake up and down, 
And then if you yeah. shake left and right, it's one less um, action you have to do to, to, to kill her. Yeah, the game wants you to like rotate like a barrel roll your controller. But if you just sit there and wave it in the air back and forth, it's it's faster and much easier on your hands. Trust me. Oh, so if you wave it, you're just waving goodbye to her. It's like, bye bye. Yeah, it's just <laughs> bye. I'm going to non-lethal you now because it's free. <laughs> I think for MGS4, one thing I'd like to see run, maybe in future, is have like a gentleman's agreement to go for act uh, rank one. Yeah, that would change to go to rank one fights, even though you're not gonna get it, because you know it is difficult to get it at the end. But just stick yeah. with rank one strats, so no lethal. I I, I understand that. that. I if if I think with MGS4, if you were racing me, because there's probably other people gonna come in. Uh, I would be willing to go no kills other than in auto scrollers. Uh, in like, actually, no, I'd really to go no kills, but alerts, I'm 100% not gonna get that. It's just, oh, yeah, it's I'm not so saying not you fun. have to get no alerts, it's just you have to try to not get alerts. Yeah, 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 okay. So, when you guys say rank one, do you mean like for big boss rank? Well, it matters yeah. which difficulty you play. So, if you're playing the boss extreme, you're going for big boss, if you're playing big boss hard, you're going for foxhound. If you're playing oh, gotcha. anything else, like you're going for Fox or, or Hound or Wolf, whatever the rank one is for that category, yeah. that's what you're trying to do. Well, I think really what what needs to happen is the uh, SSD equivalency more than yeah, anything, because that that was yeah. that was a sizable sizable gap even in the very beginning. I'll tell you what, um, I'm accepting donations of SSDs. Shoot me an email. <laughs> <laughs> SSDs are I'll expensive. You oh, you get one for like 20 bucks. Nah, you're right. I should do that. And then I just have to transfer like everything over to my SSD. <laughs> you but know, then my... again, my PS3 model is already inferior because it's the, the 320 gigabyte uh slim so that in itself is going to be slower some you know i was going to ask you point? what model you had because my ps3 slim from 2011 is still kicking like original hard drive original everything oh. i don't even know what model series it is but it still works i just know mine's a uh 20 or i think it's a 2501b uh that i bought somewhat recently like within the year uh because it was the only slim they had and i wanted to get a sizable amount of megabytes. I was willing to compromise there. Hey everyone, I need some beer after this. I'm accepting <laughs> donations. <laughs> Actually, I just looked just now on mine, and mine ends with a 2001A. Okay, that's what I have. The 2001A is the 120 gigabyte one, I think. Yeah, it's a it's an old it's an old one, but it's still running. It's good. It's good. It's worth keeping if you don't really need the space. Yeah, as long I as have, I don't destroy it. To be fair, I have a super a 500 gigabyte super slim sitting over there that I used to run this game on. So, you know, that was fun. Super I slim's mean, bad. Official statement from Sergeant Silent. I mean, does it really run that much worse on super slim versus something like, you know, the 2001A? Uh, honest to God, MTS4 uh, differences would be seconds. They would add up, but they'd be seconds. But some other games, uh, like another game I run, Resistance 3, the Super Slim actually causes that game to soft lock at over eight different locations simply because it can't optimize that game and load it correctly. I mean, do you, feel like SD, do you feel like SDD could rectify that for a Super Slim? I don't know. I'd have to try it. I've never owned an SSD to test that on. Come quick, the IGT is ready. <laughs> it looks somewhat fast. Sort of like calling for the sun with a gun. Sunlight! Sunlight! Uh, I almost ran into... nine flat. Wow. I almost ran into the crop oh, circle God. to shout hmm. out the MGS2. I was like, at this point, I don't care. I was just going to do whatever, but... Instead, oh, you're I'm just going to meme it? Instead, I just used <laughs> sunlight wherever I could. That was that was good enough for me. Oh, and I think everybody appreciated that. I don't know if you had audio. I don't know if you had audio on me when I did it. Oh, I, I did. Just, sunlight. Sunlight. Oh, I mean, I, I especially did. Knowing one, this was New Game Plus. Fifty-five. 
Wait, I'm sorry, Sparty. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Said, I'm guessing yours is a 155. We'll see. I mean, real time, I'd be at a 155, roughly, yeah, based off of liquid punch estimate for my system, my loads. And while this race is done, RTA, we will have a total at the end of the uh, complete IGT per team. Another, speaking of the RTA, even though Sparty's loads were crazy, I mean, how much did Team Solid actually gain? About... 25 seconds ish so it was still really close well if we're going by if we're going by rta hey that's a new world record i think you get 155 yep nice 155. wow congrats well done thank you uh, uh is that really a world record i believe it is because i got a 156 last night while practicing wow congratulations Thank you. I'm gonna have to highlight the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, get all that sunlight in there. And technically, it's a PB for Sparty, so this run will be up twice. Yep, yeah, it's my first Big Boss hard run done. Yeah, you guys will be able to submit the sweet old uh, tournament, Bob. <laughs> well done. All right. Well, thank you so much. We should probably get out of here so you can load up that other game. All right, dudes. All right, well, thank you, gentlemen. Good GGs. Yeah. Thank you. Take care, everybody, and stream. Hopefully you enjoy the next run. It's going to be a uh, close one. See ya. So I think next up is uh, Twin Snakes between uh, Bloom Nuttle and Aurelian. Yep, that's going to be a exciting race to finish up the sequence. Uh, I've been Plywood. I am going to be signing out here. Uh, and Joseph and Tyler will be doing comms for uh, Twin Snakes. Oh, interesting. All right, well, Plywood. Uh, a cold one. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the, the fun, the fun jokes, the fun memes, Joe. It was a, it was a blast. Hey, anytime, man. You know, thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for the commentary. And, uh, you know, hopefully that wasp will, uh, will stay away. Yeah, I'm still on the hunt for the wasp. <laughs> it's like wasp RNG. All right, looks like we're going to get started here, like, rather quickly. No delay. Just straight into it. So this is interesting. Whenever I was looking at the like selected games and I saw that these two guys submitted for both normal and extreme, normal would have been really easy, but the extreme run at a very high level is very entertaining to watch, I feel, and there's a lot of cool tricks to be had here. So can't wait to see, especially for the tank fight, because if you've seen you know the uh, tank fight at a really high level, it is just crazy the amount of work that has been put into this game itself. and and like how far that this game has come. Yeah, the tank fight is definitely probably one of the most critical fights to the run. I would agree. And both these guys, they're they're very well known for uh, going for really risky strats. And especially early in, he's had a bad history of marathons where he would go for a really hard strat and just, for whatever reason, choke it and then lose a bunch of time. So he's looking to uh, redeem himself here. Yeah, I remember Aurelian told me once that to get, like, the ideal run, it was reset on reset for the tank for hours. Many hours, just to get that one fight to be right. Yeah, you know, like, you have to not only play well, but, like, you have to just manage everything beforehand, because, like, you need to have magazines ready, stun grenades, and then you just need to just know exactly... Um, how that fight plays out and it's a very finicky fight it's not a very straightforward fight to like get used to so i'm interested to see which one of these guys comes out on top and then besides that there's a couple of other um, areas as well for like rng but i mean the first big test is uh, gonna be the uh, tank for sure So I think it just in this section, it's just kind of, uh, you know, sit in the locker for two minutes and chill and wait for the elevator to show up as uh, Blue is uh, clearly having demonstrating. Yeah, just kind of having a good time. Yeah, similar to uh, Mugasolid 1, it's just 
kind of like a timer. You just kind of just wait here, wait for the guard, and then you can take a small time saver if you... Oh, no! Oh, Erling got a game over. He messed up the roll getting that frame saver, and he's already behind. Oh, no. That's not good. So he has to play this entire sequence again. So that's a pretty bad time loss. So this is a little bit scary for uh, Team Solid. Yeah, it is It is a hard pill to swallow because, it's again, it's another two minutes that you have to wait for that elevator to come down, including the credits. Okay, what makes it worse is that that was, like, literally just to save frames. It wasn't, like, like you know, something major. He was literally just doing that just to save frames. I can't even recall him ever messing that up in, like, all my time of, like, watching him do runs. I've never seen him mess that up, so that is very uncharacteristic of Erlian. So, interesting to see how this is going to turn out. Now, I mean, given that it, it was kind of like a, you know, a faceplant start, a, as you, you could see, but, like, are yeah. there any potential backup strats that Aurelian could do to try to catch up? Um, well, now he definitely has to do all the risky stuff that, like, he was maybe wanting to, like, take safe at this point, and I believe all of them are going to be going for the same kind of strats, so, I mean, he just has to play well and has to perhaps get really good RNG on the wolf fights, because those are, like, the two big points of uh randomness in the game so those two fights in particular and i believe blue had some trouble with the mantis fight so if alien can execute that fight better then that's good but this is a pretty decent time loss as you can see like blue's about to go into the tank hangar and you know alien's still sitting at the dock so it's gonna be interesting to see how this is gonna turn out this is this completely turns the tables for everything so Do not take the roll. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but just go through that normally. I never go for that roll personally, but I always see him go for it. But like I said, I never see him fail that ever. So I was just shocked that that even failed to begin with. Oh, like with the elevator? Yeah, like I've, I, like, I've never seen him fail that ever. So now we have to make sure that, like, Erlian, you know, doesn't mess up any more than he already has. He has to, you know, dig himself out of the hole rather than dig it deeper, so. Although, uh, the... Like, helipad isn't too bad. Fairly confident he'll get through it. Okay. Yeah, just do like a little, uh, you know, misdirect. Walk on mm. by, because their peripheral vision is uh, an option. Yeah. <laughs> in this game. And then I guess explain about, like, the use of, like, the stun grenade in the vents. Like, like what are those for? So that is a uh, direct carryover from uh, Melga Solid 2. Similar to that game where uh, so swapping weapons while you are you are uh, going prone makes you go faster. Same thing with the vents. So so doing that like little swapping thing makes you actually crawl faster through the vents. And on extreme, it's super important because it lets you get in a, a very good part during the guard cycle. Whereas on normal, it's like not the biggest deal, but like for extreme, this was a big find. So this is one of those like, you know, Metal Gear Solid 2 kind of glitches carried over to Twin Snakes because it's basically the same engine and that's just the one advantage of it here yeah because for those that don't know but like twin snakes was basically mgs2 but reskinned as mgs1 using the same or similar characteristics of graphics and control schemes as mgs2 yeah fairly similar like the only main difference is that the uh, controller used had to have some like cutbacks and they had to change some like bindings because of just the limitations of the gamecube controller and literally, like, they had just put one more bumper button, like, like you know, Z1, Z2, like, it would have been perfectly fine, but but, but because they do not have that, there there are a, a lot of weird inputs, and also there's uh, no select button either, so uh, codecs are a bit different. So on the right-hand side here, you'll you'll uh, see Blue actually waste ammo and uh, do something to Johnny there, and uh, he's doing that to uh, grab a uh, magazine, which is very important for the tank fight coming up. Very intricate fight. And I guess what he's gonna do here is just, uh, rather than just wait for them to come in, you can just stand right at that door and just, uh, you know, just kind of shoot him. Correct, yep. He's just gonna just sit there and uh, try to get all of them right there. Okay, now he's gonna it. have to 
Yeah, he's gonna have to get those like because of the that like because sometimes they can stack in together because of the you know how the body models work and when they spawn in from when they get killed mm -hmm. or knocked out. You know, so sometimes you have to like opt to just get a light shot rather than trying to get them all at once. Yeah. All right, so I think what is, is he gonna try to do? I think he's trying to do like a cutscene skip here. Oh no, these are the last two. He's using this to uh, get some more magazines, I, I think. He's letting Meryl kill the last guards. Yep. Man, I mean, I'll tell you Meryl. what, these guards are, are tanky. Meryl very, just very does tanky. not want to help at all. <laughs> yep, and now he's just emptying his uh, SOCOM just to get some more magazines. Because again, this is all set up for the tank fight. You know, the uh, tank fight is a, is a very monumental piece of the run. It's like the first major roadblock. Like, getting past the tank is like godsend on extreme, so... If these guys can do a really good tank, then that's good. And uh, the alien stairs out the toilet. And right as uh, blue leaves, you'll see alien enter the fight. So, see if like alien can have a uh, slightly better fight because blue did have a couple of, you know, bad things happen. Mainly that like Meryl didn't shoot the guards very well. So, I think alien can salvage a little bit of uh, time here. So. Yeah, and once again, you'll just see him empty his clip at the start, making it seem like it's for nothing, but it's actually just set up for later. It's all mm -hmm. important. What you yeah, for sure. For? Shoot. Don't talk to me like a rookie. I'm telling you, shoot. I mean, see, why can't we get that Meryl right there? <laughs> then yeah, Blue doing these very specific uh, C4 placements, that way he can try to maximize his uh, movement and go into the Ocelot fight, which is laughably easy on this version. It is ridiculously easy. You literally just stand in place and then you can just shoot him in the head. Oh, misses the oh, second shot. He's... <gasps> oh, oh he's no! Okay, now. so this is huge for uh, for um, Aerlian. Is he gonna die here? No way. Okay, yeah, so now he has to kind of like run around and play this like MGS1 oh. a little bit. Ooh. Oh, wow, that was that was scary. Wow. <laughs> so, so yet again, another saving grace for um, Aerlian. Mm -hmm. And not only that, there's still the uh, tank to worry about. So, looks like Meryl kills those guys pretty quickly. Yeah, because in addition to uh, you know, just like just good good optimization of aiming, but like you also get like Meryl is a factor. The tank is a Gigantic factor. But yeah, I didn't realize he was low on ammo. So you'll see him call Meryl here, and unlike uh, the first game, you have to call her because we don't have any kind of event skip to kind of like, you know not make her open up the door, but luckily you can call her from right here, which is pretty nice. I believe in the original you cannot do that. I think you have to... Yeah, in the original out. game you had to, yeah, you had to leave the... Um, yeah, that room where you fight Asla because it's jammed. Yeah. You're not it's one of the nice, the like, uh, like, quality of life changes where, like, like, you don't have to have key cards equipped all the time. You can call from Merlin that room where you couldn't. Just one of like one of those like minor conveniences for um, running this uh, uh, for twin snakes. And then one more uh, major kind of like quality of uh, uh, life change is that the uh, door leading out, you can actually open that door. Because in the original one, you cannot. Yes, that is true. Yeah, you have to go out the long way. Looks like Blue got laser roll, which is something that uh, Aerlian is known to mess up in marathons. So. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Furry, what's up? Hey man. Um, Welcome back. I like how people are going so fast, they start uh, before schedule. So that's great. Well, you know, this is a uh, relay race and, yeah, you know. That's, that's true, that's true, that's great. Sometimes people are just so fast and as you're coming in, getting right to it. Oh blue, yeah, the tank fight. The oh, tank no. fight. So maybe you can explain this because you were kind of behind yeah. this a little bit no too. No one really knows how this fight really works. We just guess and we throw the nades. And if they go into the hole, we get to do extra damage to the guy. Um, yeah, we have setups to try and get them in, but 
but who knows if it's gonna work or not. Looks like Blue's having good luck though. So when so you, you see that little cutscene, that means it's it, it went in. Yeah. So I guess like who was it that actually figured out the like magazine strat for the tank? That was JMC. Uh, he's a mad genius. One of the developers of uh, Dolphin. That's right. He developed Dolphin and uh, just him. <laughs> wait, 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 really? <laughs> no, I'm alone? no, no, no. Okay, okay I'm about to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, if the if the magazine goes in, you get the same little cutscene, and then. You get extra damage uh, on the guy, no matter how you damage him. So you can just shoot him uh, with the M9 after getting the magazine in. And it does more damage than a regular headshot. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, Alien got the YOLO roll as well, man. They're, go they're going all out. Well, and you had to miss it, but um, so currently Alien is working with one continue in the docks. Oh, I saw he that. Went okay, yeah, he went for the frame saver, and then he failed the roll, which I've never seen him do before, by the way, so that was interesting. Wow, so they're going to take it safe at the nuke building. There, There's some crazy stuff you can do where you, like, throw one guard and distract another. Now, Blue, Blue's not going to go for any of that stuff. He went for the you know, easy, clean, fast route there, and now Alien's coming up on the tank. Oh boy, let's see if he has any more luck with these throws. Well, first one goes in. Nice. So, a perfect fight, you have six out of six. Uh... Alright, got the magazine pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So, I got the full damage headshot because of the magazine. The tank's doing some weird stuff here. I don't know if this is supposed to happen. Oof. No, the tank is way oh, too close. No, oh, no, no. Why did that? Why did he do that? Why did the. T He's killing oh, no. Oh, no. Why did the tank drive up to him? That that makes no sense. This tank, dude. Yeah, I mean, you, you can clearly see where, you know, a lot of the early game problems can happen, which starts with this boss fight. The, the, the tank just drove right up to him and he couldn't do it. Whoa, blue taking it very risky there with that cornering. Whoa. Almost blew up there. Oh my goodness, that was spooky. He wants to bring it home for Team Liquid. Like he he smells blood because Alien died or got caught early. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to make it a real race. So because of this now second continue, I wonder if uh, we're gonna see Alien do one of those crazy nuke building strats now, just to, you know try and rally back and uh, give himself yeah, some yeah. more time save. He, he's definitely gonna go for every Yolo strat from here on out. He does that anyway. So that's like Alien's thing. He does Yolo strats. Oh, okay. So. He's gonna go for them, for sure. I don't know if it's gonna be... Oh, I didn't get the cutscene. Sometimes they slide in. The magazines, they like land outside, but then they slide in to the hole. That happened. Oh, like they can actually, so like, they move in? Yes, that can happen. That's why the magazines are so good. I actually didn't know that. Oh, no. Yeah, because they don't explode. They just stay there, right? Forever. But yeah, the ninja fight, uh, we kind of manipulate him to stay in his first phase where he's just trying to fight you uh, he's trying to teach you not to fight with a weapon, but it's, it's very technical, but we kind of just loop him. And yeah, Blue's going to make it look easy. Because Alien Soul tries to finish the fight because he did not get some of these uh, dunks in, so he's got to finish with the M9. Finally done with the tank. He's not He's not going to do the YOLO nuke building. Don't even ask for that in chat, everybody. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> he's, he's not going to do it. It's too crazy. He's already behind. Okay, he's taking it safe. All right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like I've seen a video of him doing the the yellow strats in that room, and it it, it makes me uh, <laughs> makes me hold my breath. Yeah, because you can't even see them on the radar. Like you just have to be very very precise with like without being able to see the guards. But yeah. So clean clean nuke building, clean ninja fight. I think the only thing really to like save him is maybe Wolf RNG at this point and lottery roll. <laughs> so like the two major things to like maybe save I mean, him to like get a, so, a huge lead. So Alien told me he's gonna go for prison roll. Okay. So yeah. But do you think he's gonna go for prison roll? Wait, what's he doing? Oh. Do you yeah you, yeah, you, do get you grab the, those now? Yeah, yeah, you grab the stones. Okay. I haven't been fully up to date with this new route, so. Yeah. 
the the fight the the run for like the next couple of fights is pretty like consistent so neither one of them should i mean he got caught in the dock so i mean who am i to say anything so <laughs> can't say i've but, ever seen that before yeah yeah that's that is the first time anybody's been caught in the docks while running to not the first time it, but... it is the first time are you sure it's never happened before well okay. The, oh, okay, okay, okay. what are you doing <laughs> The freaking crazy direction of the Nikita scared me a little bit. Yeah. They're, they're just trying to, like, squeeze every bit of time save out of everything. It's risky because, you know, if you do something wrong, you lose a lot of time. Now, given that this is on GameCube, like, how often would you rely on analog versus D pad uh, for a run like this? Hmm. Yeah, well, um, it's personal preference, right? Yeah, it's personal preference. Um,. Some strats you want to use the D-pad for, but many times to get the optimal movement, you would need the analog stick. Because, like, I know for clipping through the, the nuclear door with the chaff, like, you want to D-pad that, yes. but there's other times where it feels like, do you go with analog or D-pad? Like, because I feel like some people just like D-pad. I'm just not one of them, but some people right. just do. Yeah, Wait, you like guys D-pad that? The, the nuke building? Yeah, yeah. The oh, I thought analog. What the hell? No, <laughs> analog is bad for that, yeah. I'm, I mean, you can you crazy. can do the entire game either way, but oh no, the oh, chair! Oh, got caught by the chair! Oh no! Yeah, Ninja can stand in the chair, but Snake cannot. So it's not fair. Oh, he's going for the uh, Nikita roll. That's interesting. I don't think Blue went for that at all. Yeah, the punch into Nikita roll oh. is much more difficult, but it's it saves one cycle on the loop. If you get all the Nikita rolls, yes. So you have to get all of them to make it worth. Well, I forget if you have to get all of them, but you need to get at least like two. Whack. I think he got him, so... He's, he's I, think I think you should have rolled into him maybe, just so you have to wait for, the anim for that so, animation. But... The Mantis fight has a very cool skip in it. Um, there's three phases to this fight. First you fight Mantis, then he like animates Meryl, and then you fight him again. You skip one of the Meryl phases by doing very precise oh. damage to him. Oh, the ninja got away from Merlion! Oh no! no. The ninja uh, got away! And he can't oh, catch no. him! No! Put away your weapon, dude, come on! Okay, okay. He, got oh. him, he got him. He lost a lot of time catching the ninja, though. Jesus. Yeah, the ninja can get away. He's, he's just, you know, you have to kill him quickly or he gets away. Yeah, Blue got the face skip. Now, you get that face skip by doing a certain amount of damage. Yes. Before that happens. Yes, you have it's to like do a, a very, ball. very precise amount of damage. And you control the damage you do by like doing a certain number of punches and then a certain number of shots. And yeah, it's it's a sign error. It's like it's, they put down like less than instead of less than or equal to, which caused the error. So it just skips a phase. The weakest link on Team Solid. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty bad for Erlin here, right? You know? Yeah, well, to, uh, to be fair, he does have quite a bit of uh, padding, so, I mean, he's got a little bit of wiggle room, but he's starting to lose a lot more time, and it's yeah, kind of you know, Mr. scary. Mr. World Record Holder here, you know, dying twice on a run. So, it's, uh, it's interesting. But, yeah. It's just, it's nerves. It's probably nerves, because you know, when you're racing, it's very different from when you're doing attempts. So. Yeah, for sure, it's a different environment, it's just... Oh, Stuff yeah. will happen and they'll just pop up and they'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's very different. Like, Alien Gosh. will reset over the smallest things. So he, he being in this situation where he's like behind and trying to catch up, he's like rarely ever in this situation. Now, so. I guess explain like what comes up here, like between changing the weapons and then what he's about to do with Mer here for blue. Um, so Meryl has a little dialogue line where she says, you know, I thought you were good with dogs. And you can skip that by like putting her into like some sort of uh, hurt animation. So like if you damage her from far away and then just roll into her, uh, you skip that dialogue. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Especially since you like refined it to where it's like almost impossible to miss. You know what the sad thing is, is that I don't go for that, despite the fact it's an Otacon route, and I don't want to try to hurt her, <laughs> but she dies anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this this run hurts Meryl very much. Like, a lot of strats just revolve around like, smacking her. Using her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. It just happens to be faster.
Yeah, and I mean, the game wants you to do that too, especially in this fight with Mantis. They want you to hit her. Like, there's no, like, really no way around. It's like, maybe it's just get, the game starts telling you, like, it's like, you gotta do it. Mm -hmm. And, oh, is Blue gonna get hit by the dogs? No, he's not. Yeah, Very he, lucky. Yeah. Kind of had a shaky uh, exit from the caves, but didn't get hit, so. Yeah, he wasn't lined up with the exit when he rolled, so he had to move on the ground. I gave the wolves a little chance to attack him, but they didn't. <laughs> Alright, um, Alien's gonna try the Mantis strat. See if he gets it. So far he's not had a good Oh, he, tank. Missed, he missed a punch, he missed a oh, punch. Oh no. This is gonna be bad, he has to get that punch in. Get, get the punch, no, he, he got, he kicked him. This is wrong, the damage is wrong. Alien. Oh no. You kicked him, you didn't punch him. Oh. So, no phase skip. I, I guess at, so. at this point you... Just go crit shots and just vote for the best. He he got stunned by bumping into him and then he couldn't punch him. He kicked him instead and it messed up the damage. Really unfortunate. So the wrong amount of damage here. It shouldn't I, work. Yeah. I just say it's probably one of the most like common mistakes for me when running this is getting too close to him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This that's a thing that can happen with a lot of like, other enemies. Like you just go too close and you bump and bark into whatever. Bonk into them, yeah, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. And but if then, only it was an Emma bump, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Emma bump good, but Mantis bump, uh-uh. Uh, you don't want to... Yeah, bump, bumps are not good in this game. So. Yeah, yeah, Alien's just having a fear run overall. It's okay, because Wolf can... Oh god, he's missing. Help. Oh no. Maybe he got it. So for this, for the Cyber Wolf fight, you aim just below the railing because she drops down and her head is right there when she drops down. Blue's calling out a, a pro. No, he, he got it. Nice call out. Wow, very nice. That's Galaxy excellent. brain. Yeah, yeah, that, that was smart. I, I don't know how he did that, um, but he predicted it. Making the reads. So that's a really good fight, so Alien's probably going to need something close to that if he wants to try and maybe make a slight comeback here, so he definitely needs to yes. have a good fight. Oh, he needs to not get hit by the dog. dog. <laughs> the, um, yeah, so Alien's no. going to do the Meryl dialogue skip right here again if you missed it the first time. So he's going to shoot Meryl and then roll through her. Shoot, roll, there we go, skip the dialogue. With the M9, I prefer doing that with the SOCOM, but... Well, you'd have to menu to this SOCOM. Yeah. Right? That would waste time. I guess so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if you put it on M9 previous being leading awkward. up to it? Well, you wouldn't have it on previous because yeah. you just fought uh, the Ninja with Nikita and M9. Oh, that's previous. right. So you would have to menu to get it on your previous. Yeah. Um, instantly submitting to the torture, as any super soldier would. Uh... I mean, he didn't even hit the, the keystroke on the keyboard yet, and he's like, oh, I give up! I give up! Hey, I'd do the same thing if someone was gonna electrocute me. Yeah, I'm good, man. She can die. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't I mean, know that. I mean, what if it wasn't really gonna electrocute him? Mean, he wouldn't have known. Uh, you, you can kind of guess based on the situation he's in. Kind of, it could have been a massage it. table. He just didn't give it a chance. Mm. Yeah. Also, uh, if you mash too much, then auto fire just, just like me, so that can happen so, too. Johnny has. Some, oh, no. So Johnny sneezes when he's walking around here, and you can skip his sneeze by making him So if you knock on the wall, you trigger a dialogue from him. And that makes him- he can't talk and sneeze at the same time, so he just doesn't sneeze. And the sneezes make him stop, so it's slower if he sneezes. So you just want to overwrite his sneezes with dialogue. That's what Blue is doing there. It's, it's pretty, pretty clever. Doing a little shuffle. That's how sneezing works in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you get distracted and you don't sneeze. Yeah, that's true. So we saw Erlian got knocked over by the dogs again, which if you didn't see it the second time, they kind of have like a slight ragdoll effect where they kind of like fling themselves towards you and their like hitbox extends outward and just knocks you over. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, dog missiles. Dogs are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Freaking homing dog missiles coming at you in the Pretty caves. Much. 
I think Snake's broken on uh, on Blue Stream. Yeah. Kind of a seizure. <laughs> you know, these, these high APM speedrunners, they can't just sit still for like a minute. They have to press buttons all the time. So it's, uh, they'll start having seizures whenever they're <laughs> forced to wait. All right, see. Uh... Oh, and there's the third knockdown. As you oh, saw, no. the missile dog just flung himself towards Alien. Oh, that, that second dog almost so, out. Blue's not going to go for prison roll, right? He doesn't need to. He's got a lead. He doesn't have to you know, throw away the lead. What are you? Something crazy like that, right? Will you go for prison roll? No. Oh, Alien oh, missed the no. first shot. Oh, no. What is going on, Alien? Oh, no. What is going on? Oh, she's going to hide forever. Yeah, he's not going for prison roll. He's not going for Wait, oh, but he did do the new strat where you like. Yeah, it's you. like a little bit of time save. Yeah. It's, I mean, you might it's as like, well, right? Yeah, it skips a codec call later because the game gets confused. The game oh, so that's split. what um leaving the room does, like without yes. the gear, even though we just saw him with the gear, but now he's <laughs> without the gear again. <laughs> yes. Uh, the game gets really confused on to like whether you escape the prison or not, and so it's it's in a very strange uh state right now so it's gonna skip a codec call that's supposed to load when you when you see Merrill's blood on the ground you should like get a codec call with Colonel Campbell it's gonna skip that interesting yeah yeah because I was about to say like there's always the codec you get when you leave right just telling you saying hey you made it you should go over there mm -hmm. <laughs> right like just they're yeah. just telling you to get moving right. but I didn't realize it skips that yeah, it, it skips because it still it thinks you're still in the prison because you left so fast that it didn't register. It's it's it registers the story flag when Johnny gets knocked out. So if you leave before he gets knocked out, uh, it never registers it as you know, progressing the story or whatever. Kind of they're sure to um like like actually tell is that there'd be no gun cameras in the hallway. Yeah, that's like to know that like you got it. Mm -hmm. And you know. I think Snake doesn't have his shirt on. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. So, is he gonna go for prison roll guaranteed? Yes, yes, Alien will go for. He has to if he has wants to have any chance of it. I mean, he didn't take risky nuke building, but I mean, risky I nuke. He hasn't practiced that. Okay. In, and it barely saves any time, but prison roll does save a lot of time. So, so prison like, roll. How much time would he save? He'd save like 15 seconds. That's quite big. Yeah. So prison roll is when you're leaving the prison, um, you do a uh, roll towards your items and you grab them as Johnny is chasing you out of the cell. Uh, and you have to grab them in that roll. The game stops you when you go beyond a certain point in that room. So you just have to roll from the maximum distance and grab your items. And if you can do that, um, you can just like leave instantly. Shut up in there, and you don't have to like, come back to the room like Blue did. And then you'll skip the codec call as well. Hey, shut up in there, will ya? Hey, shut up in there, Guess will ya? Guess he's giving him uh, the hey. same uh, shuffle treatment. Hey. Shut yep. up in there, will ya? Shut up in there, will ya? Shut up in there, will ya? Shut up in there, will ya? And then with the handkerchief now, of course, the uh, dogs will. Not attack the loose, so it's free to use. You know, hand, though. Oh, get some dead zone, though. Yeah, the handkerchief is so close to the rope that it just doesn't, like... Might as well it's, just... Yeah, it's it's like a half a second time loss to menu to it. But, I mean, come on. It's More worth it. it. Yeah. yeah. But, hey, if Alien's thinking about um, catching up, he might, might think about skipping that. Uh... I'm afraid. I'm I'm really stressed out right now. Not only yeah, is I'm on Team Solid, but just looking at this speed run in so, like in his condition, I'm scared. So with prison roll, uh, if you miss it, you lose like 10 or 15 seconds. But if you get it, you save like 25 seconds. Uh, or well, you get you save 15 seconds better. now because we found another setup for not doing it. But yeah, so either gain 15 seconds or lose 15 seconds. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah, I'm sure he'll try it. He's, he's already set up to try it. You see how he's positioned what himself? The hell? Like a little further away from the door. Yep, he rolled out. Okay, he's going for it. 
gets the turn. Oh, he he missed it. He, he's pretty oh. close though. That, that's a good attempt. That's a solid. Oh, attempt. that. Oh, he's got one leg in there. He's so close. Yeah, you have to be surprisingly deep in there. To oh, not again. Oh. It was a good attempt. Oh. That was a pretty good attempt. But, yeah, he he would have been able to leave while Johnny was in that cutscene. So you, you get control back of Snake in that cutscene. You can leave. That was like as close as you can get it. So. And, and and now he's not gonna skip the codec either. Because yeah, he just so left the regular way. Mm -hmm. He didn't actually like mess up the story flags. Man, this game really punishes you for missing them. So yeah, Blue took it safe. He got the uh, got the skip. Oh, wall well, guy knows. And it, the discs are mine. Uh, he. Um, Aliens discs are known to cause uh, crashes at the very end when he's about to get world record. <laughs> so. The GameCube sense it and it's like, you know what? I'm done here. I actually need to get some uh, uh, new discs. Mine have been kind of been weird. Like I've been getting some like. Oh jeez, what loads. is? What is <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he's good. He's good. He's good. He got it. Oh, that was that was super <laughs> scary for a second. <laughs> That well, the caution be... carry over into the next room. No, no, no. Okay, okay. But it was very. It could have. He could have died there. Yeah. But he would have lost like ten seconds, maybe. I mean, Tyler, if you were just scared, I mean, I was just scared just now. <laughs> <laughs> the entirety yeah. of like Aliens Run is just stressful to watch. Yeah, it, it's he's. It's like a vicious cycle where he's getting more stressed and he's doing there? worse, and he's getting more stressed because of it. Just... Yeah. <laughs> Just like that never-ending war pulse, sometimes you just can't pull out of it. Yeah. Interesting to see what this gap is going to be towards the end of the game. With all the mistakes he's making, I, I don't think he can make four minutes worth of mistakes, but you never put it, like, beyond Alien's abilities to <laughs> <laughs> four minutes worth of errors in a run. <laughs> I mean, if there's anything I've seen tonight, I mean, anything could happen. Yes. It, it's possible. I don't know how he would do that. I mean, he'd have to mess up in every conceivable way. It might happen. Also, a uh, slight update as well. So you see the uh, timers here. Well, we also have some people who are tracking what the IGT is, and Team Liquid is actually slightly ahead in terms of IGT. Wait, so Team Solid is winning RTA, but Team Liquid is winning IGT? Yes, and it's that because is... of how MGS4 went down, essentially, is like, the big thing. Well, in that case, Team Liquid's already won the IGT battle, pre I think, at this point. It's Probably, yeah. To say. But, of course, this is an RTA race, so I have to wait and see. Just wanted to update you guys on that. This tower climb up to the hind fight, which, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, for like this difficulty, it's pretty yes. normal well, as far as like like well, like how it goes through. It's it's a different fight on extreme because he he comes up faster. He doesn't hide for as long, so the, the RNG of how long he's gonna hide, which isn't normal, doesn't exist in extreme. Mm -hmm. Um, so the the fight is less RNG for sure, which is good, but it's also more difficult because you can actually die during. The fight. Whereas in normal, like, you'd never worry about your health. But in extreme, you kind of have to move around and dodge shots. Um, so it's a different fight. It's a different fight. It's, it's, but people like the extreme version better because it has less RNG. And the execution isn't that difficult. So overall, it's a, it's a better fight on extreme than normal. I mean, would you typically try to go with a ration backup for something like Hind D? Um, yes. I think so, yeah, because that's like the one ration spot really is like that fight. Well, and Raven as well. Sometimes people yeah. ration for Raven. And, you know, there's been times where even Rex has been problematic, you know, so having that ration. But people are going for big boss ranks, so they don't want to use their ration. I mean, you can use one, so. Oh, you use one get to. Yes, so you, 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 use, yeah, one. you can use up to one. But we only get one. Uh, you get one from Otacon, but I believe you can farm some off of certain guards. Oh. Um, the, the sniping bridge after Tower A, like, they have a chance to drop some. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, that's right. the only one where I've seen it. Yeah, well, in that case, then there's really no risk of losing your own behind because you have the ration back. But then Raven becomes slightly more risky. Yeah. Uh, the, the inside throw attempt from Alien. It's a very clever strategy when you stun two guards by throwing the stun grenade in the middle of the yeah. space in the It's like it failed, though, unfortunately. Yeah, it failed, yeah. It's a really cool strategy. Uh, extreme tower climb is a little different. The idea is the same, throw stuns to, at the right times to get the guards. Apparently you also shoot them. And the high D fight on blue screen, which is you're gonna run around, watch the shots, shoot the stinger, nothing too complicated. Now, Alien is bleeding, this is this is kinda dangerous. I think that's scary Felix coming back again. Yes, this is kind of, kind of risky because if he gets shot, he will die. Just don't get shot. He should not get shot here. Get up. Oh my god. Uh, why'd you roll there? Uh, he would have had to do that whole climb again. You know, you know how crazy that was? He didn't use the rat. He would have to do that whole climb again. That's three minutes of climbing that. That would have been GG. Would have been Team, GG no re, yeah, 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 right there. Would have been over. He bet everything on not being shot by that guard, and he messed up because he didn't climb as fast as he could. <laughs> it's so, so scary. But hey, now we're at the rappel, so yes. it's all good. Save the ration. Woohoo! Wow, he's only at the. Wow, I thought he was gonna fight the hind. <laughs> 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 wow. Oh. wow. Uh, yeah. And it looks like Blue's having a pretty decent hind fight. Yeah, that's fine. He's, he's no risk of dying. Now, I know you mentioned on Extreme that he, he moves a lot faster, which I, I've noticed right away when going from hard to Extreme, but like, how often would you say that when he goes down, if that's just purely RNG-based, or if it's position-based on where you're, oh, like, pulling um... out? He goes down after you shoot him. Um, it's it's sometimes possible to get two shots in before he goes down, but he's going to go down after you shoot him. It's just how fast he comes back up. In extreme, he comes back up very quickly. Or, like, what about those times where, like, he kind of, like, sweeps around, like, the oh, ones like when you he, don't want to get? Yeah, when he loses. Yeah. Him. Yeah, I'm not sure if they happen more or less often in extreme. I think they happen just as often. I mean, like, they can happen. I mean, like, there are times where I do get it where he kind of goes from one side to the other and then he pops up. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like, I don't know if sometimes if that's because of how you influenced it or if it's just purely the game deciding, yeah, I'm going to come up this time, the I mean, next time, and I'm just going to chill. The fight is deterministic in that if you do the same inputs, it'll behave the same way every time. But, like, this, like, you know, your movements affect boss RNG in this game. So, like, you know, there's it's very difficult to actually manipulate. Uh, bosses to do what you want. So now I guess Blue here is doing like the same kind of like uh, strat you would do yes. in MGS One. Yes, the MGS One is what actually inspired this strat in Twin Snakes. So I saw the MGS One runners do this. I'm like, I'm gonna try this in Twin Snakes, and it worked. So you can <laughs> well, imagine uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> you thank MGS One for that one. Yeah, so when I was uh, researching strats for this game, I looked through the entire MGS1 run to see if I could like incorporate any of those strats. And I think we did incorporate, I can't remember the other ones, but we did incorporate a few MGS1 strats. I don't know what. Uh, what? Uh, Blue stream. Yeah, yeah his is kind of chopping up for me. Yeah. I'm I thought sure we'll be fixing it. Yeah, yeah like I thought it was just me for a second. <laughs> Yeesh. So, how far would you say uh, Blue is ahead of Erlian right now? Like, He's at least it... two and a half minutes ahead, I'd say at least. Okay, so you think that it's still salvageable as far as like yeah, not for being the, a total for, loss? Yeah, for Team Solid, it, there's still... I think Team Solid is still in the lead. But it's certainly manageable. Uh, for, for either side could win at this point. Four horsemen fight. Yeah, you just shoot them in the head with the M9. Too bad you can't so you can't just put a C4 down and oh, then blow yeah. them all up. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's like a normal strat, isn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. it's a, you kill it's all of them instantly. It's great. Yes.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think I saw Tyler do it once, and I was like, my god, why can't I do that? <laughs> I think they won't even die if you do it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like, they won't even die, so... They have two good shows. Extreme. I guess here comes uh, Sniper 2 for uh, for Blue. Wow. Um, so here, it, on Extreme, it's a little different than normal. In, in normal, you can just spam shots and try to shoot, shoot like a machine gun and try to catch your But here, you have to save your bullets for free. You still stand on the angle box, but you're not going to use like I think you need a minimum of 10. For Raven, like at an absolute minimum, uh, to like take them out from beginning to end, assuming you don't miss anything. Well, if you do miss, you can use the M9. You can use the well, shots. You can use the M9 to finish them. Yeah, it was like a like last ditch effort. Yeah. You need to have a rational. Okay, Blue has plenty. So, a little more than halfway done in the hind fight. Looks like he's getting some fairly good, like, fight RNG from him uh, face two. Useless piece of yeah. junk! He's shooting, like, before he even has a block if he's trying to <laughs> cut corners. <laughs> yeah, he just shoots and then gets to him. I was gonna say, does that actually, like, like, as long as, like, you're within splash, um, distance, no, but what happens is, if there's a missile in the air and you get a block, the you missile will start from, even if it wasn't going to be Yeah. Or I was almost even thinking, like, if he shot the line, like it was like a free missile and it hit him. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's doing quite that, yo. Because, like, sometimes I've gotten lucky where it flies overhead and you get a blind shot, but nothing where I'm just gonna, like, you know, shoot ahead of time Which thinking it's gonna be there and then it just jukes it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little too I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, given the uh, for you know unfortunate series of events, you know, I mean, sometimes you just have to pull out the crazy. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been surprised if he did do that, but he got a decent fight in. And then you have to fight these three idiots here, the one that like literally stares you in the face but can't hit you. Well, he did. Oh, what? What? Okay, Blue's oh, Blue's no. messing up this. Pretty. Oh, he's giving him a chance. Yeah, he lost like five seconds there. Okay. Yeah, that, that's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to just shoot them in the head really fast. Okay. Have you ever tried um, just like body shooting the first one closest to you and then roll into them and then shoot the other two? You could do that, um, but the time that you would spend rolling is, is wasted because you can just like pop, 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 shoot them really yeah, fast. Yeah, because you can just lock on and then do a slight adjustment for the headshot really quickly. Yeah, you lock on, you tap up, and then you're on, your, on their head and you just pull the trigger. Oh, because like I always thought for some reason I feared like getting punched over, like you get knocked over if you oh, didn't address yeah. the guy next to you. If you're slow, then you will get knocked over. But if you if you do it really fast, then the guy behind you doesn't have a chance to knock you over. Speaking of that furry, that uh, reminds me, there was a Dog Solid 2 video that is interesting that could translate over to Twin Snakes. Let me go find it real quick and then I'll... I'll take I'll, a look at it. Yeah, 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 of course. I like rarely just have thought about it and I don't want to forget it, so let me go and find that real quick. Don't worry, this is a this is a bird friendly stream by the way. Yeah, they're just, just shooting tranquilizers, they're not dead. <laughs> yeah, we, we we don't need we don't need any uh calls to PETA. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. Not in the game where every boss is named after an animal and you kill them. Sure. So I guess now comes up as the uh probably one of the most uh probably hilarious like cheese strats. Yeah. Um, he has a big gun that he can't aim, so you just snipe him from a distance. Too late to take it. Don't die. The old oh, he broke away. This is not supposed to happen. You're supposed to keep him on. I don't know exactly how you do that. But, uh, I mean, Blue has a back. So, of course. I mean, I think one of the well, I guess perhaps slower, but like guaranteed ways is like you slow up on your first shot. Because I've definitely had it where if you shoot immediately and you don't space out the rest to kind of make up for it, then he has a chance to like break away before like getting locked in. 
That's interesting. Cause this like Pinewood is... was telling me that. Yeah. It was this like something is... to do with like spacing out the shots. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying this fight is so different. Than, uh, you know, the strat. I'm more of a normal expert, so. No, yeah, no, yeah, that makes sense. But uh. So yeah. I don't even know what Blue just did. <laughs> Cause like it, it's partially based on your position, but it also depends on like how you space out the shots. Like if you shoot too fast on extreme, mm -hmm. then he's gonna break away even if you're hitting him. Cause like yeah. it's, it's just it's going too fast. That's the thing with this game. Manipulating bosses is so finicky. Oh, absolutely. The, the spacing of your shots can make a difference. Well, because it's like you're trying to be fast, but you have to restrain yourself, is how I looked at it. Yeah. Like, you don't want to just spam it even though you want to. Oh, really? Oh. Okay, there he goes. Yeah, decent, decent final move, too, from Alien. Okay, so Blue's not going to go for the stick up on uh, the guard up here. Yeah, is this, this room. Very, very um, scary anytime you go through here because you can be spotted by these guys if you mess up. Yeah, because if there's anything that terrifies me in this game besides the tank is that stick up that Blue did not do. Because you can, if you yeah. turn up the stairs just right, and if you're fast enough, you can get it where you can roll them over. It's one less guard, but it is so reset heavy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it runs. Not a, it's not a thing you would do in a race, definitely not. Yeah, it's like it's it's a place where a run goes to die if you want to try to do that. Yeah, so Blue's gonna go into the control room here. And he's gonna lose the key. It's gonna fall down. In in Twin Snakes, we drop down off the off the rail. But in this game, there's a weird um, uh, thing that they could die if you press the Y button to catch on to the line at the bottom. If you press it on a specific frame, we call it the kill frame. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, it's like an anti-mash thing. So if you're mashing on every frame, you'll die. So this right, sometimes like this, it. yeah, it kills runners sometimes if they mash too hard. So you have to like be very careful with your drop yeah. down. Yeah, I can't tell you how many runs <laughs> I've let go just because of that drop. Oh, it happened to you? <laughs> oh, absolutely, it's happened to me. Uh, did, did someone explain to you why it happened? Yeah, like it was, uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, Wall Guy or someone said, yeah, it's yeah, a five, yeah. uh, kill frame drop, and I was like, oh, oh, that's why I shouldn't over spam it. Yeah, yeah, you should, you should definitely not spam it, because you'll hit the kill frame more often if you spam. Very light spam, like, very casual mesh, probably. Like, I even try to, like, not really time it, but I try to, like, like, after, like, one second, I, I start spamming it. Because if you mm -hmm. spam it from the drop, then I find it that you're just gonna die most times. Yeah, it's if you can get a timing down, I think a quick double tap would be the best strategy. But oh, I'm not, I'm not that good at it yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, like what I'll yeah. try to do is be like, okay, one, two, and then on the two is when I'm supposed to get it. And on most times, I, I, I could get it, but yeah, there is like maybe the one out of like, maybe like five drops where I just miss it anyway. <laughs> you know, because like yeah. my, my, my input on my screen was like way off. Yeah, no matter um, how how much you practice it, there's still a chance that you're going to miss it because it's just, like, difficult. Yeah, it's like you can have the best run of your life just to have it die at the infamous drop, and it's happened it, to me. Like, yeah, world, re world record attempts, like, runs that were on world record based on that. It was either that or someone told me that the stick-up on that first guard was, like, another one. Like, it was, like, a reset death trap or something. On extreme, it definitely is. Mm-hmm. Alright, so now Aurelian's gonna take his go at for uh, Raven 2. Alright, so first shot comes in pretty good. Going to Wall Guy, Team Liquid is over a minute ahead. Okay, so he also breaks away. So if that's the case, then Team Solid is now looking for Solid. Even less so after what Alien is having to do here. Shoot Raven oh. with an M9. Switch to the ration. Oh, no. Switch to the ration. Oh man, that, that, that's what are you doing? Oh. He's dying back. Gotta get this hit. No! Why? Oh, oh what? Switch to the... Did he not have the ration? <laughs> he's got it, right? He has that. He's just stubborn. Oh my. Are you kidding me? What are you saving the ration for? Um, he's saving it for after the run, obviously. 
I, this doesn't make sense. You don't need it for Rex. If he did die on the fade out, he could have avoided that with the ration. Well, I mean, it could have saved him for like one more hit, which is all oh, he needed. My. It, and it yeah. broke away again. I think that's so okay. Cool. I don't like this. Right, he should be. Come, don't get shot. Do not get shot. He's gonna make this hit. There he goes. Wow. Uh, last bullet. Uh, well, if the previous time loss didn't put the nail in the coffin, I think that just did. Yeah. But hey, anything can happen. Lottery roll can happen. So I mean, and Blue's just playing a very consistent game. He's not messed up majorly in any way. Any, in any way. How's he gonna lose like a minute thirty, at from here? This just doesn't make any. I mean, unless if he dies to either Rex or Liquid. Unlikely. I mean, that's what it would it's, take. I mean, if you know Blue Metal, this guy, this guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to like say anything to get the scary feelings to go away. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so it, it's just... okay. If Alien gets the biggest lottery roll of his life, the biggest one, yeah. Blue somehow dies to liquid, like like just accidentally falls off the. <laughs> just... Doesn't climb back oh, up. <laughs> and he d dies at like the very end of the fight, so he has to do the whole thing again. Then maybe, like we're pushing it, even there's a chance. But... I don't know, man. This is this was a. Uh... A tale of two different runs. Very different, very consistent run versus a run that was like just uh, messing up strats everywhere. Which, believe it or not, feels like a realistic experience to me because I've ex I've seen both sides of it, right? Like a run where it's just great, everything's going your way, and then the next run it's like you're you're just wishing that it's over. Cool. You know, it's just like you like. And I feel for both of them because, I mean, this is not an easy category. It is so easy oh, to mess no. up in any of this stuff. It's it's just like MGS2. It's very intensive. There's a lot of tricks involved. And it's so easy to fall behind on any of it. You know, not to try to put anyone down because these are, like, two of the best runners I'm, I'm watching right now. And it, it's so easy to fall prey to any of it. It's also because they go... Jeez, which lose you time if you mess up. So... They're I mean, not going yeah, for safe yeah. and consistent stuff. They're going for time saves. All right, so that was a good Rex run from uh, from Blue. Mm-hmm. So Rex should never give anyone like issues because it's pretty easy on Extreme as well. Um, there's just like slight movement adjustments you do while you're shooting. All right, now it's a really intense for the drop and oh. Dude, it was such a big grab! Oh, that, that was uh, man, that, that that actually got my heart weight up seeing that. That that looked like it was a late grab. He didn't go for the roll, the rat roll as we call it, where you roll probably as you throw the grenade. Probably, yeah, yeah, try yeah. not to get more behind than he already is. Yeah, so it was just strange because he kind of needs that now. Like before, I could say like he needs the yellow strats. Maybe he's making it on water roll. Yeah. I think he just doesn't want to mess up anymore. Trying to finish clean. Yeah, finish strong. So I guess, how do you avoid the missiles on Rex too? Like what Blue just did? Like he didn't even move. Yeah, that's it. He's on move. <laughs> yeah, don't move. He doesn't hit you. Well, like, cause like, is that is it just cause like the splash zone isn't wide enough to hit from where you start? Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, he fires yeah. right like directly behind you enough to where you can just sit there and you can just keep well, on shooting. The, him. The, the caveat is if you take too long to kill him, then he will hit you. Yeah, so, which is scary. It'll take forever. You, have to, he'll you get still it. have to kill him fast. Oh, he got I mean, a little one there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's aliens opening. So I guess kind of like explain like what the lottery roll is because I think there's people that might be like wondering like what the yeah, hell we're talking so, about kind of a thing, right? So when you roll into Liquid, you have, he doesn't have any iframes, so you can hit him multiple times in the same roll. He just gets knocked out of the way to avoid getting hit multiple times. Um, but if you have him stuck in the corner and he can't get shoved out of the way when you roll at him, you can catch him with the roll like multiple times in a single roll. So you do several takes of damage. Um, 
in the single roll. You can take as much as half of his health bar away by rolling at him in the corner. Oh, that was a weird kick Blue just got there. Um, yeah, Liquid does do a kick. He's doing a punch okay, move or a punch punch kick, but he does it so slowly that Blue just like, stops oh, it. Oh, no, it just went short. All right, so... decent fight. Yeah, the lottery roll is really hard to do. I mean, I've been running the game and I only got it once. Yeah, I was lucky even at that. Yeah, you have to have a lot of practice in before you can start getting it with any consistency. I, I still can't do it, so. Yeah. I mean, cause like it's part like manipulation. You want them to get them to move spot. You have to time the roll just right. And the manipulation it's... is the easy part. Uh, it's the positioning the and the angle of the roll. Yeah, you yeah. can manipulate him pretty easily every time you go in the corner. Oh, it uh, looks like he's having uh, some fun with the guard over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guards can't shoot you from there. For some reason, they don't walk up and try to shoot you. Around the I mean, he's trying. I mean, he's trying. I mean, you can't blame them. <laughs> I mean, maybe the Galukovic soldiers could have had a yeah. chance there, but I mean, the genomes, yeah, yeah, you kind of yeah. give them, I uh, gotta give them some slack. He was trying to be Ocelot and you know, ricochet off the wall. And... <laughs> <laughs> Man, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> so just as another reminder is that we were going to cut off the time at Fade to White, I believe. Yes. So that's going to be the cutoff mm -hmm. of the time here, yeah. just for everyone in the chat that doesn't know. That's how we swap RTA for Twin Snakes, even though there is another codec and we still have to skip a couple things, but for RTA purposes, we just stop it there. Well, um... Yeah, I, th I think Team Liquid probably has us in the back at this point. Crazy. And Alien had a four-minute lead to work with. That's That's... That's fascinating. I believe you said like, you know, 30 minutes ago, I don't think Erlian can can throw away a four minute lead. Yeah, I, I didn't think he could do it, but he can. He can do anything. Prove us wrong. He can do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if he gets lottery roll, like first try lottery roll, half health, I think he uh, may. That's, but that's asking a lot, yeah. I don't know, man. That's like the one thing that I can think of, of like maybe him making a slight comeback. Because I mean, Blue's Liquid wasn't that great, but it wasn't terrible either. So if, if like, you know, yeah, if he gets I a mean, really great Liquid, like the best Liquid you could possibly get, then maybe there could be a slight opportunity to maybe slightly bring it back into favor. Yeah, I haven't done the math on it. I mean, I just went by what Wall Guy said a while back. Based on those numbers, I didn't know. Maybe things have changed since Yeah. And that is one person's calculation. Yeah. Maybe if he finds escape skip. Yeah, I mean that would that would do a lot of good for, for everybody. Finally just so skip this section of just shooting liquid a million times and he doesn't die. Maybe time is unless it takes all the race happens, like hey guys, yeah, right here. Alright, good phase one. Against blue side, it looks like he's having a pretty standard escape. All right, so it's gonna be coming up soon for blue. Now, okay, so twenty, so six point three fifty five is the final tally for Team Liquid. So now we have to wait on Bud. That was a bit of a lead streak. It was like six twenty three fifty four. I can't do it. The very best. So the fade, fade to white had disappeared. That's when the split got hit. Usually we hit it when as soon as the fade to white starts. There you go. Ah! Final one or two, I think. Ah! As long as the other split oh, wait, is that a miss? on the same. That wasn't a miss. He walked around with a machine gun first, and then players the fight that held up and just went back to the head. Ah! Yeah, maybe it was just more amazed at the fact that Liquid only has one screen when he gets hit to notice if he missed or not. <laughs> I mean, because for people that run the game, I mean, it's like, you kind of notice these It's like, he's always got one scream. Yeah, I don't I don't think Alien can... There's just not enough time. Would have been world record if not for the early game, but dang. Dang. 
That's something to compete against, huh? Someone on world record pace. And he was also setting a world record okay, of so another that was <laughs> Gonna try it again. Oh, there you go. There's a nice little ladder roll there. Oh, that, yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, okay so at least he's reading himself a little bit. Right, so. Oh, it was a freezing mm. number, excuse me. He has two minutes. He has to play perfect. Wait, can it can be done? Okay. I don't think it can. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he oh. Even with perfect play. Ah, oh, feels bad on that last roll there. Ah, uh, he needed that roll. No. The escape itself is a minute 30. At least a minute 30. Yeah, there's no way. Hurry! This, this really was... I mean, Blue played the way he usually plays. This was all early. I'll take the wheel. Like changing... Uh -oh. the tables here. A surveillance camera. Well, I think like Tyler said earlier, like, I mean, getting caught in the docks, it's like, it, it's uh -oh. it's just those little things that sometimes it just, it, it can affect the way you, um, not only how you play the game, but like how you assess things later. You know, it's it's just Al the way Alien plays. Like, if, if it was any other runner in this situation, they're like, yeah, I have a four minute lead, I'm just gonna play it safe. Alien just has to go yo. It's just the kind of person he is. He always has to go yo. No matter what the situation, so something, you know, that's why he has the world record because he went YOLO in his record. But in in races, you know, YOLO gets you four minutes behind. <laughs> well, GG's to everyone on uh, Team Liquid. It was a fun race. <laughs> went li literally went down to the last game because there was a sizable lead by the time MGS4 was done, and that still was not enough and. Team Liquid prevails, so good job to everyone on Team Liquid. Yeah, yeah, Team Liquid. Great job. Especially the MVP. Blue carrying them on. The Alien. <laughs> on his back. <laughs> Alien MVP, no! No. <laughs> Don't do my boy like that. No. <laughs> I really did think the teams were a little unbalanced. I thought Team Solid had it. But hey, man. You thought they were unbalanced, really? I thought that they were yeah, fairly balanced. Think. Well, oh, up, up until up until Twin Snakes, they were very unbalanced. Like Team Solid was weird. Really? Yeah. But oh then... well. I guess yeah. In terms of but like, I mean, in terms of like, you know, setting up the teams, I feel like, like they were fairly balanced. Like that's what we were trying to do is like get them as balanced as possible. But like, I mean, you know, they, they were yeah, they were as balanced. The runs, as yeah. yeah, they were as balanced as possible, but they were still unbalanced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but they actually were better balanced than I thought. Yeah, and I have to say, like, I only caught maybe, like, maybe, like, half the races today, and then especially since, yeah, I commentated the last run with Plywood, and th this was just, like, an amazing thing altogether. I mean, just well well job to, well done to everyone. Yeah, you know, this is definitely exciting to watch. Yeah, it takes a lot of, like, you know, behind-the-scenes kind of work to get this actually up and going. There's a lot of stuff being done, so, yeah. Shoutouts to uh, Roy. Roy, yeah, Roy. He, he One made it manning the station here, yeah. making it all work. Really, literally not possible without him. Like none of us has like the technical expertise to pull this off. Well, yeah, and just shoutouts to MGSR for being here, so I can you know be a part of it, talking about it. You know, just you know, it's really really cool community here. Yeah. I think we may get some final words in for both the runners and... Uh, oh, the, oh, yeah, I, I yeah, definitely yeah. want to hear... Oh, God. Are you going to, like, interview, like, interrogation? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we're going to have to ask him about everything. <laughs> okay. Every... What was his other death? He died... Oh, to, to Raven? Uh, he, no, he died he three died times, to Raven. Right? What was it? Raven, Dox, and then... Dox. Tank. Tank, yeah, that's right, yeah. Three three continues. Wow. So once Alien's done skipping all those cutscenes, we're going to ask him to come in here. Oh yeah. I'll From just hide behind you guys. I'll let Furry do all the talking because. So sure that's a be six hit. minute swing. A six Crazy. minute swing on the final run. That's a big swing. <laughs> hey Blue, congratulations. Congratulations on, uh, on winning on a winning thing for your team. team Liquid. Yeah. yeah. Literally just carried your team. So I guess Liquid Snake does win in the end, huh? That's the last. Carrier one after all.
<laughs> I guess he was. How you doing, so, bud? How's it going? Ah, just sitting on this. <laughs> oh no. This world record run. That was sick. Dude. <laughs> Oh my god, I was so tilted. <laughs> <laughs> I figured by the first continue, like, you were just I was, off the deep end. I uninstalled live split. <laughs> <laughs> I was peeking over at the stream while I was, you know, starting the game, and I was like, Bud? <laughs> yeah. Bud? <laughs> Bud? So, so bad. Alien, what was the strategy going into this race? Like the final, are you were you just gonna like play as YOLO as possible, try to world record even though you didn't need to? Or just... um, I, I just, what was going on? I wanted to have fun, man. But well, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like going into it. I my idea was okay. I'm going for prison roll. So should I play safe around that to um? to compensate for how risky that is or what do i just go all in but after the first continue like all i did was go slightly early and the guard saw me i was upset but you know what were you trying there when you went did you did you just like cut the corner too early yeah that's that's all i did okay <laughs> and why did you kill yourself at the tank i was i was not confident in my ability to salvage it after the fucking I mean, you excuse were me. Redo the whole thing. <laughs> what happened yeah. with the tank to make you want to do that? I didn't he, see. He went up to me, and he was gonna start going out of control any second. But uh -huh. yeah, I I could feel it. I I was out of mags. The boss is gonna go rampant. I probably didn't even have enough N9 to finish why, the fight. Why did the tank drive up to you? Do you do you know now, or do you just have no idea? I was most likely up slightly far. Uh, when I returned to throw the magazines, I think right. I was up too far. And the tank drove, like, and get throws in. So you just yeah. you know, took a reset there. And then on Raven, why didn't you use your ration? I didn't have a ration. <laughs> Where Wait, did you what? use your ration? I didn't get a ration. Wait, Wait, Otacon, gives you Otacon, Otacon gives you one, hello? Wait, he does? Oh, oh I forgot. Yes. my god. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wasn't you cut out for this. It? See, I was no. so YOLO, I didn't even... I don't even uh, think about Literally, that. I was screaming at you to use your weapon when you were getting killed. I don't think about this killed. stuff, you know? Well, I just kind of go dead and look at the screen, and then... At the very least, take this as a learning experience that uh, you do indeed have a ration in your inventory. Ah, huh. it is to me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. So, I thought, like, you're saving it for, like, Rex or something. No. So, Blue, you still there? Yeah. So, we going into this? Were you trying to gonna you know go as yolo as possible, or be consistent and just bank on Bud messing up? Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> I, I was just gonna go consistent and do what I was practicing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna let Alien make the mistakes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you could say that. It's not that I had yeah, faith. See, because you think happening, any, but... look anybody else in your situations would have done the opposite strategy of what both of you did. You would have gone YOLO blue, like anybody in your position, because you're trying to win. You're like, I have to make up four minutes. And anybody in Alien's position was in safe because they had a four-minute lead. But See? you guys did the opposite strategies for some reason. That's the, <laughs> that's the other interesting thing. I don't have any other YOLO stress I didn't already just do other than prison roll, which I'm not good enough at. I did everything I knew how to do. Oh, wait. Besides that, that hold-up roll into the guy in Rex's lair, those are the only two things I didn't do. Hmm. Otherwise, I did everything else I knew. And you're saying you were pretty close to world record on that run? Uh, yeah. Combined, I, I lost about a minute. Wow. Where's the splits? I think I, it was, I was his plus splits thirty-eight is. after tank. Uh, I had seventeen to save on Raven if he didn't run away, and I lost um, like twenty-three on Liquid compared to my gold anyway. Wow. So, so that it could looks have like been by Sniper Wolf. He was minus sixteen at Sniper Wolf too. So, yeah. so, so, at what point did you know you were going to win? When it's the very start. I <laughs> <laughs> looked over at the stream and I saw him at the game over screen. I'm like, oh. This is <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My bad. Solid. <laughs> so, okay, I man, did, I did gave it a good liquid is solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you oh, were the God. mole in the, you know, like how there's always a mole in a Metal Gear Solid game. Like you're, you're the you're oh, double no. agent. No. <laughs> it was the Ocelot. Wow. 
But me. you know, I have to say that even though it kind of started off on the wrong foot, I mean, it, it was still like a good uh, race to watch, even though maybe it really doesn't think that way now. But it, it's just like I said, these are just amazing races I watched today. Yeah, we, we, we got to see the contrast, you know, what what, mm -hmm. can, what can happen, what how it should happen, and what happens when you know, really everything went wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the contrast was very nice to put them next to each other. Yeah, it was a great way to end a great marathon. It was a... Yeah. Wait, why does it say Randy countries? Savage on the, on the commentary? <laughs> Randy <laughs> Savage, hold up. <laughs> Is there some, supposed to be someone in here we don't know about? It's obviously me. Well, anyway. Um, it's Roy's nickname when he gets in here to say a few words. Most <laughs> savage interview of the event. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Nice. Okay. And as we're getting this, we can get the final IGT roundup as uh, Sergeant Island put in the chat here for backstage is that Team Liquid's IGT roundup is six hours, 55 minutes, and 35 I seconds. To turn into the, you know, other lounge. Oh, hey. Whoa, well, I got pulled in here. <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh, hi there. Hello. Oh, wow. Okay. That was totally unexpected. No well. Warning. Yeah, because I was warning everyone else. Okay. Okay, well, folks, for everyone who's still here, this has been the first Metal Gear Speedrunners Relay uh, ever. And I want to give a big round of applause to everyone who participated. <laughs> Yay! Everyone who participated, all the commentators, all the runners, especially some big thanks to Precious Roy for running the layouts, making sure things didn't explode. So big thanks to Roy for, for doing that. Y'all got some great entertainment for several hours, and part of that was thanks to Roy making sure nothing exploded. So thank you, Roy, and then thank you to Chusa for providing the server architecture for um, us to do this uh, channel with the RTMP server. And a 103.43 from our boy Erlian. I think that still beats my uh, PB. Let me double check on that. Or don't. Got some work to do, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. I got a 102. Uh, yeah, 102 go. big boss, yeah, but. And uh, we've gotten the totals. <laughs> I the killed someone. One... But, oh, I think it was at the um, yeah, garden the counter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Back and forth, I'm like, did I kill that guy? <laughs> Excuse me. So, no, it's all good. We want to let everyone know, since people were wondering, what are the IGT totals? What are the IGT totals? So, Team Solid coming in with 7 hours, 2 minutes, 17 seconds. Woo! Yeah. Team Liquid, 6 hours, 55 minutes, 35 seconds. Brother... I think we can say that we won in both ways. Yeah, boy. But this is not just about winning. It's a celebration of all the efforts both on the stream and off the stream for these games. So once again, thank you all for participating. Nice sub seven from Team Liquid. I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back. And then pat everyone else on the back. Thank you, Blue, for bringing us home. <laughs> it only wasn't Blue, but it was also Sergeant Silent, because if you remember, he got a world record. He got a During world the race. record in the Insane, race. Crazy. Yeah. Can't forget about Silent. Fantastic work from the anchors of both teams. And uh, another, another shout out to the two big boss runs from Team Liquid. Plywood oh, yeah. and Blue. Congratulations to both of you guys, and to Team Liquid, and to Team Solid. Everyone, great showing. Thank you all. We are the twin bigs in, in the MGS chat of Moses. That's a lot of fun. Incident. Yeah, it was good stuff.
But as Roy said in the chat, stick around. We've got some credits to go through. Yeah, I know. We've we've just seen like five sets of credits. Watch one times. more. We got we got one more for you, but we also have something special for you. So stick around, guys. Ha, 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 ha.